Let the pain begin. Let's see how, uh, how insane this gets. Ah, oh, friend. My expression wasn't much better than yours when I first saw this. I truly believe you, Aventurine. Your eyes aren't deceiving you. It's her. The famous singer, Robin. Hmm. Could Robin actually be dead? No. <laughs> She's been confirmed to be playable. We're fine. Hopefully. Well, first of all, can I just say that this had nothing to do with me? I'm just an unlucky bystander here. The family can testify for me. <laughs> if you don't believe me, just ask anyone in the Bloodhound family. They hate me and they hate the IPC, so they'd never lie. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious Aventurine had nothing to do with it. Because, it, you know, it was death, but we don't know who's behind death. This is not where the crime happened. What I showed you was a memory. Mm -hmm. The most basic light cone manifesting tech. Authorized by the Garden of Recollection and owned by the IPC. Again, I have a theory that Firefly was just a memory. That she already died in reality and lived on in the dreamscape as a memory. Go watch it if you're curious about it. <laughs> Did you really think the Galaxy Rangers were outsiders this whole time? What, you're accusing Akron of doing this? Panacone has made a solemn mm. commitment to protect the safety of anyone inside a family dream. Any person in distress will be forcibly awakened and safely returned to reality. Except the real dreamscape, though. You also disappear from reality in the real dreamscape. What gives them the confidence to make such conclusive statements? Because behind this promise is the harmony. The family's dreamweavers link up their minds together to construct an unbreakable defensive line. Still one of the sussiest, like, things. <laughs> Breaking through this line of defense to create death in the dreamscape. <laughs> Not even a memo keeper could do that without the family's permission. Mmm, great, Defe. Who could have done it, friend? The only one is her. The girl who calls herself a galaxy ranger. Mmm. An imposter. An unsought guest. An emanator who hides her true identity. I get why Aventurine is putting sus on her. Like, it definitely makes sense. But I don't know if Acheron is the one behind Death. Because Death has been here for a very long time, right? Actually, we don't know how long Death has been here, but we know it's claimed other victims in the past. So I think it was here before Acheron even showed up. Could be the case. Well, it's actually. Death was a foregone conclusion. And Robin? Her misfortune was staring right at her. Mm. Who will be the next to die? Actually, it could be the case that Acheron did create death because the memories of meme enemies are created from the subconscious fragments of people, which if Acheron's subconscious fragments, which most likely contained a lot of death, manifested into an enemy, death would definitely be the, the result of that. Yeah, this is really hard to take in. That's just one side of the story. If that's the case, I can't trust anyone. Yep, the best advice that Sparkle gave to us. <laughs> it's fine. Listen to your gut. Building trust always takes time. And I'm willing to wait. Hey, I trust Aventurine, to be honest. I just hope you realize that wherever that legacy is concerned, covert plans are already underway throughout Panacone. Everyone's got their own agenda. Indeed. Careful you don't get stuck on the wrong side. If I were you, I'd keep my distance from Acheron. After all, any schemes out in the open are always going to be better than a monster in the shadows. Right? True. What, like you? Bro, there are, actually, now that I think about it, there's a lot of monsters in the shadows <laughs> in Pentagone. Who's to say there isn't an even deeper conspiracy lurking beneath the surface? <laughs> Hello, Black Swan. Memo Keeper, I think our little deal is finished. Hey, she's protecting me, though. She promised me. Aventurine is telling the truth. This memory is a real one, and there's no sign of any distortion grafting on. Thank you for confirming that. The IPC is not the Garden, and there are real limits to what they can actually do. But you know all this. Friend, let's not beat around the bush here. The thing is, I want to reach out personally to team up with the Astral Express. 
Okay, and we know this is true, no, because normally truth is written in, like, the orange text, so... Also, he's been a lot more friendly with the word friend, you know? Like, normally before it was friends. <laughs> now it's just, like, friend. <laughs> I told you, I'm just not interested in scrambling for the legacy. I just came to Pentagony for work. I'm here to retrieve some lost property for the IPC. Hmm. Catch my drift. I'm talking ownership of this frontier prison. I kind of don't believe that. Because Aventurine's already kind of gone against the IPC, you know, with Dr. Ratio. He's already gone off plan. So he's doing his own thing that isn't within the IPC's plan. This has all become a bad debt thanks to the cancer of all worlds. Mm. The IPC has tried sitting down for negotiations time and again, but the family wouldn't even take our calls. There's the confirmation that there is a Stella on here. You have no idea how difficult these people are to deal with. <laughs> Put it this way. They've hushed up the existence of death before, so they can definitely cover up any news about Robin's death. Makes sense. It'll just quietly float off like a bubble and pop. Nobody ever being the wiser. Yep, because the family erases people's memories. That's not fair, right? So then, friend... I need your help. <laughs> I've got something gone right now. <laughs> Let me go home. Yeah, what kind of help? I have but only one goal. The family's front door is like a high wall. And to tear the whole thing down, I'll have to dig out a few chunks first. Once I find a weak point, the IPC will have plenty of means. Hmm. Now we have our chance. So long as we can get to the truth behind her death, we can have justice for Robin. <laughs> while also gaining a valuable bargaining chip for bringing the family to the table. I mean, truthfully, does Aventurine really care about Robin? <laughs> I don't think he cares about justice, to be honest. Truly a once-in-a-blue-moon opportunity. I've been investigating and making lots of friends all over Panacone precisely for this very moment. Except the fools. This tragic news would be extremely bad for the family. So they'll be doing everything they can to stop it leaking, especially to the IPC. Makes sense. But I trust that there are still a few factions that remain exceptions. Galaga. And that's why I need you all. The reputation of the Astral Express precedes you. And the Harmony will give you the fairest of appraisals. Yeah, because we know Galaga's from the Bloodhound family, and I feel like he's the only one who is willing to, like, give us information. You get to find out really what happened and seek justice. And I get to put it toward completing my mission for the IPC. It's what you call a win-win situation. Definitely. <laughs> a decision like this is way above my pay grade. But don't worry, just head back and talk things over with your companions. Oh, can I go back now? That navigator is really smart. Mm -hmm. She must understand the value of this deal. Look, here's my contact details. If you come to any conclusions, call me. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, and take this. A thorough investigation can always use a little more funding. Oh. Don't mention it. Yo, sugar daddy, let's go. <laughs> so long, friend. I really am looking forward to uncovering the truth about death with everyone. Yeah, so am I. Aventurine just sauntered off. He really doesn't mean to force it, but... Something still seems off. Yeah, he seems a lot more friendly now. Like, he's saying friend like, Oh, friend, yeah. What's up, my dude? And, you know, about, he's about to dap us up or something. Like, literally 10 minutes ago, he was like, Friends. It's a bit of a change in mood. What now? What are your plans? Just take me back to Himako, man. Black Swan. What is she thinking? Oh, she's gonna give us the answer now. 50,000? Damn. Thank you, Aventurine. On the surface, this doesn't look like a bad deal for you. But Aventurine is a shrewd merchant whose scheme won't just be as simple as it appears to be. Yep. Again, Black Swan gave us the best advice of being like, yeah, scrutinize every detail of the deal with him. He doesn't know about Miss Firefly yet. Mm. But judging by your reaction, he may have noticed something going on and deliberately shifted topics to the truth of death to try and... Pull you in line with his way of thinking. Hmm. I fly in dead, right, guys? <laughs> That's quick thinking and very sound logic. Aventurine is no fool. 
and working with him definitely has its dangers. Makes sense. Can I toss a die to let it decide for me? Yeah, for Firefly's sake, we'll get to the bottom of it. That is something I agree on. Anyway, be careful out there. There's more than one way to blaze a trail. <laughs> In a dark forest beset by wolves, ensuring your own escape to safety should be your primary concern. Yeah, but you're protecting us now, so you can be our escape, can't you? <laughs> As for the other questions... Did death kill Robin? I'm not sure the two cases were committed by the same culprit, but hmm. that massive wound looked like its winged blade. Yep. We've all witnessed it in action before. Plus, it seems unlikely that there would be two lethal entities loose in the dreamscape. Alright, well don't jinx it. <laughs> God damn. Do you think this is connected to Acheron? Sorry, I can't answer that question. Yeah, you can. That ranger is shrouded in mystery. Actually, no, she can't. I'm afraid no one is capable of providing an answer. Yeah, I kind of forgot about the animated shot for a second there. <laughs> there is no going into her memory. But, without a doubt, she is the most special guest at this <laughs> banquet. It's like Aventurine said just then. It's best to keep your distance from her. Nah, I can fix her. Have you noticed anything else unusual? Two victims appearing one after the other in a very short time span. In and of itself, that's very unusual. Yeah, death is becoming very active, it seems. Two possibilities. The collapse of Panacone's dreamscape has started speeding up. Making death extremely agitated and weakening the family's protections. Seems like it. Or, everything has been planned out and executed by someone. I feel like that's also a very good uh, thing that is happening. There's already been multiple people that have said there's someone behind this. But the question is, who? If someone has chosen these victims deliberately, first a smuggler, then a family celebrity, then this murderer's motives are worth thoroughly chewing over. Okay, but if you think about it, these two deaths are very important. Robin can control the dreamscape, that she can like stabilize people. Very important. And then Firefly, she's hiding something. She has some power we don't know about. And Death was very keen on going for her for a certain reason. I don't have any other questions. It's all happened so quickly, I can only make conjecture. After leaving here, go have a chat with your companions. Thank you. <laughs> I hope you can clarify the source of this confusion. I just want to talk to Himako and well, man. They can give me peace of mind. Black Swan leaves you through the chaotic dreamscape. Come this way. It's a short walk. Don't get lost. Oh, is she going to lead us to the middle thing here that's pulsating where she passed away? Oh no, she's leading us here. This way. This is where we part ways. All of this is like a nightmare. Just a nightmare, right? Everything will be fine when we go back to rally, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> Unfortunately, the remembrance doesn't lie. What we just saw is the reality that oh. happened. <laughs> and it won't fade from our minds just because we wake up. Damn you. <laughs> but follow your heart and don't be afraid. We all walk through this world casting shadows mm. of different lengths and ultimately... All we leave behind are precious memories. Ah, hold on just a sec. Gift? Black Swan gently touches the root of your ear, leaving a cool sensation. Then she hands a card there over you to you. A small parting gift. It was a gift. If one day you unfortunately fall into the deep waters of the memory zone, and there's no memo keeper to join you, hopefully it can guide you on my behalf. Alright, so we have an escape mechanism that will come in clutch. I also pay great attention to the ways of the world. Hmm. Just think of this as an apology from me for hiding something from you. You've been forgiven. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> That's so greedy. Thank you. Then I have something private to take care of regarding that galaxy <laughs> ranger. Let's leave things there, shall we? Yeah, you're willing to go talk to her? Add some big balls. What fascinating memories will you bring for me next time we meet? I sincerely look forward to them. Well, hopefully it's not more trauma. Can it be happy memories, please? Yo, gang, I'm alive. <laughs> Sophie, you still at the hotel in the dreamscape? Sophie, Sophie, have you run into trouble? We got separated in the memory zone, but Sophie is still with the memo keeper. I feel so antsy. Help. Match, stay calm. 
Do I need to get off the express and help? Thank- yes, yes, Dan, please. <laughs> Not at the moment. Sure, just let me know if you need me. The Reverie Hotel in the real world is very calm. Not much is happening. I'm done. <laughs> I finished investigating on my side. Where should we meet? Sophie! Sophie, it's great that you're safe. That lady didn't do anything bad, did she? I'm sorry about what happened to Firefly. Oh, don't bring it up, please. The scene has been conned off by the family. We're wrapping up negotiations with some family delegates. Let's meet somewhere near the clocky statue later. Oh yeah, when are we going to get the harmony powers now that I think about it? A family rep. Is Himiko okay? Yeah, she can make it out. Bates Epstil. The pouting gift from Black Swan. A tiny card numbered zero. Seemingly absent from the Black Swan's collection. What is it a card of? Just Black Swan? Seems like it. In the card's art, she casts her gaze into the mist of destiny. Again, that's just the quote she said. But yeah, the truth behind death is something that I'm most interested in. At first, I thought death was the subconscious fragments of Ina, the Aeon of Order, but it makes so sense much why... Has happened. I should take a moment to gather my thoughts and wait for everyone to arrive. Like, it would make sense that death is the subconscious fragments of Acheron, now that we know her past from the Married Celestia trailer. Some time ago, deep in the memory zone, Akron. Oh. That blade now, yes, sir. Do you still dream, Hunter? Pop off. So slain by your hand. <gasps> oh. He didn't like that. <sighs> Days ago. No, no, no. Go back. Everflame mentioned. Oh, wait. Duke Inferno? <sighs> oh, damn. <laughs> It appears the outcome has already been determined. <laughs> Look, at least he wasn't off screened now. At least we get a little bit of his, uh, what happened to him. We're still alive. As are you. <laughs> As of you? Wait a minute, what? Unless she killed him afterwards. You still have room to make a choice. Leave uh... the music box behind. And then go. Well, <laughs> well, we know which choice he took. Sure. The bloody trail of the destruction leaves no room for hesitation. My guy, you couldn't just leave the music box behind. You were such a cool character. The Taurus Fire Demon. Even if you sacrifice your life for that eon, you won't get special treatment. Mm. Ranger, you tread the narrow path of the hunt. You could never understand. We come from the fire, uh -huh. and are born bathed in fire. We spread, burn, and destroy, until all the kindling has burned out and we leave only ashes on the ground. Yeah, but you can still be a smart, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, just give up the music box, and then you could make a plan to, like, get it back, you know? Burning forms the entire life of a fire. From the beginning to the end. Mm. We are born to die just to put into practice a profile of another universal truth. All things are created for the destruction. My guy, he doesn't even care about you. <laughs> your companions don't seem to think so. <laughs> they fight for your chance at survival. That's cute though, at least they care. They are my children, and just as I was, they are flames that have yet to burn white hot. Mm. They're still young, and I don't blame them. Well, at least they survived, you know. They're pretty cool on their own. But my flames are faint, and time is running out. Can you see the planet of festivities in the distance? I plan to bring purgatory with me there, and before that, I must surpass you. Yeah, my guy. Uh, nah. <laughs> That's never gonna happen. Why? Because on the path they have forged, you have traveled farther than I have. They? Emanator. Hmm. <sighs> I don't think we know who she is the emanator of, right? I don't know if it's going to be like IX, Finality, 
You know, one of those, maybe. You cannot hide your true identity. Draw that sword. For we shall indeed remain here, bound to fight a decisive battle to the death. For I choose this. That was the wrong option, Duke. Destruction is intense, but grief. To cravenly cling to life is to endure an endlessly prolonged existence. I mean, fair play, I guess. Even if the answer turns out to be your own destruction. They were born to die, after all. What is important is not the answer. But that it exists, just as you exist. Mm. Everything exists to be destroyed. Emanators are no different. Oh yeah, they definitely believe in the path of destruction. <laughs> just as even sweet dreams may be born of the void, the so-called impossible is merely something that is yet to happen. Just as even Penicone may be born of the void. Hmm. All right. I accept. Uh, well, we know how this plays out. You shall witness the most brilliant and intense fire in existence. <laughs> may this flame illuminate the farthest reaches of your bottomless dream. Oh, so this is why she's remembering this, because she's fighting Sam. A bottomless dream. <laughs> yes, that's right. But you've made one small mistake. Oh? This blade remains in its scabbard not out of pity or scorn. It's a personal secret that I don't want to disclose, but... Perhaps out of reciprocity. I don't know what that word means. <laughs> I'm gonna search it up. Ah, so it's about exchanging stuff. So maybe if she draws the blade, it gives her a ton of strength, but in return, it erases her memories. She says this as her hand gently rests on the hilt of the sword. I'll reveal the truth to you. No. Oh. The hunt is not the path I truly follow. Oh, damn. <laughs> May death be the end of your boundless dream. Oh, that's what she said to us, right? Guiding you back to the waking world. It was indeed. Oh. I still see them in my dreams. I'm gonna <gasps> pop off. Hold it. Your time hasn't come yet. Oh, damn. <laughs> Not worthy, my dude. Time. Yeah, even Sam seems shook. I've seen many clever disguises that can conceal appearances. But they can never cover up who a person really is. And you're no different. Is that confirmation that Firefly is Sam? Who knows? <laughs> Interesting. You had no desire to kill the Trailblazer. Yep. You only did what you did to drive me and the Memo Keeper away, but... Why? Yeah, Sam went to go grab us. I mean, we were part of the Stellaron Hunters in the past, right? Oh, we were definitely part of Kafka's group. So they do know us. <sighs> But it also, if Firefly is Sam, we did have a wholesome moment with Firefly, so... Did Destiny's slave make you do it? Elio, eh? You know, Elio. I thought this is just the kind of thing that'd get written into your script. True. My script has always been brief. Hmm. Other than that, anything beyond that is unnecessary. Yeah, just... Kill everything in sight. He knows my nature. There is but a single destiny from which no one can escape. Mm. And until then, I hold the privilege of choice. Fair enough, I guess. However, you appear to be ignorant of this. So it's time for me to inquire. Who exactly are you? That's what we want to know. Not your enemy, perhaps. <laughs> I have no enemies. That's not what <laughs> I asked. Dodging the question. I don't deserve your curiosity. Loners wandering the cosmos always have their secrets. Take me. 
I'm wanted by the IPC, so it's little wonder that I know something about the Stellaron Hunters. That's all. Fair enough. Maybe I can help. Hmm. I mean, we already know the Stellaron Hunters are good people. They're just trying to do stuff for the greater good. What reason would you have for doing that? I tend to forget things. <laughs> which is why, rather than memories, I'm accustomed to using my emotions to capture what I normally wouldn't otherwise. Okay. So she basically acts off emotions. That could be very dangerous. <laughs> I know who is inside that cold armor. Firefly? Hmm. <laughs> yep, yeah, I feel like that's I feel like that's pretty much full confirmation. Seems the theories were right. How about it? Ready to take off that armor and sit down for a talk? Name drop. It's not yet time. Damn it. Unless they're just baiting us, <laughs> you know? Imagine, like they've seen the theories about Firefly being Sam, and then they're just they're just like sprinkling these in to get everyone riled up. I don't need help, but I can give you a suggestion that would make things better for you and me. Cause Sam definitely seems like nervous or kind of timid at times. If your goal is the Watchmaker's legacy, it is. Then go look into the family. Not only are they covering up the existence of death, but they're burying the past and the truth about what happens inside the dreamscape. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. Already on it. <laughs> and the Astral Express is no enemy of yours. We're friends. I know that. <laughs> I just never expected to hear you say it. See, Sam's a cute fella. What's next then? The trailblazer's been taken by Black Swan. Will you go look for her? Look, man, can't we all just be friends, you know? No need for that. No harm in mentioning that Elio's only given me one instruction. Get all of the Astral Express to track down the Grand Legacy. Hmm, it's putting us on track, eh? I tried settling this in an easier and more direct way, but as you can see, here I am confronting you. I failed. Can't ever go against the script. So who are the only ones that can go against the script then? Is it only us? That kind of has the ability to change how things go? The so-called impossible is merely something that has yet to happen. Mm-hmm. Do confirm those words. That's it. Before we split, can I ask you one more thing? Is there anything else in your script about me? I'd like to know what kind of footnote I get to leave in that future foreseen by destiny. Yeah, see, what is this? What is this? What's this red text that keeps appearing with you, Acheron? That's what I want to know about. Unfortunately... Not a thing came up. Damn, not even Elios' script can predict Akron. That's kind of wild. <laughs> I knew it. But why, though? I mean, yeah, it makes sense when you look at her character. There's already so much mystery about her. So she's all. So she's also one that can defy the script. Then. I. Don't. What? Don't. What? Your first question was, do you still have dreams about everyone who died because of you? Damn, took you a while to answer that one though, didn't it? <laughs> I don't. Never have. I was born without the ability to dream. I live for this cold, harsh reality. For a little light. And to burn. To keep on burning. Until I turn to ash. That seems awful. So, I really envy you. Man, very interested in Sam's character now. Is that so? 
and you're already living in the waking world. I mean, yeah, <laughs> Akron's way is she gives you death to make sure you wake up. Hmm, that's surprising. I thought they might have had like a mock because we saw a bit more of their fight later on, like in the we White Knight trailer. Heard about Miss Firefly from Black Swan, <laughs> but we never expected Miss Robin to. Yeah, things are messed up. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry that I couldn't be with you then. Yeah. <laughs> Pain. Reality cruises on in serenity while undercurrents bubble up from the dreamscape. Just like that memo keeper said. God, imagine if like the wildest plot twist is like everyone around us, like Himako, well matched. They're all fake. <laughs> We're just being tricked. That would be mad. Stay strong, everyone. We can still do what we can for them. Starting with finding the murderer. That's who I want to know who's behind it. Let's recap everything then. The trailblazer just reminded me of something. March, do you remember what that family rep who negotiated with us said? Oh yeah, spill the tea. Uh, indeed we trust that the Nameless has nothing to do with this. And we also beg each of you to help assist the family in verifying the identity of the deceased. Uh, that's how it was put. In reference to Miss Firefly. Yeah, well, let's not help them with that because I feel like Firefly's identity is very important. Looking back, he seemed a little evasive at the time. And he also failed to mention anything about the earlier murder, too. Classic family covering up stuff. The family's planning on covering up all news about Miss Robin's death. If news gets out, Penacone's going to turn into a bloodbath. That would be pretty sick to see, though, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> But the murder that followed closely after was obviously beyond their anticipation. The family had to try and turn things to their advantage by bringing in reinforcements from outside. The Charmony Festival is nearly here. They must be snowed under. What I do wonder if the person that's controlling death, if it's actually going to be a character we, we've seen already, or if it's going to be a character we haven't been introduced to. God, imagine if it's Misha. <laughs> it may also be that Miss Firefly's murder had so many witnesses that it couldn't be covered up. So they went with the flow and let more people on the scene to control the situation. Mm. After all, the nature of the two murders is fundamentally different. The family's first protective measure should be against malicious actors among the guests such as that IPC envoy. Yeah, Aventurina's on guard against Acheron, which makes sense because he can't control her, you know? She's like a wild card. Indeed. He was particularly concerned about that Galaxy Ranger. Are we missing the forest for the trees here? That's a, always felt that's a that saying. I reasons for accusing Miss Acheron were highly subtle. Can we believe him? Yeah, the creation of death, like, I can definitely believe it's Acheron's subconscious fragments, but we don't know how long death has actually been here. Like, if we get confirmation that death was here before Acheron even showed up, then it's definitely not the subconscious fragments of Acheron. At this point, I'm afraid the only ones we can trust are ourselves. Yep. Look, let's try to gather intel first and then list all the possible outcomes we can. Then we go through them, eliminating contradictions one by one. The fewer facts remaining, the closer we are to the truth. Matt, I honestly can't wait for Well to meet Acheron, though. That's going to be interesting to see. I've still got this sense of foreboding. It's like we're stuck in a whirlpool, spinning around that legacy even after everything that's happened. Spinning around? What? Kind of like it's a loop, maybe? Because when we first arrived on Penacone, we saw the flash of everything that happened. So it could be the case that we're stuck in a massive loop, that things have already happened before. That'll be wild. Uh, this time we're playing the role of a real detective. But before we start, what are we going to say to the family and Aventurine? <laughs> Who knows? As I see things, the family harbors no ill will towards the Astral Express. If they didn't trust the crew, they wouldn't have casually commissioned outsiders to investigate a case that's, in all likelihood, a scandal. But that also might be a cover-up as to not cause any suspicion towards them. Plus, this is the family's turf. Teaming up with them should make things easier for us in the future. 
like, I'm just gonna say, I don't trust the family. They've done very sus things, you know? Erasing people's memory and keeping them, like, obedient by forcing different dreams onto them. Kind of weird, if you ask me. As for that Aventurine... Well, I'd like to hear your thoughts. He's complex. He deliberately slow played his hand during negotiations while running circles around us all the while. Mm -hmm. He appealed convincingly to both reason and emotion. It wasn't forced, but the intent was obvious. <laughs> Still, it's good to have contacts among all this uncertainty. Adventurine showed his skills, and as far as our interests are aligned, he can become a reliable ally. Or a terrifying enemy. We also need to keep a certain distance from the family. Never let them get too close. This is why we Teaming need well. with the IPC helps balance that out. If either side makes a move, we have the option to pull out. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> so you suggest accepting Aventurine's proposal to team up? Yeah, we'll play with both sides and then we'll pull out when the time is right. <laughs> yes. It's risky, but we can only wait until both sides have played their cards before making any further judgments. <laughs> God, why did I put that imagery inside my head? I get why, but there's a whole lot of bad guys and girls around here, and I'm worried about getting stabbed in the back. <laughs> She's been bullied a few times now, and I can't stand it anymore. Merch setting up the flags, man. <laughs> hey, Merch, it's tradition, all right? You're going to have to be stabbed in the back. It's as simple as that. It's cool, you can bully me whenever. All right. Uh, you... Hey, if that's what the Trailblazer's into. No, I can't accept this. <laughs> uh, forget about it. Just let me keep an eye on him. If that doesn't work, we can just turn the tables and use him instead. I don't think that it's going to work out like that. Then could you please reply to Aventurine? Everyone, take this time to put together your thoughts. Himoko, we've had like seven weeks to do that. I'm still confused. <laughs> Aventurine, always open to pull for your game account. <laughs> yeah, we'll collaborate. We've decided to accept your re request for collaboration. Wonderful. Your response came faster than I expected. From now on, we'll all be in this together. Here's a small something for our upcoming partnership. <laughs> Damn. He really is our sugar daddy. <laughs> That's it. Thanks, boss. Wowee. That's so generous of you. Boss, thanks. Oops, I press send. Oops, I press send too early. Here's a little extra just for a good look for this new gig. A hundred thousand credits. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm pretty sure if you said, is that it? He probably wouldn't have given you extra. Because they even said in the live stream, like, oh yeah, if you pick certain dialogue options with Aventurine, he'll give you more money. See, I played it out. I knew what I was doing. Just as I anticipated, the family is going to sweep Robin's case under the rug for as long as they can. So, her case is only a secret between us. But the other case... That depends on what excuses they have prepared for you guys. I'll take my leave for now, and I look forward to outstanding performance from you guys. Looks like Aventurine is happy with this outcome. Let's tell everyone about it. Oh wait, can we up- Oh no, we can't upgrade this yet. Okay, we probably can do that afterwards. Aventurine's goal is to try and recapture Penacony for IPC. To do this, he'll have to bring down the family in its entirety to create a big enough chance. Is that his true goal, though? The existence of death will be covered up by the family. So how does he plan on taking them down? It's got to be something important enough that everyone will notice. <laughs> but it also can't be anything too out in the open. Also, yeah, when is Topaz showing up? Well, it wasn't confirmed that she was going to be here, but... I know Aventurine did ask for her help. Perhaps he's going for the family. He's definitely going for the family. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of how. The harmony is strong in Penacony, and almost impossible to take on head to head. The fact that the IPC dispatched Aventurine shows that they do not intend to simply play by the book here. Now that, okay, this is like unrelated, but I wonder why, why did Acheron need the music box? Like, why was she so keen on getting it? Perhaps he's going for Acheron. Aventurine has devoted considerable attention to her. But this Galaxy Ranger... We know hardly anything about her. And can't rush to any conclusions. I want to know about her. We also need to get her true name. <laughs> Raiden May, I imagine. Perhaps he's going for the Astral Express. Hmm. I was also considering this possibility. Especially... 
because he respects you so much and has sought you out before a few times. Mm. Perhaps he's also unsure of your intentions and is probing you. I mean, yeah, I would say the only like two chips you can't fully predict is is us and Acheron. No conclusions can be drawn just yet. I'm just speculating. In any case, we have to be careful when handling Aventurine. He's skilled at reading people and discerning the right moment to strike. Also, we, are, we already know he's going to strike, you know? He's clearly a born gambler if he's willing to go all in to win. God, who was it that told us that, uh, I think it was Black Swan, that when Aventurine is cornered, he's willing to, you know, go out, you know, bet everything on the line, which is probably the farm we saw in the trailer. Aventurine said something that concerns me. He go accused on. that Galaxy Ranger of killing Robin without any evidence whatsoever, but said nothing about her connection to that memory zone meme or why he was stalking you. Yeah, because he doesn't want us to think about those things. It was a groundless accusation, which only serves to make him seem more suspicious. Yeah, he's bluffing. He's a gambler after all. Maybe Aventurine's goal was never to gain our trust. Maybe he wanted to foster a feeling of enmity towards Acheron and make the situation more volatile. Yep. Two birds, one stone. Because if you've got two uncertain chips on your board that you can't really predict well, if those two chips were to team up, it's going to be very hard to, you know, win the game against those. So you put the two chips against each other and then keep keep one of the chips under your control. And that's what he's doing. However, I asked Don Hong back on the Express to confirm that story about the Annihilation Gang and the lost messages. It wasn't something that Aventurine made up out of thin air. Oh, that is definitely true. <laughs> You've met her many times now. What's your impression of Miss Acheron? Weird, I can't seem to remember. Interesting bit of dialogue. She's a very mysterious woman. Oh, we can't say it. Mmm. Weird. I can't seem to remember. That fits the stereotype of a galaxy ranger to a T. Because I also found out as well that if you keep denying Acheron about her joining your team when it was you and Black Swan, after a certain amount of denying her, you can no longer do it and you allow her to come in and the text is read. So something's clearly affecting us. They're eccentric, unpredictable, and fond of being alone. No wonder she's a suspect. Hmm. The more and more, like, we get about Acheron, the, just, the less I understand. I love this OSC, by the way, looking at this. Hello, Match. It's not too soon to bring it up, but I feel like Miss Robin isn't actually dead, yep. but that she's still alive and well, somewhere, but everything's just some horrible prank. Yeah, don't worry. She's still alive. So is Firefly. They're just trapped by the death. You know, they're enslaved, not enslaved. They're trapped in that little pod thing. Because aren't we supposed to be inside a dream? How could someone die in a beautiful dreamscape like this? Shouldn't only good things happen here? Sometimes reality bleeds into a dream. <laughs> Whenever I see the Grand Theater, I just can't stop all these thoughts from flooding my head. Yeah, because there's something suspicious about this. <laughs> Do you think the family is behind all this? You're also going to get stabbed. No, no. After all, they've brought everyone this sleepy dreamscape, which everyone loves. I just feel like I'm starting to understand them less and less. Which isn't suspicious at all, you know? And then add on all the other suspicious things they've done. Yeah, they're not trustworthy. Everyone's still having a great time out there on the streets. Nobody knows what's happened. Because they've been made to forget. It's all so unreal. As if Firefly, Miss Robin, and us were all outsiders from another world. Aw, what a mess. I really want a nice cool drink of soda to help me calm down. I still don't trust the soul god, man. <sighs> but then I'd be just like everyone else out on the streets. I'm <laughs> not like other <laughs> girls. <laughs> Looks like Adventurine doesn't need anything else. Let's turn our attention to the family's assignment for now. Himiko, 
What do you think? Among our current clues, the two murders that she witnessed are the most directly connected. I suggest starting here. One thing I'm curious about is, if a person dies in a dream, mm -hmm. what happens to them in real life? Seeing as we're at the family's behest, why not pop back out to reality and verify Miss Firefly's situation back at the hotel? Perhaps we could also make a few inquiries about her while out there. That's if she ever existed in reality, my theory. <laughs> How about we split off into two groups? There are still some things worth focusing on inside the dreamscape. I'll investigate those and we can link up again later. Yeah, I feel like the, this next part is going to completely destroy my theory. <laughs> worth focusing on? Oh, no problem. Mm. I'll leave it to you then. Whoa, 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 guys. Wait, what? How about we split off into two groups? I'll split up. That's a great plan. There are still some things worth focusing on inside the dreamscape. Okay, what are you two hiding from us? Huh? Aw, I thought I'd finally get to see Himeko and Mr. Yang go out on a mission together. Mm-hmm. Oh, well. Take care then, Mr. Yang. Hey, but that means we get, uh, Well and Akron together, so that's fun. <laughs> I will. Keep in touch. I mean, we won't be able to if you're in the real dreamscape. Hmm. All right, what are you up to, Well? What are you hiding from the group? Honored guest, uh, could you come out for a second? Akron? No, wait, what? She was hiding? I'd be embarrassed too, getting stared at like that. <laughs> I mean, we're in a dream, so I mean, it makes sense you can make yourself invisible. <laughs> Forgive me. Uh, my name is Welt Yang. I'm one of the crew members on the Astral Express. I believe you've met my colleagues. Welt. Third Impact Law? Which sucks. I really wish I did watch some uh, Third Impact Law videos before I played through this. I really should have, but I just never got around to it. Is there something about my name? Yeah, do you know all these like Third Impact characters? <laughs> First, don't you want to know my name? The real name? I already do, Miss Acheron. You're a prominent figure in Panacone. What are they saying about me? That you're sussy. Some claim that you're the real culprit behind these murders. That the Annihilation Gang's tragic fate at the banquet was a result of your blade. That's true. And that you're now attempting to unleash another bloodbath on Panacone. That's false, I think. I don't know. We saw her blowing up Panacone in her trailer. The Annihilation Gang. <laughs> oh, those guys. Ifrit of Everflame Mansion. Tragic fate. That duke turned his dying body to flames and sacrificed his life as a martyr. Hmm. He was a determined and heroic path strider. Not even a villain should be disparaged like this. I mean, he made his decision, all right? And what's more, there were plenty of suspects invited. Do they really think that a blade is more dangerous than that black hole you're wielding? She knows. <laughs> Keen intuition. <laughs> Not even the family managed to point out the truth behind this cane. Oh, it's getting spicy. <laughs> so you must surely know, Miss Acheron that peering into a black hole is not a wise move. Mm. As a potential threat, your knowledge of us has reached uncomfortable depths. Man, these are such a great duo. I'm so glad they put them together. Reveal your true identity and intentions. Otherwise, brace yourself for gravitational disintegration. Sick. <laughs> that shouldn't be necessary. But if it makes the nameless feel less defensive, I'll be happy to abide. Name drop. Believe it or not, Galaxy Ranger, Acheron. Those are the names I go by to this very day. My trip to Panacone is solely to fulfill an old final request. Hmm, someone that passed away. I'm here for the Watchmaker's legacy. Yep. And that's it. I think I've been honest enough. Nah, 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 nah. That was pretty obvious. Tell us everything else. <laughs> Still unwilling to reveal your true identity? It's not that I don't want to. 
It's just that I can't. Damn it, classic. I've come so far, and I can't sum up all of that in just a few words. Just give us a name drop, like, that's it. You know, you don't have to go into your past, just give us your true name. And we've already heard that before, right? That she can't. She couldn't draw her blade to say Firefly, and now she can't reveal her true identity. So there's definitely something stopping her, but what? Everyone has their own unspeakable past. Secrets that they don't want to be revealed. And I won't be asking any more questions, such as why the Astral Express <laughs> is roaming around the cosmos with a Stellaron on board. Y yeah, about that. <laughs> Don't worry, we're safe. For now. Is she okay? That memo keeper didn't do anything, right? At least you care about us. She's fine. Let's just stick with the topic. Gaining my trust depends on how much you're willing to reveal. Come on, just give us a name drop. That's all we want. I've run around many different Panacone dreamscapes just to try and find that legacy. And during this period, I came into contact with quite a few guests. In the process, I gradually came to realize mm -hmm. the secret of Panacone may be closely related to the Trailblaze. I mean, we already knew that, right? We already knew that the Watchmaker's legacy might have been someone aboard the Astral Express crew way in the past. That's why I've come to ask for your help. I don't have enough proof yet, but I'd like to speculate something. The source of all tragedy lies within the family. 100%. If you could trust me, we could find the proof to support this claim together. What a duo. Mr. Yang, I think you've come to the same conclusion. Haven't you? <laughs> Let's leave it at that. For now, I'll choose to believe that you bear no hostility. And this is where I'm guessing it's going to branch off into two different, uh, you know, timelines. Share your findings with me and me alone. I don't want vague conjecture to interfere with other people's judgments before we find solid proof. Yeah, keeping everything hidden from us, Yang, like always. Mm-hmm. By the way, would you like something to drink? Before we go, how about two cups of wake the heck up? No, four cups. Four? Why, why, why is that put in bold? They've been doing that for a certain things now. Because the conversation coming up will last forever. Mm. Man, just give me more of those two. At the same time, hotel in the real world. I've been watching her closely for a while now. And the first invitation was in the banquet hall of the hotel. Talking about Akron. She just sat in one corner, keeping silent, chugging down a couple cups of wake the heck up. <laughs> what a drink name, her by the way. It's a pungent, bitter beverage, not the taste of sweet dreams, only for people allergic to soul glad. And she said. So I'm guessing this is in reality, because I, I was about to say, who would be allergic to soul glad in a dream? Really? But I don't taste. Any difference at all between them? Hmm. Interesting. What are you the up to? The guest rooms are charmingly minimalist. An aesthetic you share, Miss Acheron. Hmm. It's a cinch. This music box. The invitation received by the Annihilation Gang. There are latent memories that linger on it yet. Yeah, like I was saying earlier, what's so important about this music box? Because she she seemed very determined to get this off Duke Inferno. Like, she was willing to spare him if he just handed it over. You see, memories of you are not yours alone. They travel in other people, other things. I know much, and I can predict even more. With some help, the dead can be made to speak. Oh, we're going to see Duke Inferno? The Annihilation Gang, that band of desperados who all disappeared after meeting you. What exactly happened to them? Well, <laughs> let me reveal all. Was this, is this before or after she went into Akron's memories? <laughs> because if it's after, I gotta respect the balls. In we go. Gradation 12. Dreamscape. Father, I dedicate this to you. Oh, okay. It's uh it's one of his children. 
Well done, Dubra. Dubra. Wherever they go, shall be met by annihilation. There it is. It's hazy, but it's Ifrit's voice. The other one is probably his progeny. Was that the ghost girl? It, sound, it sounds like that voice would fit her. This is the residual memory from when the invitation was first delivered. They were abruptly interrupted. Then, what happened next is... They got clapped. They sought refuge in a land of sleep. Merely wishing for undisturbed rest. Away from the storms. So I'm guessing these blanks are like skips in the memories. I think it's only snippets of it. Children of the flame, this marks your rite of passage. <laughs> she won't be necessary. I alone am enough. <laughs> yeah, about that. <laughs> when have those on the path of destruction fear death? I mean, they seemed concerned about your death. The Everflame Mansion has set out on a journey. <laughs> Those poor people. They have no idea poor what people. lies in wait ahead of them. Memory recovery is going well, but slowly. She'll be here soon, and time is short. There's nobody else here, so there's no need to be delicate. In fact, I think I'd better go all out. Are you just, like, talking to yourself, or, or is there someone here that we don't know about? Alright. Yeah, you can't see into it. Doesn't allow you. What happened? Yeah, retreat. Get out. Get out. The memory after that is blank. How is that possible? This music box fell into Acheron's hands and she brought it to Panacone. That's a fact. And that's how it should have gone. But along the way. So what it seems like is we are forgetting stuff about Acheron. Like we can't remember what type of person she is. Maybe it's like the abilities of IX that are like absorbing those memories, which also brings in the question of why Misha said, oh, you still remember me. Yeah, I mean, there's still a bunch of like, you know, weird stuff going on with Misha, but if he's in the similar boat to Acheron where people are forgetting about him, hmm, I wonder if they're connected in some way. Yeah, Chief, I think it's best if you get out of here before things go just batshit insane. It's like it's been erased. Who's done this? It's rather Akron herself or it was IX. Who are you? Oh, that's the ghost skull, right? Who are you? It's... That would be sick if that is the no. case. Is this not a memory? All right, you're going too deep. You're, you're losing sight of reality. Oh, a memo oh. keeper. Do you serve the Garden of Recollection? For the cremators? Who are you? My name is Constance. Constance? A pleasure to meet you. We were supposed to meet in Pentagoni and spend an... <laughs> mm. Unforgettable time together. Constant was uh, one of the children then, right? Let me do, let me search out which one she was. Oh, she was the woman with the white dress. Ah, okay. But that seems unrealistic. Dolly is not welcome on the banquet store, and I don't need a coming of age ceremony. And you, I know what you're looking for. So she has the ability to know when someone's looking into a memory. That makes her really powerful. Want her secret? I can give it to you and then you can enjoy the banquet for me. What a great ally. I wish you unforgettable memories. But also wouldn't trust it. <laughs> oh. Yeah, let's not. <laughs> A phone. Wanna listen in? Nah, Chief. I I'd rather not go down the horror route, please. You have seven days. At this moment, on the other side, mate, we are jumping about. 
Ah, Venturine. A few days ago, the IPC made an announcement. Under the watchful guidance of the Marketing Development Department and in accordance with the Interstellar Peace Charter, the independent Sigonian sovereignty has hereby been established and shall take a legislative seat at the Interstellar Congress. Pog. The formation of the Sigonian sovereignty is of great historical significance to the Sigonia system. This move puts an end to the planet's long and bloody history turning the sensational Kataka Avgen extinction event into a distant memory. So, Sigonian is where Aventurine's from. Extinction event? That's gonna be important. Sigonia 4 is located in an unclaimed zone at the intersection of the Denise, Pruthian, and Dorno star clusters. The planet's surface environment is known for being extremely harsh, constantly faced with the threat of impact from small-scale celestial objects. So constant meteors, that sounds awful. This is why very few intelligent species have made this planet their home. Dividing themselves into several tribes to eke out nomad lifestyles as they struggle to survive the arid desert wilderness. They have developed their own folk beliefs that are independent of the Eon belief system. Oh damn, really? That's kind of sick though. Sigonia. Mm. Sigonia. Ravenous eye of the storm, spurned by all the gods. So rejected by the different gods then. Hmm. Also, this is a baby aventurine. It's cute. Of rock, but not water. Lightning, but not rain. Blood, but not tears. Uh, Akron? You beat us with your falling stars. You lash us with wind and storm. You chew us up with the cracked earth. So, a bunch of earth, but there's no water. Lightning, but there's no rain. There's a bunch of blood, but no one can cry. Damn. You promised us a land of honey, yet yoked us beneath a sword of bitterness. Oh, Gyathra Triclops, if thou can hear me, please open up thy three eyes and gaze upon this child. And I'm guessing Aventurine was burst with some sort of power. When you took his father, my child was still sleeping in my belly. Mm. And where my husband went, I too soon must go. Yep, yeah, they're making us feel bad for adventuring. I don't ask for a peaceful death. Just for you to tell me. Does the baby swaddle sweetly asleep? Mm. Does he dream of his mother's heartbeat and the sound of falling rain? Please tell me. Whether this life is all just a fleeting dream. Yeah, well, we already knew that Aventurine was going to have a depressing backstory. Otherwise, why would this child be born to face impending death? Well, wait, there's the lightning, but also it's raining now. Mommy! Mommy! Oh. Mommy! The rain! It's raining! Yep, something that's never happened to them. Raining. <gasps> raining. A miracle. <laughs> it is raining. It's true. Those outworlders weren't lying to us. They ah. really did summon the rain. Mommy, we can leave here. We can go back home. So I'm guessing the outworlders were the IPC. Kind of unnerving. Darling, listen. 
This is the sound of rain. Venturing doesn't like <laughs> rain, though. On the day you were born, the sky mm. also sent down a gift like this from Gayatra. Actually, maybe that's the reason, because he says the reason he doesn't like the rain is because, oh, it'll, like, you know, ruin his outfit. But maybe the, the real reason is because that was the day he was born, and he doesn't like the rain because of that. It might also be the same day his mother died. <laughs> Such a lucky child. Such a blessed child. Just like your name. A gift from them to Avgen. <gasps> My boy. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull up a notepad and note down these names. Right, there we go. May the goddess Gayathra close her eyes three times. Ah, so it was a goddess. <laughs> Keep your blood eternally pulsing. Let your journey be forever peaceful. Uh, not quite. And your schemes forever concealed. Okay, that, that part is true. Welcome to this sad world, Kakavasha. Is that his real name? Child blessed by Katatha. Kakavasha. <sighs> Time to wake up, gambler. Hello, Dr. Ratio. <laughs> oh, you were drinking, my guy? Oh, heavens. <laughs> I must have drunk too much soul glad. Uh, didn't expect you to be back so soon. How is it? Find anything? Just as you guessed. Nobody outside knows about Robin's death. There aren't even baseless conspiracy theories. They are still streaming the rehearsal for her ceremony. Using a stand-in, I guess. <laughs> they must be dreaming. Yeah, because uh, the standing had the weird voice. Of course. <laughs> Who could imagine that death would actually descend upon the idyllic dream created by the family? Let alone that the victim would be the female lead of the Charmony Festival. Yeah. To be honest with you, I didn't believe it. I even tested it a few times myself. Yeah. Until I discovered that I couldn't actually die. <laughs> That's depressing. Whenever there's any danger, I'm forced awake by the dream pool, and it's all as if everything were just a nightmare. But did you do it in the real dreamscape? That's different from the fake dreamscape. That's why I'm convinced that there are a few big secrets lurking behind the scenes. Because March already said it, that when, like, the first time we went into the real dreamscape, we also disappeared from reality. So, it's much different from the fake dreamscape. Then you must have heard about the Memory Zone meme. Something when come to I death. graciously deigned to establish connections with the Oak family on your behalf, they were quite in a pitiful state of disarray. <laughs> Besides Robin, there was... Another body. Yeah, I fly. don't know the exact details, just that it was a stowaway. Two murder cases? <laughs> <laughs> I told you something seemed off about the nameless. <laughs> oh, she must have come across the other one. See, I told you. <laughs> <laughs> this murderer is a psycho. But I have to admit, the case should be easy to crack. Yeah. Oh, we can leverage the family's malfeasance and let the IPC use this as a reason to intervene. Oh, my good sir, if it's so easy to crack, please crack it and then tell us, which you won't, but still. Uh, it's just that their trickery runs deeper than I thought. Robin's stand-in was all ready to go. <sighs> These two murders are definitely getting hushed up. Classic family. Uh, what should we do? Let me think. It's too rare an opportunity to miss out on, so I gotta be careful. Incredible gambler. <laughs> Have you already exhausted your limited repertoire of tricks so soon? No, he has he has uh, a few tricks to pull. Oh, there are plenty of chips, but it'd be best to choose carefully. The most straightforward has to be Robin. Remember? 
That masked fool once told me to find a mute as a friend. Us. <laughs> Robin is what she calls the mute. Oh, okay, she never has mind. lost her voice, and while most people can't pick up on it, you and I cannot mistake that sound. Not produced by any voice box, but rather by the resonance of the harmony. Interesting. Okay. Oh, okay, so maybe that's what we were hearing then. So to other people, maybe her voice sounds fine. And then to some people like us, her voice sounded like kind of crackly. Huh. If that girl hadn't gone hoarse from singing practice, there'd only be one possibility. Something was up with the family. Or Robin herself. To get to the bottom of this, I tried every way I could to meet her. But she died. Right before my very eyes. Oh, so Aventurine actually saw her die. Okay. And that's how he was able to show us the memory of Robin's death. Okay, that makes sense. A complete and utter loss. Incidentally, it seems to have resulted in your rather undignified arrival on the interrogation stand. <laughs> There were eyewitnesses at the scene, and the family, in their graciousness, has tentatively accepted your alibi. However, Oof. for the foreseeable future, you shall, regrettably, find yourself under the vigilant watch of the Hounds. Good old Gallagher. I mean, it's a fair play to pin it on to uh, Aventurine. That'll be an easy way to get out of it. Well, things aren't looking too optimistic, Doctor. I'm starting to break out in a cold sweat. <laughs> D do you reckon... There's still any chance of a comeback, given how things are? Yeah, you're starting to have a little bit of doubt? <laughs> a probability? Yes, it exists, but it verges on the infinitesimal. To phrase it in a manner more befitting the vernacular of Penacony, you're dreaming. Basically, yeah, it's possible, but you have to dream for it. <laughs> but if you simply can't control yourself and want to try your hand, then there just so happens to be a suitable candidate. Me? That man wants to see you again. That man? Who? Who? Oh. <laughs> Sunday. Ah, saucy Sunday. <sighs> Is this a public hearing or a <laughs> private trial? In terms of the family, Sunday is definitely the most suspicious. If it were the former, it would hardly befit my stature to stoop to the role of a mere messenger. Ugh. Me, a messenger? Ugh. Pathetic. <sighs> Fine. <laughs> oh, that's great. It's all great. You see, the dead can't talk, but the living can. I mean, we know from Black Swan the dead can talk, but okay. Ratio, I'm convinced now that there must be something wrong inside the family. There we go, he's Just found out. wait and see. Batman's sister has died. He can't sit on his hands. There we go, Aventurine's come to the same conclusion as Akron and Welt. Without any further ado, let's set off. Lead the way. The show is about to begin. Man, he sounds very excited. <laughs> like, he's buzzed. We're here. The Dewlight Pavilion is the Oak family's fortress and a place where heads of the families meet to discuss great plans for Panacone. Oh, we're just gonna bust on in. Fortress? <laughs> well, I like this metaphor. I dealt with the warlords of the Amanica star system not long ago, and their synchronized orbital manor wasn't this heavily guarded. This mansion nominally belongs to Sunday oh. and is very befitting of its owner. Without his express invitation, the likes of ordinary guests would never grace these grounds in their lifetimes. Look around while you still have this moment of freedom. This area is probably going to contain some important information. Hey, then. Doc, whose side are you on anyway? <laughs> Who's to say I won't sell you out? Honestly, I can see that. It is the IPC. <laughs> we'll see. When we meet the authoritarian master of the Oak family, I'll pry an answer out of him. Yeah, that'll definitely work. Follow me and I'll bring you to his parlor. Hold <laughs> your tongue and let me deal with the members of the family. Yeah, that's definitely gonna work out. Aventurine holding his tongue? No. Man, I'm so glad we're getting these different, like, POVs. <laughs> oh, that's sick. Huh. 
I, I can already tell some people are going to be making some tunes with this character. <laughs> is this the first time they've given us a like a story character that hasn't come out yet? All right, Hedrick, my man. Hey, you two. That's a place of business. No entry. Who is a sassy lost child? I was requested by Mr. Sunday to bring <laughs> him the suspect. My name is Ratio. <laughs> he should have mentioned it to you. <laughs> Bro, you can tell Ratio is holding himself back. Like he's he he really wants to insult this kid. <laughs> oh, I remember you. Veritas Ratio. Your punch virtual particle clock is impressive. Excuse me? Uh, the one on your head. Of course, it's nothing compared to my full pocket dimensional annihilating <laughs> power armor of the mobile knights. <laughs> yes. Right. And as I mentioned, that <laughs> fantasy raiment of yours doesn't exist. Yeah, I built mine for real, kid. God. Get on my level. That's because you can't see it. Like I say, only family can see the glory of the mobile knights. Mm. Yeah, enough. Get going. Don't keep Mr. Sunday waiting. Mm, that's a little bit of information. I'm gonna write that down. Mobile knights. <sighs> it seems like the idiocy index <laughs> here is no better than it is out there. I mean, that might have just been like a nothing burger. Like, it's just fantasy, but you never know with Panacone. <laughs> you gotta write everything down. Ugh, enough. Get going. Hey, don't keep Mr. Sunday waiting. All right. Jeez. God, I love that song. No, give me the chest. Dead end. The door is shut tight. Looks like we're on our own. Can't we just like walk through? We're in a dream. I mean, there isn't a door. How did you get in before? For security reasons, the family built the administrative site deep in the dreamscape. Pause the time. With the mechanisms hidden in these nightingale statues. The direction of the statues can be controlled. On the previous occasion, an attendant named Kona had gone to the side room to verify something before setting the statues in the correct positions. Gotcha. All right. Well, maybe we should do the same. Let's go and take a look. Of course, we can also use brute force. And that's what I love doing best, so that's the route I'm gonna go. But actually, how many are here? Six. Okay, I do not want to brute force this. If it was four, maybe. Actually, you know, watch this first try. This one, I'm gonna keep the same. Solving a problem <laughs> by brute force doesn't prove your intelligence. <laughs> side room. Don't let me repeat myself. Nah, trust me, I've got this. Alright, I give up. <laughs> I wonder what the unique dialogue would be if you did solve it by brute force. <laughs> What's with that pose, man? About to karate kick you. Six nightingales facing in different directions. An obvious hint. I do have a really bad memory, so I'm just gonna screenshot this. Thank you very much. <laughs> mm. But are these nightingales... I'll try and remember it though. Right, up, up, and up, right, left. They are. What's wrong? How can nightingales be so huge? <laughs> they look more like torment eagles to me. We're in a dream. There are no eagles in the five families. Only nightingales. <laughs> <sighs> Why am I wasting time with you on this? The two return on the path that they came from. And they, ma they make a good duo. So, right... Forward, forward. This was right, forward, left, right? I do have a really bad memory, so I'm just going to screenshot this. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, is it forward, right, left? Ah, oh, it was forward, right, left. God damn it. I should have I, I should have just done it. I shouldn't have checked. Damn it. <laughs> Alright, boom. Open up. <sighs> just as I thought. Here's the correct answer. A truly miraculous discovery. Perhaps I should offer you the chance to join the Genius Society. <laughs> Gotta love the sass. Really? <laughs> well, I thought you'd given up on that already. I was <laughs> being sarcastic. Can't you tell? Yeah, I love the dynamic between them. Oh, impressive. <laughs> so much for Mr. Sunday's reserved, virtuous image. 
And plus, if Sunday was inviting us, why couldn't he just like, you know, let us in? <laughs> why do we have to go for his puzzle landscape? Do you need me to remind you? We're in a dreamscape. No matter how grand the mansion looks, it'll not affect Penacony. Stop wasting your time nitpicking the family here. That's <laughs> what adventuring does best, though. Yeah, you're right. The only way to destroy the family is death. <laughs> Sunday must have thought the same. Let's head down. That's only if Sunday isn't the one behind death in the first place. You never know. Really? Guys, come on. We can fit through that, alright? It's not a tight squeeze, alright? Damn you. <laughs> TikTok, do you know about the baboshka that controls the dreamscape from the shadows? What of the dream's edge, hidden deep below the dreamscape? Do you know about the top secret family sacrificial rituals? Uh, what? TikTok, they have fooled you, dear guest. Come and hear the truth. I shall show you how truly filthy the dark underbelly of Penacony is. Interesting pieces of lore, hopefully? TikTok, think about it. These stories are insane, right? How could I believe such a thing? God damn it. <laughs> I'm sure they're all just conspiracy theories dreamed up by some B-grade tabloid. They must be fake. Right? Okay, dude. <laughs> yeah, I definitely believe that was put there, you know, to really hint towards something else. Sacrificial rituals, though. Hmm. Hold on. Huh? <laughs> What's wrong? Are we heading the wrong way? Wouldn't surprise me. No. But this door is locked. How fun. My friend, did you <laughs> really make an appointment with him? Yeah, Sunday's just being a bit of a prick, isn't he? <laughs> just making this a lot more difficult than it has to be. It's a trial. You got to prove your worth to Sunday before you can speak with him. If I'm not wrong, we need to find a way to open this door in the hall or this place will be our prison. How fun. Oh, an escape room. <laughs> <laughs> My friend favorite get serious <laughs> i've no time for games let's head back the hint is probably in that prominent sandpit look at you smart fellow <laughs> wow that's an enormous sandpit <laughs> i'd love to build a tall building for myself once i have enough savings and a lot of better frame drops here oh look there's a noticeable gap in the model I believe you're right. So while we just fill it up with sand? <laughs> there wasn't a gap before. That man must have done it intentionally. How fun. Well, with your brilliant mind, you shouldn't have any trouble recalling what was here last time. Right, Doctor? Oof, really rubbing it in. Of course. <laughs> Let's look around. When I see it, I will know it. Ah, uh, so you don't know. Fine. Fine. <laughs> Why do I feel that we're pursuing a degree in burglary now? <laughs> I love adventure, man. Let me go, let me go. Found it. This is it. Yeah. Oh, God damn. He is just making this a lot more difficult than it has to be, isn't he? And there we go. We got it. Huh. And the nameplate reads Gulliver's Arch. <laughs> well, I'm amazed you can remember something this tiny. You know, this reminds me of a tunnel I once saw that could shrink people who passed through it. Really? If I were you, I would <laughs> shut my mouth. It's wise to remain silent when you should. What, and you think he's going to be able to keep silent when he's in front of Sunday? The two return to the lobby. Insert the arch. Oh, this reminds me of one of those building blocks. <laughs> you know, with the blocks. <laughs> I've never played with them before. I wonder if it's more interesting than stacking chips. Yeah, the man just doesn't know when to shut up. Oh, look. The gap is closed. <laughs> and it fits perfectly. <laughs> so, what's next? The door just opens? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. No. <laughs> Oh, good heavens. Oh, good heavens. <laughs> Did I drink? Am I still in a dream? <laughs> <laughs> he sounds so panic. I love it. Indeed. Oh, doctor, you're huge. <laughs> it's me! <laughs> Down here! In the, the sand pit! Oh, actually, I think we could make this work for us. 
<laughs> just find a way to slip me into Sunday's collar. True. And I'll infiltrate the family just like that. It's kind of smart. <sighs> He's got a point. Oh, fine. I was just kidding. Honestly, it's a pretty good plan. Let's find a way to open the door. Sir? Uh, sir? My guy, you do know that is a wall, correct? <laughs> Oh, uh, excuse me, a pillar. Yeah, my guy, I think your other guy might be broken. <laughs> okay, that's kind of good. So I'm guessing this is how they shape uh, Panacone from here, maybe. <laughs> okay, there's definitely going to be a lot of Easter eggs that you can find here that'll, that are probably going to be great. <laughs> this is so dumb. What are you doing, my guys? Just a gaburush. <laughs> That's some... Um, hey, you guys do you, I guess. <laughs> if that's what you're into. <laughs> Hello! Welcome to the Golden Hour base model. God damn it. I am an Oak soldier. I will be here to guide you through the tour of the base model. Happy S to be of service. Sick. Tell me about the guided tour. Hmm. And tell me about the tour. Hello! <laughs> Welcome to the Golden Hour Base <laughs> I am an Oak Soldier. I will be here to guide you through the tour <laughs> of the base mall. Uh, give it a kick. Model, happy to be of service. Always works. Generating guide. Please wait patient. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least the voice actors are having fun with it. Kick it again. Found the nearest check-in spot. Great. Please look behind me. A capsule machine model. Model. Sentient. After screaming, the soldier collapses. He didn't even have time to earn a five-star rating from you. What's up with that? Now the family's toys are trying to frame me? I didn't do a thing to it, Doc. You've got to be my witness. <laughs> I saw nothing. I mean, there is a building in the way, so it has crashed. It may have some time to rebuke. Reboot. 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 God, why can I, why can I say that? Uh, the capsule. Great. Oh, capsule machine. Gotta gamble. Oh, there's no mechanism on the floor. Could there be one at the top? Yep. Doctor, do me a favor. Yeah, twist the thing, please. Oh, damn. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, I was right. <laughs> These models have interiors that look exactly like the real buildings. The only difference is that no one lives in them. It's funny that Sunday puts a miniature that makes him seem like a giant by comparison, right mm. where you can see it first thing in the morning. <laughs> Insecure much? <laughs> Interesting way to view that. Give me that puzzle piece. Thank you. Excuse me, fellas. Come on, at least just let me collect it. Never saw a thing. Oh, one of the fragments flew upstairs. I'll need to use the pinball machine to flick myself up there. But it's tough. It's easy enough. <laughs> oh, great. There's another pinball machine base here. And it's empty, too. Can we just ask Dr. Ratio to, like, pick us up and put us on top of the roof? Doc! need your brain power again. I mean, it, it should be easy enough, right? If he just let us jump on his hand and he puts us on top. There's no need to yell, I can hear you. <laughs> the pinball machine must be hidden somewhere in the hall. Like the arch. Wait here, and I'll be back in a minute. Again, we could avoid all of this if you just, you know, you lift me up there. <sighs> Finally, a <laughs> moment of peace. Actually, I wonder, can we see? Doctor, <laughs> shake a leg. 
Oh, it looks like we can't see him. Without that pinball machine, neither one of us is going anywhere anytime soon. <laughs> how, do you, how do you get that bird then? Actually, you know what? We'll do a 10 pole right here. Why not? Come on, just come home early, Akron. Nope. <laughs> hey, Gallagher, though. I'll take it. Yeah. Okay, we'll do one more. I just, I wanted to come home early. That's all I want. Alright, we'll do some later. Oh, nope. Oh, we got jumped. We'll avoid all that. That's it. Got Pleasant it. moments of solitude are always fleeting. <laughs> what would happen if I put a candy ball into Soul Glad? You can give it a try, but when the Bloodhound family interrogates you, remember not to involve me. Okay. That's a bit weird. Oh, you're back. Just place it here. Thank you. <laughs> place the model in the sand pit. Alright, don't get crushed. <laughs> could have just avoided this, guys. You could have just lifted me up. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. <laughs> oh, Ratio, you should come in here and take a look. The view here is breathtaking. God damn. Honestly, you could easily squash me with just a pinch. Look at him. <laughs> if that is your wish, I will do so without a moment's hesitation. I find those two so enjoyable. <sighs> Hold on. Piece of cake. Called rank. There you go. There you go. And there you go. The joyous tour of Toy City has come to an end. <laughs> it makes me feel sad. It will be missed. Oh, Panacone isn't all bad, right? I'll use this interesting experience as a talking point at the poker table. Fair enough. And out we go. It's a pity you made it out of the sand pit alive. <laughs> Sunday is just beyond this door. From my limited understanding, he's not someone easily handled. Are you prepared? Negotiations are probably going to break down very quickly. Yeah. Only I believe he's the one who should be prepared to face me. Mm. Tell me about your plan. No. I don't have a plan. <laughs> I'll just play it by ear. There are only two kinds of bargaining chips when dealing with people. Benefit or fear. Fair enough. Looks like sincerity isn't in your dictionary. <laughs> Am I not sincere enough? <laughs> There's no need to emphasize it. We've got to make good use of death. That man's sister is dead. He won't be able to turn a blind eye, and that's fear. If you're not thinking about it, like, what about if he's behind his own sister's death? You gotta, you gotta think, you gotta think deeper than that, Aventurine. <laughs> and I'll help him find the murderer. He can't do it due to his status and position, but I can. And that's benefit. I feel like Aventurine's in over his head. I feel like he's being used. On what basis do you believe he's incapable? Necessitating the delegation to someone from a rival faction. The IPC. Fair point. Simple. Because that murderer could very well be a traitor hiding inside the family. A hundred percent that is the case. Again, it might be a character that we haven't seen before. Or it might be Sunday. <laughs> Do you mean the Galaxy Ranger whom you accused previously? But Akron's not inside the family, right? <laughs> that was just an excuse, good doctor. <laughs> There's something wrong with that woman. There you we go. need someone who can keep her in check. It's better to minimize the variables outside our control while we execute our plans. Moreover, I need to know her identity. If I'm lucky. <laughs> she could be an important pawn. And it's good to have more helpful friends when dealing with this matter. <laughs> yeah, they're having a fun time with the bald texter <laughs> this time around. But honestly, the murder case is likely unrelated to her. There I you believe go. my standpoint. There's a rat in the family. Otherwise, why would Mr. Sunday arrange a private meeting with us? This isn't an interrogation, but a secret negotiation. Yeah, and that rat might be Sunday. Y you gotta think, Eventrine. You never we'll know. See. Using Robin's death as a bargaining chip, I'll win back my freedom and power. Mm. In the end, I'll ruin this beautiful dream. The trail line! The grandest death. 
If the chance of winning is just beyond this door, even if that chance is close to zero, well... <laughs> you can't win if you don't play, right? Ah, the charming <laughs> audacity. To think that you, of all people, might emerge victorious, ah, dear gambler. And that was the line we heard when we first arrived in Penacone. So why... So that wasn't a memory of the past then. That was the that was a memory of the future. Interesting. That is very interesting then. So if they were quote unquote memories, why could we see them? Because memories are of the past. There is some sort of time loop going on here, right? There, there's some sort of loop that's happening. If that is the case. Three chips are enough. There it is. All or nothing. That is actually very interesting, because I thought all those memories in that room were of the past, which some of them were, but this conversation is of the future. Huh, that is very, very interesting. There is the man. Before we get to that, I, oh, I, was, <laughs> I thought we could it sneak around. My puzzles are too effortless for you, IPC ambassador. Look, let's be honest, you have the, the full capacity of, like, the dreamscape and the, power, the whole power of dreams. You could be a little bit more creative. <laughs> I appreciate your words. And I see you put a lot of effort into welcoming me, Mr. Sunday. However, this is no way to greet a guest. But on another note, they probably shouldn't have been talking about that right outside his door. It wouldn't surprise me if he's able to hear everything within this whole mansion. So he probably already knows your plan. <laughs> well, this isn't an invitation, but a summoning. Before we speak, I need to test your character. Oh, don't worry, we've already done that. We, we play tested him a little bit. <laughs> he's decent. <laughs> I imagine this knowledgeable doctor friend of yours has been of great help, yes? Certainly. You ought to know this better than I do. He's already faithfully fulfilled his duties, hasn't he? Dr. Regio, I thought you said you were going to be doing the talking. You're just staring at books, my guy. Yes, the doctor has assured me of your noble character. <laughs> he considers you, like himself, a virtuous person who can be trusted by the family. Oh yeah, that's totally, totally the truth, right? I have come to know you very well as a person, Mr. Aventurine. You're diligent, generous, and willing to cooperate. The fact that you succeeded in overcoming many obstacles just to meet me gave me the reason to believe in your wisdom and courage. Generous? Uh, actually, he has given us a bunch of credits, so I, I guess that kind of suits him well. But there's one thing I must ask you. That is, you've used your wisdom at the wrong place to meet the wrong person and put yourself in a situation where you shouldn't be. Eh. Uh, witnessing a tragedy that shouldn't have happened. Robin's case. Yep, he already knows. Oh, you don't look too well. Am I making you anxious? <laughs> if not, then it means I'm on your side. Yeah, playing the mind games? If I wasn't mistaken. You'd just made a serious accusation against the family. Yeah, my guy, again, why were they talking about it just so openly? No, you weren't mistaken. For depravity is creeping in around you. Mm-hmm. There's no need for us to be evasive. Let's talk about your sister. <laughs> your sister's talent is unrivaled in the world of show business. As you know, her voice has been out of tune since she returned to Penacony. What's more disheartening, she can't sing anymore. Okay, so the Robin we actually did see when we first arrived here was the real Robin. That's why it sounded kind of weird. Out of tune though, it sounded robotic if I remember correctly. And then she ended up dying. Okay, I see. Who could be responsible for this? Many suspect the culprit is among the outsiders, but I know you hold a different opinion. Yes, go on, Sunday. Who do you think it is? Now your noble status has become a shackle, preventing you from apprehending the murderer and avenging your sister's death. You're feeling anxious because you're out on a limb. I don't trust him, man. His sister's died and he's just smirking. <laughs> but don't worry. I'm on your side. 
That's like the least trustworthy thing you've said. <laughs> if anyone like adventuring comes up to me and he's like, look, don't worry, I'm on your side. <laughs> I ain't gonna believe him. I'm immensely honored by your concern for me, Mr. Aventurine. Since you're so selfless and generous, I believe you wouldn't ask for anything in return, would you? <laughs> well, naturally, you wouldn't incur any loss from this. I just want to reclaim what is mine. My liberty and the personal items under the family's custody, the bag of gift money, and... Yeah, the bag of gift money that you're going to give it to us? The box in which the cornerstone is stored. The cornerstone? That's right. Oh, yeah, actually, because they did take away Aventurine's gem, which I'm guessing he uses to transform. Cornerstone. I've heard it's a treasured asset of the strategic investment department. A sacred stone that seals the preservation emanator, granting significant power. And every liquidation specialist holds one. Ah, there's ten of them, okay. For an object so precious, it probably comes at an even higher price than other forms of recompense. Well, I'm sure you're aware of the high level of risk I'll be undertaking to bring the truth to light. Give me my true powers? Yeah, okay. Mr. Aventurine, when you're out and about, do you always make adjustments to your appearance? Your tie should be on the center line. Your shirt must not protrude from your vest. Of course. Your trouser creases should be perfectly straight <laughs> and always aligned with the tips of your shoes. That might be pushing it. I mean, if you're going into a meeting or something important, yeah, fair enough. But everyday appearance? Hell no. Of course. But I don't. Because it's not appropriate to do so in public. <laughs> you should make sure everything is presentable and in order before leaving the house. Yeah, but my guy, what if you accidentally bump into someone, you know, someone like knocks into you and knocks something off, like knocks you tied to the right or something. You've got to adjust it. <laughs> not everything can be perfect always. I'm not the kind that takes risks. The cornerstone must be in the custody of the family. No room for negotiation. Those are some eyes. <laughs> Please, don't let me turn you down twice. Sure. The gift money is good enough. <laughs> I suppose you wouldn't mind that. After all, a merchant can't function without a bargaining chip. Yeah, the money's the most important part. You compromised quicker than I thought. Unfortunately, it's a gambler that needs a bargaining chip, not a merchant. I can give you your gift money. But before that, I want you to tell me. What is your true goal? Oh. The fact that you can decisively forsake the box you asked for, what exactly is stored in it? Ah, so he hasn't taken a look at it. Oh, that smirk, dude. Oh, triple faced soul. Yeah? He sear his tongue and palms with a hot iron so that he will not be able to fabricate lies and make false vows. Yeah, well, that's terrifying. Uh, so Sunday also has the ability to control the dreams. Unless it's a, like a separate thing. Robin's able to like stabilize people and Sunday's able to control people. Unless they all have the same ability, who knows. <laughs> what have you done? Hey man, we gotta go with a scrap at this point. Under the light of the harmony, all wickedness is revealed. I implore them to shed their light and I'll ask you questions on their behalf. Next, you have 113 seconds to prove your innocence and gain my trust. 113 seconds, that's a bit, that's a very odd number to go by. And if I refuse to answer? You can try, and we'll see if the harmony rejects you. Alright, bet. <laughs> Question, do you own a cornerstone? Yes. Yes. What a simple answer. <laughs> you, too, understand that idle chatter leads only to poverty. Yeah, Sunday, a bit terrifying. Also, who who is this? Who's watching? Did you hand over the cornerstone to the family when you entered Panacone? Yes. Yes. Does the cornerstone you handed over to the family belong to you? Yes. Yes. Is your cornerstone in this room right now? No. Yes. Oh, I thought he might have played like a trick there. 
Is your memory free from any kind of tampering or deletion? Encompassing, but not restricted to the techniques of the Garden of Recollection? Yes. Yes. Yeah, making sure the Garden didn't do anything. That's smart to ask about. Are you an Avgen from Sigonia? Yes. Yes. You even know about that? Do the Avgens have any ability to read, tamper with, or manipulate one's own or another's mind? What, like you? No. Does it matter? I mean, I feel like that's a very important thing to ask, though. Do you oh. love your family more than yourself? Oh, I don't like that. The music could... Oh, no. <laughs> yes. Aww. The kind of a long pause with that one. All the Avgens were killed in a massacre. Am I right? Was that Bird the one talking? No. Hmm. Are you your clan's sole survivor? No. <laughs> Perhaps. Yeah, he doesn't know. Or maybe it's the bird that's doing that. Do you hate and wish to destroy this world with your own hands? That's gonna be a tough one. <laughs> you can't resist it. I don't know. Hmm. Honestly, like, at first, like, I thought Pentaconia was, you know, a weird place, but it's also nice. But the more I learned about the family and what they're doing, I kind of, I kind of, I kind of had the thought process of, yeah, it's probably best for Pentaconia to be destroyed. That's how I viewed it. Interesting. Now, the final question. The big one. Can you swear that at this very moment, the Aventurine Stone is safe and sound in this box? Yes. Oh. oh, I don't like that. Hmm. Didn't answer. <laughs> I mean, even Dr. Ratio knows the answer to that. Of course. Can we, how much can we trust of this though? Can you swear that at this very moment, the Venturine Stone is safe and sound in this box? Two pauses by both of them. And then of course. Unless it was the way it was worded, like at this very moment, yeah, it's safe, but not for long. <laughs> Looks like we can get an answer. Terrifying. Open it, Mr. Aventurine. It's your last chance to defend your honor. Hmm. Interesting. Well, he's got his power back. <laughs> yeah. Please. Help me out. <laughs> I don't, to I don't even trust Dr. Ratio. <laughs> ah, you mother. Are these what you're looking for? <laughs> Fair play. <laughs> Several hours ago, D Dimwillet Pavilion. Since you came as promised, learned doctor, ah. does this mean that you are willing to take the side of the family in this farce? Yeah, Dr. Ratio set him up. So what does that mean now that Aventurine would be willing to betray the IPC if that is the case? Hmm. Interesting indeed. What makes you think you can convince me? So what was the point of having them out of the box though? Oh, like, unless I just missed something there? Probably, I don't know. I've heard you haven't enjoyed Mr. Aventurine's <laughs> company. I also understand that you're an avid learner who sees the pursuit of knowledge above all. Yeah, man. I can't trust Sunday now. After seeing him, like, smirk like that? Yeah, the man is definitely the mastermind. In that case, you ought to realize that a competent scholar knows their position and wouldn't forsake more vital matters for the sake of petty pride. If you agree to assist the family, I'll share our research findings on the Stellaron. Ah, that's must big. must be quite aware that, besides <laughs> the family, no other faction is willing to share such information. So what is the Stellaron doing in Pentaconia then, right? Like, what role is it playing? Hmm. That's all it takes. Cut to the chase. What do you need from me? 
I need Mr. Aventurine's comprehensive plan. <laughs> Actually, you know what? That works out because not even Dr. Ratio knows. Haven't you confiscated his cornerstone? You can't expect a featherless bird to take flight. But I've also heard the ten elites in the strategic investment department have united, progressing together in the interests of the IPC. You'll have to speak more clearly than that. Mm. Yeah, what are you trying to say? <sighs> the cornerstone which Mr. Aventurine surrendered. Was it really his? Oh, imagine if it's Topaz's, right? Oh, so that's why there were two then on the table? <laughs> You question whether he would entrust you with someone else's mm. cornerstone. The ten stone hearts aren't as united as you think. Cornerstones are significantly more precious to them than their very own lives. But you know that he's a crazed gambler. <laughs> the more vocal he is about it, the more cautious I must be. So yeah, that's why there were two on the table then. Maybe it wasn't his, but they still got it. Somehow. I never imagined someone would share his way of thinking. <laughs> Honestly, you should see a shrink. <laughs> Bring it. The box containing the cornerstone is unique. And only IPC senior staff and related members can access it. But I happen to be among them. Yeah, you're gonna sell him out. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not gonna be his. It's probably gonna be the orange one, right? <laughs> I appreciate it. Because we already know that Aventuring went against Dr. Ratio. Unfortunately, your guess is correct. There you go. So how did they get Aventurines then? <laughs> okay, so whose cornerstone is that then? Unless it is Topaz. The Golden Stone. Its color and glow are similar to that of Klepoth's body. Hmm. This is the very ruse he intends to use to fool you. He won't reveal to you that the Ten Stone Hearts chisel their own will into the cornerstones. Granting them an unparalleled radiance. So that's why the cornerstones are so important to them, because it's basically, essentially, their own will. Gotcha. And this golden statue is also known as Topaz, not Adventurine. Mm. And it belongs to Topaz. So that means she has a form that we haven't seen then. Interesting. So, do you wish to confront him? Ah, that's the favor he probably turned in, right? Because we know Aventurine helped Topaz. And then he he's probably like, yo, I helped you. Give me your cornerstone. <laughs> Which, again, is pretty weird that she agreed to that. Not at the moment. I'm more interested to know the location of his cornerstone. The safest place somewhere you'd never think of. Because he never <laughs> intended to hide it. In fact, that cornerstone has been in your hands. From the very beginning. <laughs> you know what? Fair play. <laughs> if Dr. Ratio never sought him out, probably never would have found it. And there you go. I see. This bag. Mixing a cornerstone. More precious than life itself. With a bunch of worthless jewels. Disguised as a gift of money waiting to be confiscated is indeed in line with Mr. Aventurine's style. Damn, I kind of feel bad for him though. Sold out. Then he makes up some trivial excuse, downplaying the matter and requests the gift money. Wow. This is a gamble, one he's all too familiar with. <laughs> betting on your single misstep, leading to a total loss. My guy, Dr. Ratio, what are you doing here? <laughs> I know Dr. Ratio said, oh yeah, he, he's not willing to betray someone because of pride. I'm, I'm starting to suspect he is. Learn it, Doctor. I am grateful for your help. The family will surely reward a righteous person like you. Can't trust anyone, man. As for the villain, <laughs> I hope he retreats in humiliation. Are we scrapping? Yeah. 
It was all thanks to your friend with a keen eye that I could add a blot of utter failure to your storied career. Unless <laughs> Aventurine planned for this. <laughs> he knew Dr. Ratio was going to betray him. <sighs> Ratio, you wretch. Yeah, fair play. <laughs> Finally shown your true colors, huh? Oh, and just to remind you, you currently only have 17 system hours left to live. Oh. Treasure your remaining time and savor the delectable aftertaste of defeat. Okay, that threat just came out of nowhere. You currently only have 17 hours left to live. I enjoy it. <sighs> you might as well explain yourself a little more clearly. What I performed on you just now was the Harmony's Consecration. Yeah. You would show allegiance beneath the illumination of their grace. Yet you acted willfully, uttering nothing but falsehoods, transforming the Consecration into a trial. I genuinely see no reason to absolve you from it. So what? He could actually say any answer he wanted, but was just pretending, if I understand that right? And because he was lying on all the answers, he pretty much signed his death warrant. <laughs> is this what the Harmony represents? But is it built upon constraint and coercion? Seems like it. <laughs> you misunderstand, Mr. Aventurine. Punishment is meant for the irreverent. But I have seen your resilient spirit, and thus I offer you the possibility of a new beginning. Nah, I'm good. I don't want to join your cult, my guy. Throughout these 17 system hours, you will be unable to escape the dreamscape or contact any of your companions. You only have two paths before you, mm. and it all depends on whether you can complete my test within the time limit. Yep, yeah, using him as a pawn, and that's probably why he's going to fight against us. Should you succeed, you will be able to coalesce into the harmony and be with your family. If you fail, you will suffer the wrath of the Eternal Centurion and fall into an abyss of doom. Ah, how fun. You're definitely not the villain, are you, Sunday? <sighs> oh, sounds like I'm gonna end up the same either way. <laughs> I indeed do need a servant to help me uncover the evil hidden in the family from an external perspective. Oh. I will purge the evil from the inside and bring the real culprits to justice within 17 system hours. Okay, so it could be the case that there is someone hidden within the family that isn't Sunday, that is the traitor, but who knows? When the time comes, compare your findings with mine. If both our findings align, or if you can provide me more insights, then they will truly be able to grant you mercy and honesty. God, Sunday, Sunday is pretty much the exact same as Aventurine. <laughs> Shameless hypocrites. You took everything from me and still demand the truth? That isn't fair. Your carnival reeks with the stench of cash. Nothing is achievable without it. Hmm. Hey man, you gambled though. You took the risk. And look where it's led you. This is meant to be an act of personal virtue. Not requiring the family's support. Your bag is over there. Do as you please. I believe you can trade this bag of worthless jewels for everything you need. That's what gamblers excel at, isn't it? Fair enough. <laughs> Off you go, Mr. Aventurine. You are free. <laughs> I will wait here for your good news. That's so messed up. Yeah, you're free. You're definitely not going to die in 17 hours if you don't do what I asked. Technically, he is the truth. He's free to do what he wants. Yeah, what's up with this bird, man? It's got the same eye this pattern. This meeting isn't an interrogation or a negotiation. It's a threat. It's an outright execution. That too. <laughs> Why would I do that, Mr. Aventurine? I'm just wondering what a passerby who stumbled upon a scene of a murder could have found out. That's all. Sunday, very suspicious. By the way, before you go... I have a personal question. What is it now? You... What? Do you truly wish to bring about the destruction of this world? <laughs> what do you think is the answer now? 
I certainly would. Kakabasha! Oh. Where did you go? Oh, are you injured? Damn, that looks sick. Also, men just, like, sent him into a flashback. <laughs> I got it back, sister. Oh, uh, it was cute, man. You went to look for them? That's too dangerous. It's just a necklace. It's neither food nor water. But we can survive without it. Okay, sister. Gotcha. All right. But I can't live without you, little brother. Promise me not to look for those catechins again. Okay? Sister, don't be afraid. The catechins are fools, but I'm smart. I played a game with them, and I won. So the catechins, aka the shell slasher, a different, like, sentient being. So this is where he got into gambling. One? What happened exactly? Tell me. I made a bet with them. The two birds in the desert and me. Who will die first? I won. Oh, oh. <laughs> they suspected me of cheating, but I didn't. I won fair and square. Okay. <laughs> of course. Of course you'd win. You've always been a lucky child. Gaiathra Triclops must be watching over you. He is indeed. But that's no reason to push your luck by going up against those... those bloodthirsty, cruel catechins. Have you forgotten how mom and dad... Unless catechins are the outsiders. Look, this is just a necklace. But Kakavasha, you are my only family. Aww. <sighs> I'm sorry, sister. I thought you'd be happy. Because mom left you this necklace. Okay, so what went wrong if his mom and dad died? His sister probably died soon after this. Yeah, I, I, I kind of feel bad for him. There'll be no next time. It is important. But not as important as you, my dearest brother. Mm -hmm. I, I don't blame you, but you must remember what mom said. Pain and poverty are the trials of Gaiathra Triclops. She has also granted us a chance. And that's your good luck, Kakavasha. Your good luck is the most precious wealth Actually. we all Avgen have. You're a child blessed by Gaiathra Triclops and can lead the clan to happiness. So always remember to protect yourself and never resent the pain and poverty you're going through. All right? Hmm. Mm hmm. Interesting. All right. Listen to me and swear to Gaiathra Triclops. So he was given the same name as uh, Triclops then? Okay. We'll swear to Gaiathra Triclops to protect this wealth. And that's why he's so obsessed with money. Okay. But sister, if Gaiathra Triclops was really watching over us, would we really be suffering? Then why did she not protect Dad when he was swept away by the quicksand? Hmm. After all, Dad went to the Catechins land only to prepare for Gaiathra Triclops' offerings. And where was Gaiathra Triclops when Mom was shivering in our arms? Mom was still pleading for Gaiathra Triclops' forgiveness under her breath till the moment she closed her eyes. Ugh, man. Don't like to hear that. Sister. Everyone praises me for being smart, but I don't get it. If every rain pour was Gaiathra Triclops' forgiveness and grace... But wasn't it the outsiders that made it rain? Then how bad were our sins? So much so that we were born in this world of death? Fair enough point. Yeah, back to the trailblazer. No, I want to see what happened. <laughs> I want to hear his answer. Excuse me. Yes? I can't seem to find any information on this artist in the Iris family archives. The photo you provided also doesn't show any matches. There's a lot of different things here. It's rather, she didn't exist in reality whatsoever, and she's just a memory that was created from someone. That someone is most likely going to be Sam, so that's why they can't find her. Because it could be possible that Firefly had some sort of connection to Sam in the past, so he has a memory of her, and he was able to recreate her in the dreamscape because of the dream technology. Tinfoil hat conspiracy. <laughs> hmm, just as I thought. I'd like to ask, what kind of traces do people leave when they enter a dream? Hmm. 
Are you referring to the records when you enter the dream pool? The equipment will monitor physiological indicators such as heart rate, blood oxygen levels, and body temperature in real time. This data will be included in statistics and handed over to the family for the screening of any data anomalies. Immediate action will be taken once any illegal behavior is detected. We do know that Feifler has to be in an icy medical cabin, right? So if we look for someone with a cold temperature, then we could most likely find her, right? So is it possible to access these records? Most likely not. I apologize. The hotel does not have access. This information is managed by the Bloodhound family. Gallagher? We can only gain access if there's a problem. Okay, that's kind of that's kind of huge. Looks like nothing can be found here. At least we know who to look for next. We can ask the Bloodhound family for information. Thank you for your assistance, Miss Allie. By the way, is Miss Robin doing fine? <laughs> yeah. We are looking forward to her performance. Yeah, I just really needed to, uh, you know, shove that in there, didn't you? Fine? What does that mean? Is there something wrong with Miss Robin? The preparations for the Charmony Festival have been proceeding smoothly. Yeah, why would she so, know? I guess things are pretty good. I believe she will be able to put on a spectacular show for all of you. Yeah, I feel like only the important people in the family I probably know about uh, Robin. Someone that works the desk most likely isn't. Hmm, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, not acting sure suspicious enough, there. No one knows about Miss Robin. I'm not surprised. But that Miss Firefly is truly mysterious. Mm -hmm. There's no information on her in the hotel system. Even if she's a stowaway, she should have a disguised identity after entering the planet. Again, she's either a memory or she is Sam. She's also in the running for the legacy. How is she going to sneak into the dreamscape unnoticed? Uh, is there any other way to enter a dream? Besides the hotel room's dream pool? The Garden of Recollection are the Stellaron Hunters. Yep. The Memo Keepers have abilities that are difficult for normal people to comprehend. In the memory zone of Penacony, they thrive effortlessly. A fact proven to us by Black Swan. The hacker girl from the Stellaron Hunters used extraordinary means to unlock the Dreamscape Hotel's seal. According to the scene witnessed by her, it is likely that they are behind Miss Firefly's case. Indeed. Or it could just be the case that, you know, Firefly is Sam, she was able to sneak in like that, blah, 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 blah. You know how it goes. The Garden of Recollection and the Stellaron Hunters. Both are possible, but what about the IPC? Since hmm. they want Penacony all for themselves, they're bound to have a plan. Yeah, but they didn't even... Oh, well, Match won't know about it, but they don't even know about Firefly, so... Huh. Who are you guys? Oh? Bloodhound family? The Bravo oh. team has arrived at their designated <laughs> position. Ready to execute armed evacuation operation. Cool. Get moving. Classic IPC. <laughs> Maybe Topaz is with them. Uh, uh, armed evacuation? <laughs> Boss, aren't you drunk? What do you know? It's more efficient <laughs> this way. Just don't let the director find out. Act first, report later. Understood. Wait, this is Tobaz's team, right? I remember something similar to this on uh, Bellabog. Help! Help me! I spent all my year-end bonus on the snowball! I don't want my name on the department's major disciplinary notice! This is the, the sparkle music, right? Hey, check it out! That voice! Could it be the IPC workers from Bellabog? Hey, it was! So Topaz is here! To the IPC will be conducting special operations within the hotel. Please follow the staff in charge of evacuation to the designated safe zones, or compulsory measures will be enforced. There she is. Speeding for you lot. You've been told not to drink during work hours. She's back. Oh yeah, because she has it on her chest here. So yeah, that would have given away that it was her cornerstone. Take him back to the hotel room. <laughs> I'll organize a meeting later to properly go over how this incident report should be written. But it feels a lot better to have Topaz here. Miss Topaz? I never thought I'd run into you on Penacony. <laughs> a natural friend. 
Oh, long time no see, Astral Express crew. Aventurine has told me a lot about your happenings. Huh? Yeah, he might have given away both your cornerstone and his to the family, which you probably can't get back. I'm okay. get. <sighs> it's fine. Do as they ask and try to avoid any conflicts with the family. <laughs> Report to me before taking any action. <laughs> yes. All right. She really needs a better career, I'm just saying. <laughs> as you see, the IPC isn't very popular here on Pentaconi. Makes sense. Cordiality from the family is a mere facade. The former Frontier prison has turned around and cuffed its shackles on the IPC staff now. <laughs> That's ironic. Only a Venturine, who carries an invitation, is allowed to attend the banquet. An entourage like us, we can only sit around in the reality hotel, unauthorized to even enter dreams. I mean, we were allowed in though, right? Like, because we wasn't on the, like, invitation list since the invitation was sent out before we even joined. And then Aventurine was able to get us in along with Sunday, I believe, if I remember correctly. So it is possible for other people to enter. No wonder Aventurine's scrambling to partner up with someone. The IPC can't back him up in the dreamscape. <laughs> His situation isn't optimistic, I hear. You're all helping to investigate some dirt on the family, are you not? <laughs> Let me know if you need anything outside the dreamscape. The IPC always treats its partners well. Okay guys, I'm just saying, you all, you all really need to stop talking about important information out in the open. We're sitting in the middle of the hotel and you're like, yeah, so I heard you're trying to dig up some dirt on the family. Did you hear that? I heard you were trying to dig up some dirt on the family. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Topaz. We're on our way to the Hounds to verify some intel. Perhaps you've had dealings with them? But yeah, we could have Topaz try look for Firefly. <laughs> yep. They're mm. tailing us right now. Why not go and talk to them? They don't take the spotlight off me. Being constantly stared at is really uncomfortable. Getting the side eyes. How What's does it? it feel to be in business with Aventurine? <laughs> <laughs> I bet you're not used to it. It's... It's fun. That's just his style. Ball or nothing is his mantra. He's always cozying up to his clients while egging them on to undertake some dangerous assignment with him. But everyone has their merits, so I won't comment further. But Venturine's luck has always been good. He's always closed all his cases without a hitch and basically never lost a gamble. Which is why, on the issue of retaking Pana County, I'm watching with keen interest. Yeah, so maybe Aventurine did plan for Dr. Ratio to betray him. He probably just didn't account for the whole 17 hours of before you die business. Yeah, it only works when all parties' interests are aligned. <laughs> of course. It's business after all. What's important is where you're seated at the table. As for the two cases, apologies but i don't have much info on them either all i can do is ask you to keep digging for more details <laughs> we'll try our best we're carrying out our captain's orders <laughs> what, what do you want oh wait were these the same people we saw in the dreamscape <laughs> the first time when we met when we met firefly we made a mistake last time yeah and we're working hard to rectify it now we don't have time for anything else Surveilling the IPC executive Topaz, ensuring that she stays put at the Reverie Hotel during her time on Panacone. We've got the right one this time. Uh, my guys, uh, should you really be revealing this information to us? So that's it. They were the pair who were after Firefly at the time. Correct. We meet again. <laughs> <laughs> it's you again. Back for more trouble? We're not afraid of you this time. Hey, this is reality now, brother. <laughs> you will die. Well, spit it out. Stop bothering us if you've nothing important. So you know each other. Uh, why do you keep <laughs> running into people you've beaten up before? Because I'm the main character. I've got business with your captain. Where is he? I need you to pull off some records for me. It's official business. Oh yeah, they would definitely listen to that. When's our lunch break? Mmm, hungry. <laughs> Why do you keep asking me that? 
We're in the middle of investigating a murder case for the family. <laughs> May we speak to your captain about it? When have I ever asked you that question? Oh, uh, well... Hey! The security officer instructed everyone to shut their traps before he returned from Dream's Edge. Boo. What murder? You'd better stop spouting nonsense. <laughs> Bro, he's just revealed he already knows. Yeah, th th that's right. <laughs> we have nothing to report. Please leave. Is that so? Looks like they're not going to cooperate. But they did at least tell us that the captain is at Dream's Edge. Well, there you go. Uh, why don't we just look for the security officer then? It's probably Gallagher. The one she mentioned, right? Correct. The chat himself. Oh, such tight security. I bet they're stumped by the case as well. Gallagher. Gallagher. Where could he be? I wonder. All right, we'll continue the Akron pause. All right, third temple. Oh, okay. That's very early. 30p. Come on, just come home early, please. Come on. Please, so I can get, I, I, I can pull for the light cone. Come on, Acheron. Okay, Pella, not bad. Yes, let's get it. It's too early in the morning, so I can't shout. <laughs> oh, that is so good. 30 pity. Nice. That's huge. 10, 15, 20. So yeah, around 30 pity. Pretty much 33k left over. That is so good. Apologies. The Bloodhound family is running an investigation up ahead. No unauthorized personnel allowed. I wonder if they're like retracing the steps we had with Firefly. Hold on a minute. I think I've seen you before. The, the gray haired one. What's up? How much trouble have you stirred <laughs> up exactly on Penicone? We've done a bit. This ain't it, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the wrong gal. Not possible. It was you the last time yelling about some clockwork friendship while beating me <laughs> up with that silver-haired girl. Oh wait, it's this guy. <laughs> hey guys, I can explain. Uh... <laughs> I'm not letting you get by this time. <laughs> Please leave. Or I'll have to get on my knees and beg you. <laughs> God, we kind of traumatized this dude. <laughs> huh? What kind of heinous crime have you committed now? <laughs> I forgot, did we switch his thing to sad when we were with Firefly? Hold on, sir. We have documents <laughs> authorized by the family that would aid your investigation. If it wouldn't trouble you, could we see this Mr. Gallagher? Who exactly is this Gallagher you keep talking about? There have been a few people mentioning this name. Even the one with the gray hair. Do you guys not even know your boss? Uh, he didn't send you all here? It was the security officer who dispatched us? That's all I can divulge. Isn't that Gallagher? Uh, he'll do! He's the one we've been looking for! Wait a minute, I'm, a, I'm confused. <sighs> Sorry, no can do. The boss said that since it's a matter of the family's reputation, no one's allowed through. Yeah, wait, is it? So, do you not even know your boss's name? Everyone, please leave. There's really no need for us to make things difficult for each other, right? I'm sorry, my guy, for traumatizing you. We're really sorry for troubling you. <clears throat> Let's think of another way. Hey, we can control his emotions. Another way. Uh, that's it. Didn't they say something about that? Oh, uh, what was it? Clockwork? That got this guy to change his mind. <laughs> He's just sat there like, wait, what? What are you guys talking about? Changed my mind? What, what did you do? Can you perform it again? That uh, clocky magic. But I can't abuse it for evil doings. Yeah, wait, why Why is the Trailblazer drawing the line now? We've already abused this so much. <laughs> Please? Alright, Ben. You and the Bloodhound family member have met before, 
And you know he's very upright. But you're also aware that the principle sometimes doesn't matter when a person is in a good mood. Alright. There you go. You're now very happy, my guy. <sighs> Let me see what time it is now. It's happy time. Whoa. It's this time already. What? <laughs> my god. Time to clock out. And <laughs> no one's gonna stop me. <laughs> The highly principled member of the Bloodhound family laughed heartily and left the scene. Uh, what? Witness my true power. <laughs> uh, this clockwork trick of yours, it's kinda dangerous. Yeah, it is. At least he won't be getting in our way again. <laughs> Let's go find that Gallagher and ask him the intricacies of the case. I was wondering what all the commotion was. Huh. Oh, it's you guys. Sup. Welcome. Since you made it here, what can I do for you? God, he's so fine. Hello, Mr. Gallagher, sir. Judging from your tone, it sounds like you were expecting us. <laughs> Miss Himako, <laughs> you're too polite. There's no need to call me sir. Already knows about us. I mean, fair enough, I guess. Mr. Gallagher. You even know my name. Well, he is the security officer. We are very famous. It makes sense. Of course I do. You folks are from the legendary Astral Express and honorable guests of the Watchmaker. Thank you. I had an encounter with this lady in the Golden Hour. <laughs> I remember that little silver haired girl was there too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for what happened to that kid. Yeah, we are sorry too. This is also the reason why we've come to visit you, Mr. Gallagher. The Express can't just overlook the death of that child. Depression. So we've decided <laughs> to help the family get to the bottom of it. In the hopes of getting justice for her. Yeah, we're definitely making sure the family isn't covering it up. The Nameless involved with the family. What an unpredictable twist of fate. Yeah, he's the only one I can trust from the family. Why? What's wrong with the family? What isn't? Uh, it's nothing. On Pentacony, <laughs> everyone loves the family. He knows. No matter how much one resists the beautiful dream, when the time comes, they too will find it hard to let go. Who wants to leave a warm nest? Just idiots, little kids, and inebriated fools. Yep, it's pretty much a place that's meant to entrap you. Mr. Gallagher seems to be getting at something. Mm -hmm. But you got it wrong. I'm not. <laughs> no, guys, I'm totally not. <laughs> you want to discuss the case? Sure. Come with me. This is not a good place to talk. Let's go elsewhere. Thank you. A guy with common sense. Let's not talk about important information in front of everyone else. At, a, at this moment, on the other side, man, we are bouncing around to other people. Even after that chilling tragedy this dream is still running effortlessly and then these two are on a date <laughs> vibing drinking some what was it called again something wake up other than the family of the harmony it's hard to imagine any other power in the universe that could sustain a building of such magnitude mm -hmm. i really want a chocolate bar the family itself is a huge perfect building like a living idol Actually, yeah, that's a pretty good comparison. Didn't Well also kind of go for an idol phase? <laughs> Each member of the family sees themselves as a piece of the divine puzzle, revolving around a singular core and a shared ideal. Under their command, they loyally fulfill their roles, offering themselves while also receiving sustenance in return. Interesting analogy. Perhaps that's why Pinnacone's beautiful dream has persisted for so long. Yeah, they brainwash people so they get rid of their actual dreams and replace them with the dreams that, that the family wants. So that's how this beautiful place has remained how it is. But the human body has its limits, and so does the divines. Mm -hmm. That doesn't sound like the kind of comment a galaxy ranger would make. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> Just pointing out the facts. Mr. Yang will definitely have a better <laughs> sense of what's going on than I do. <laughs> I love how these two are just constantly heavily hinting towards things. Why do you say that, Miss Agaron? The beautiful dream is crumbling. 
But not because of a particular eon, a particular faction, or a particular visitor. That's collapse stems from a certain inevitability of human nature. Mm -hmm. The family refuses to acknowledge this, and it has ultimately backfired and become a catalyst. Yep, the people's desires have corrupted the dreams. The family can't control everyone. They only can control a certain amount of people. There's going to be people that slip by. As people immerse their souls in the dreamscape, where consequences and pain cease to exist, and only ease and pleasure prevail, they draw closer and closer to necrosis. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the perceived bliss, death looms as the inevitable conclusion. Also, this necrosis will diffuse and spread. One piece of the puzzle's mutation will eventually cause the entire building to shake, break, and crumble. In the end, the dreams that people built in the name of freedom became the cage that imprisoned them. Yep, people never want to leave. I'm sure you've gained a lot from this trip, Miss Acheron. Are you willing to share your findings with me? Well, with how much you two are dancing around each other, not not just talking things through? Probably not. Of course. That's if I remember. Also that. She says this as her hand gently rests on the hilt of the sword. And then quietly lets go in the blink of an eye. Yeah, the sword definitely has something to do with her memories, like, being erased. Also, that might explain why there's no memory of, uh, when Black Swan was looking into the memory of Duke Inferno's death. She wasn't able to see when Akron arrived because she drew her sword. And in return, that, you know, erased that memory. Hmm. Hmm. Don't mind me. It's just a habit. Owing to events in the past, I've become easily... forgetful. It's only when this sword is unsheathed that those hazy memories start to become clearer. So when she's in that saturated state, she regains all of her memories. Which explains why she's crying each time she does it. Makes sense. Take your time. <laughs> <laughs> that should do it. I vividly remember everything that occurred on Panacone. Ask away. Regarding the moment of daybreak. The moment of daybreak. I've heard that's where the Dawn Factory, which processes the foundation of the Dreamscape, is located. Mm. Behind the Dreamscape's song and dance stand many imagination factories. Workers create all kinds of whimsical works day in and day out in their dreams, and they return to reality and sleep on a narrow bed in a room. A far cry from luxury. So they just harvest people's imagination. That sounds fun. They say it will suffice. Experiencing the bizarre and motley dreamscape is the best reward. That's just depressing though, isn't it? There I encountered a young woman who had just come of age. The perfect time to indulge in beautiful dreams. Her greatest wish was to one day move to the golden hour and see the magnificent garments she had woven with her own hands. Yeah, until the family takes that, gets completely rid of that dream and replaces it with the dream that the family wants. For certain reasons, her wish was... Difficult to fulfill. But I managed to bring her a garment. Regarding the Gilded Hour. Gilded Hour. It's said to be Penacone's currency center. Yes. It is a fortress-like financial city. The economic heart of the dreamscape. The Papeshi people of the Alfalfa family are there to keep it running. Sending blood that is made from money everywhere on Penacone. Sending blood that is made from money everywhere. Okay. Everyone there is exquisitely dressed and always in a hurry. The greatest wish of the local Papeshi people is for their future generations to work in the Gilded Hour. How fun. I've never met anyone who is willing to talk. I could only stand at the crossroads, watching crowds of people hurrying like the wind through the jungle of steel, only to deposit the alfalfa credits that they'd earned into the bank's vault. I mean, we could affect someone's mood with uh, Clocky's power. That might help. I don't know if they would open the vault door. But before I left, I witnessed a well-dressed Papeshi person plummet from the sky. <laughs> All those around him continued on their way, unfazed. About the Blue Hour. I hear the Blue Hour is uh, very romantic. Do you have any tales to share? Is that why she had the dance? Perhaps Mr. Yang has heard. There is a large boat called the Aventide, 
anchored along the sea of dreams. It was. Where soft music and dancing persists endlessly every night. I had a nice dance with the memo keeper. I ran into a wizened lady there. <laughs> she was at the dock, waiting for her long departed lover to return. Waiting for countless hours within time that stood still. In the humid sea breeze, she spoke of her own youth. Like many who desired wealth and love, they came to Panacone to pursue their dreams. Alas, her lover's consciousness was lost in the dark depths of the Sea of Dreams. That's depressing, but also makes sense. Finally, she suggested we continue our conversation on a boat in the shallows. I agreed and boarded the boat with her. But she never said anything. Her eyes absent-mindedly gazing at the horizon for what seemed like forever. Yeah, guys, Penacony. It's a very fun place, right? You know, this is where your dreams come true, right? <laughs> Finally, we retreated to the beach. So I'm guessing the blue hour is where Black Swan and Akron had her, their dance. About the moment of dusk. The dreamscape of chic, luxury, and consumerism. The moment of dusk. My companions have been there too. Then you all must have seen those who are attempting to realize their dreams. Or have realized them. Scattering money as if it were dust and betting it on all or nothing. Everything has a price. And everything can be bought or sold. Oh yeah. The Even dreams <clears throat> themselves. Yeah, the whole like selling of dreams to that weird thing in the corner. Still don't trust it. <laughs> I saw an Intellitron there who was preparing to auction himself. Oh damn. When someone wins a bid, under stipulated periods and rules, he would do the buyer's every bidding, becoming that person's very possession. But why, though? That Intellitron had been auctioned off a dozen times, and I participated in his 13th. That was the grandest banquet I had ever attended. But never again did anyone cast another glance at him. Well, they just got bored of him? This time around, there were no successful bids for him. Seems that way. Oh, that was depressing. That's everything. This is what I've seen and heard along the way. Yeah, Panacone. <laughs> said to me, Panacone wasn't like this a long time ago. Nor should it be. Is that the person you're looking for? I've traveled through the reality and dreamscape of the planet of festivities. Watched the tides of night rise and fall when time stopped for people. Where the spirits of the rich and impoverished remain forever fixed on their own scales. Yeah, look, if there's anyone that should be put in charge in Panacone, it's probably going to be like Misha or something. Or like Firefly, or just someone going after the Watchmaker's legacy. Because if the family stays in charge, it's going to be depressing. If the IPC takes control, it's going to just turn into another prison. This is why I think the collapse of the beautiful dream is inevitable. Mm -hmm. There might be a way to change everything. With the power of friendship. Perhaps. But if this is indeed the world that people desire, if this is precisely why life chooses to slumber, should we still seek to change it? What does the red text mean? <laughs> <sighs> Miss Acheron, now it's my turn to share a story with you. His past? We got a music change as well. There was a man from my homeland who, at a time when the world was grappling with deep, unhealable pain, made a choice. Okay, this is for the Third Impact players. <laughs> I don't know a lot about Welt's Law from Third Impact. I only know very few snippets. He wove together the dreams of everyone in the world, linking people's dreamscapes and shouldered this burden himself. From this, he created a giant, a spiritual Adam. Is he talking about himself or is he actually talking about a different person he knew? And since that moment, the giant stood between heaven and <clears throat> earth, becoming the pillar of the world's existence. As a price, those who found it hard to move forward, who could not advance, forever lost their future. Damn, this music though, kind of going hard. They slumbered in a dream, devoid of disaster and pain, living out their days peacefully in the man's created utopia. 
And it is because of the wishes of those people who wished not to awaken that this spiritual atom became unbreakable. So pretty much what he's saying is because people don't want to wake up from this dream, it will never break. That's what I can understand from that. And yet, you stand here right now. Which also means that man failed. Also very valid point. Because people must always move towards the future. Even if human weaknesses make them pause when they truly cannot move forward, humanity will eventually seek a way to save itself. Damn, actually, what is this thing moving in the background? And that man, he was never a failure. Like everyone in that world, he etched the possibilities of human nature into his heart. I really wish I had context on this, but I don't, unfortunately. He was the sun chaser of legend, soaring towards the sky and embracing his final victory with his fall. Icarus. He ascended to heights uncharted, only to come face to face with the sun. You know how that goes. Not visited by anyone before. His wings would melt because of it, only for him to fall into the sea. And after that. Yeah, okay. So, is this just retelling the story of Icarus? <laughs> oh, he was the Icarus of legend. Okay. Countless others would surpass him, soaring to even greater heights. A fitting metaphor for the Nameless's trailblazing spirit. Actually, yeah, good point. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Yang. I know what you wish to confirm. The universe has innumerable similar, yet <clears throat> different worlds. In these worlds, there are innumerable people who look alike, yet don't. Yeah, how characters look similar from Genshin Impact and Third Impact. <laughs> I too have embarked on journeys, encountering old friends with familiar faces on different worlds. Mm. Witnessing their destinies follow paths similar to mine. So I will tell you. My real name. Even if not. Damn it. <laughs> completely similar the story you just told it overlaps with my past oh and within that abyssal dream all right spill the tea i ended that man's life alone damn <sighs> so she murdered her version of icarus then right the thing is i'm not smart enough to actually like decipher what they're actually saying <laughs> I only can make up my own version. I am not who you think I am. Nor will my home be as fortunate as your world. Hmm. I am sorry. Yeah, I mean, we already know from the Married Celestia trailer, pretty much everything was destroyed. It's fine. I don't mind, so long as I can alleviate your suspicions. There's something I still wish to know, Miss Acheron. Under that representation of the hunt, Exactly what sort of power is it that has motivated your solitary journey thus far? Nihili, right? Mr. Yang, before God damn answering it. that question, I wish to continue the previous topic. They keep teasing us. <laughs> Stop it. I like your analogy very much. Indeed, birds are born to fly. But in a distant past, their ancestors could only gaze at the sky in envy. They saw that faraway ray of light from above the heavens, piercing through the clouds and blanketing the earth. And so, time and time again, generation after generation, the birds spread their wings and took to the sky, attempting to touch its ceiling. All because the sun was there. And that bad boy's kind of hot. <laughs> then... What if the last bird finally soars into the sky, only to realize that the end of the light is not the sun, but darkness? All-consuming black hole. Nihility? Then why, exactly, do we even walk towards the light? I can't remember the exact law behind IX, but isn't it like it knew everything was worthless? So it just stopped caring. I think I'm remembering that correctly. Oh, cutscene? Nope. <laughs> Back to Black Swan. 
Oh yeah, I forgot we <sighs> left off. We left off on the the ringing phone. You have seven days. Long time no see. Having fun on Pentacony, Acheron. Who is this? This voice. It's not Constance. Could it be her companion? Who though? Though I don't know exactly what you are or what you're up to. Hmm. My bullets will find you. Oh wait, no, that's Boot Hill. Until then, you best find a casket store on Pentacony and ask the owner to reserve a good quality casket for you, imposter. Okay, so I'm guessing that's Boot Hill and he is a Galaxy Ranger. Imposter? I see. She gave my whereabouts to someone who's tracking Acheron too. <laughs> Who are you? Huh? <laughs> Did I make a mistake? <laughs> uh, who the heck are you? <laughs> Wrong number. I'm the Garden of Recollections memo keeper. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> this is the kind of tough challenge I like. You that imposter's bodyguard? <laughs> Never mind. It's fine. I'll leave a round for you. So get that forehead hey. clean and wait for me. I kind of like him though, I'm not gonna lie. He's straightforward with it. I don't know what you're talking about, but you know Acheron, the Galaxy Ranger. Yes. I have something to ask you. Probably shouldn't have added the Galaxy Ranger part onto it. <laughs> Are you asking me to write your will? <laughs> sure. Go ahead. Not quite. I only want to ask, how exactly did she become a Galaxy Ranger? Well, I don't think she did. He did say imposter. <sighs> She's clearly not a path strider of the hunt, but you are, aren't mm -hmm. you? Tell me, what's Acheron's deal? <laughs> sure. Heck, never thought I'd come across an ally. What a stroke of luck. I mean, I wouldn't class her as an ally just yet. Oh, well. <laughs> I'll be on Pentaconi soon. A memo keeper. Go buy a bottle of his Donna's white oak and warm it up. <laughs> and I'll raise a glass to you. Fair enough. That lady's passed. <laughs> Nobody knows, but if all you want is a simple answer, sure, you best get a chair and take a seat. That woman named Acheron is gonna die by my hands. <laughs> is an emanator who should not exist. Mmm, should not exist, eh? Back to Aventurine. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, let's throw some fists, all right? Punch this prick. You look pale. Or is that also part of your act? <laughs> <sighs> I didn't think you'd have the nerve to show yourself. I mean, it's Dr. Ratio. It's not like he cares about this stuff. I thought this was exactly what you wanted. After all, I faithfully fulfilled my duties as you instructed. Ah, it was part of the plan. Just tell me if you can't hold on any longer. So, the genius of the Council of Mundanites wants to be my undertaker now. <laughs> my, what an honor. Okay, are they working together or not? <laughs> you, you both give me two different answers. Yes, and I'm pretty sure the people at the Strategic Investment Department would love to be notified <laughs> of your death in due time. But let's not forget, you won't be seeing them, because I'm the manager of this task. Great. Then tell your people that Aventurine is ready to go in 17 system hours. Sick. Oh, you've got a lot of nerve. How exactly do you plan on completing your task while your hands are tied by the harmony? The man's got a plan. My conversation with Sunday convinced me that there's a traitor in the family. And that they hold the secrets of Pentaconi. So, I took the opportunity to set everything in motion. I even managed to recover the gift money. <laughs> <laughs> 
Things haven't gone this smoothly since I walked through the doors of the reverie. Now I'm only one step away from victory. Let's just wait and see. Hey, I did say that this probably was part of his plan. I don't know if he's just bluffing here though. <laughs> Sounds like a very elaborate way of saying <laughs> that you failed. Hold up, let, let him cook, all right? That's all I can say. Have you forgotten, Doctor? You betrayed me. I mean, yeah, why would he tell anything to Dr. Ratio? Go. Do what you must. I look forward to the sight of the IPC fleet surrounding Panacomi. You've achieved what you desired, haven't you? Mm. That's true, but what's your plan? Did you conceal an orbital support beacon in that gift money bag? And why would he tell you if he did? Well, who knows? Maybe that's why I'm handing out cash even when I'm about to bite the dust. <laughs> what, the credits that he's been handing out to us is like some sort of... I don't know. <laughs> you are indeed a gambler. An insane one at that. He knows what he's doing. Well, maybe I am. Who knows? He does sound very sad though. I feel bad for him. <sighs> Fine. Oh. Here, take this. Open it when you're on your last legs. You'll thank me. Wow, Dr. Ratio being kind? What's this? Medical advice? <laughs> and classic. <laughs> <laughs> you catch on pretty fast, Doctor. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, let's not piss off Sunday if he can do stuff like this. Asking me to solve a case without giving a single clue. How typical of you, you wing-headed scoundrel. Mm. But the way you're all on edge about that stowaway, <laughs> it's just as I guessed it would be. As for now, let the rain of wealth from the IPC fall evenly on everyone. Firefly is definitely the the weirdest death out of them because she is clearly hiding something. She does have some sort of power that she was withholding. For example, the first time she was caught by death before Black Swan saved us, she looked like she was about to do something but didn't. Yeah, it might be the case that it has something to do with Sam's powers and that's why she didn't reveal it. And the family is on edge because of that. I don't know. Oh, don't tell me we have to deal with this effect. I'm tripping balls, man. Ba -da -ba -da. Haven't we seen this guy before, movie critic? Uh, the world has truly lost its way. Here, I've got these gems for you. You. Wait. I get it now. <laughs> this is some sort of prank show, right? You <laughs> must have some camera set up around here to film yourself doing good deeds, right? And if that's the case, so what? At least you're getting free gems. Um, actually, would that even be considered a prank anyway? You youngsters are always <laughs> looking for a quick way to get an audience. But you know what? A truly great show never comes easy. Man's bringing up some valid points, though. <laughs> a great show will start soon, old man. But before that, I need to ask you something. Do you know where I can find death in this dream? Ah, I see. Another fearless youngster looking for death. Huh? What? Well, let me give you a piece of advice. Don't think you're the first one who's ever thought of that idea. That's depressing. <laughs> Death? Not even remotely innovative. I bought it from Dr. Edward. He <laughs> claimed it was some exclusive fancy schmancy stuff. Oh, what a disappointment. I mean, if Dr. Edward is selling death, sure, I guess. I mean, I still think Dr. Edward has something to do about it. I'm pretty sure that's the name of the memory thing in the corner. Like, I, I still find him very suspicious. The effects were First, some monster covered in eyes stabs you in the gut. And then all you see are blurry glimpses of buildings and lights. The sky was spinning so fast it almost made me puke. And why would anyone want to go through that? Is that all? <laughs> yeah, 
What else can you expect? Don't put too much stock in the Penacone movie industry. They even called this junk groundbreaking art. <laughs> can you believe it? Oh yes, dying is such groundbreaking art. You only experience it once. It's glorious. But in Penacone, you can experience it multiple times. <laughs> what a joke. Well, I'll leave you be then. I hope you have a wonderful day. A monster covered in eyes. Oh, that sounds like the memory zone meme. Oh yeah, I I actually totally on the lot that. And lights. I don't think those have anything to do with death. Well, that whole dream bubble was probably created using rumors and gossip. I mean, Dr. Edwards said that, oh yeah, the dreams that you buy there aren't actually fully correct. They're like, they're filled in. So the ones that are covered in eyes is so, definitely someone's memory of the, of the memory zone meme. So someone's definitely encountered it. <sighs> I can feel something inside my head. <sighs> is the harmony starting to kick in? Ventry is going to be like this guy soon. <laughs> Would you be willing to support my performance? And keep the song of beauty alive in the cosmos? Oh yeah, this is the one that can't really sing, right? <laughs> if I remember her side quest, right? Here, I got these gems for you. Wow, how fabulous! But why would you give such a wonderful gift to a random stranger like me? Why not? Well, you see, <laughs> I can't bear to see anyone in this sweet dream suffering from poverty. Yeah, good excuse. That's incredibly kind of you thank you so much sir if you ever get the chance please feel free to come by and indulge in my singing <laughs> sure thing oh, by the way do you happen to know anything interesting about death it's such a weird question to ask someone right people that have like no concept of what death is the actual entity it's a very weird question to them death that's a pretty scary topic, and it doesn't really match the mood of this sweet dream. <laughs> yeah, you're not a psychopath, are, are you? <laughs> well, you see, I'm a tabloid reporter collecting ghost stories in Panacone. <laughs> As you know, the more chilling the stories, the more attention they get. <laughs> Maybe you could help me out. Well, if you're up for some gossip, it's not about death, but there have been some rumors about a guest at the Reality Hotel who fell into a deep sleep and didn't wake up. Honestly, I fully believe that is the truth. <laughs> it was like they were in some sort of coma. Nobody knows what caused it, but luckily the customer eventually regained consciousness. Well, all customers are under the protection of the family after all. Or maybe the reason he fell into the coma is because he was stabbed by death but they were able to regain him back after saving him. So maybe if you're stabbed by death, you return back to reality, but you're kind of stuck in a coma and someone has to go into the real dreamscape to free them. Maybe. Thank you. <clears throat> this will make for a very juicy headline. May she pay protect us. <laughs> Unexplained coma. <laughs> That's actually what happens to your body if your brain dies in a dream. But unfortunately, the customer ended up waking up in the end. But unfortunately, what does that mean? <sighs> ah, the disturbing voice in my head. <sighs> it's getting closer. Disturbing voice though. Yeah, Bocci? A sip of liquor. A blissful reprieve. To drown a thousand sorrows. Let worries leave. <laughs> I know I have what it takes to become a poet. Yeah, I'm sure you can easily nail that, my guy. Here, have some gems. Oh? <laughs> you? You're giving these gems to me? Correct. Didn't expect to meet such a generous soul in this place. <gasps> or are you just pitying me? <laughs> well, it really doesn't matter. As long as I have soul glad, that's enough. This is just a dream, after all. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's no repercussions because of this. You're still developing a habit, my guy. Even if this is a dream. You really shouldn't drink so much Soul Glad, my friend. It's not good for your health. Yeah, it's a very suspicious drink. Oh. 
Maybe I really should quit. But not before meeting the devil of soul glad. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> the devil of soul glad? Care to elaborate? Maybe that is death? <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's a seahorse with a long neck. Never mind. They say it loves to appear to junk people. Especially the ones who are passed out on the side of the road. <laughs> How funny. My guy, you are so far gone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very funny indeed. Thank you. Adventure is just so fed up with these people, man. I don't blame him. <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, no, what did you say? <laughs> I didn't mean to skip his dialogue. Damn it. All right, a bloodhound guard. This is a great place Take to... Care, my friend. If you ever find yourself in danger, remember that the hounds are always ready to help. This is the first person we should have gone to, to be honest. Here, I got these gems for you. <sighs> we are definitely not bribing you. The expression on this hunk of a man was complex, as if he was looking at a mud-soaked sparrow, unable to fly nearing its end. You don't look good, my friend. If you need assistance, I can contact the hotel and have them wake you up forcefully. Brother, the head of your family is poisoning me. That won't be necessary. I have some business to attend to. But thank you all the same. All right, then. If you ever need help, don't hesitate to reach out to us hounds. Well, actually, I do need a favor. As the most outstanding hound in Panacone, have you come across any... <laughs> stowaways recently i feel bad for him because like the questions he has are the ones we already like know a lot of the answers to but sundays forbid him from ever contacting us during these 17 hours so he's kind of screwed like asking regular people they're not gonna have a clue stowaways how could there be stowaways in Penacony? we've never had anything like that before wait so the stowaways get covered up as well <laughs> all right Good luck with your work, then. Oh, what was I even thinking? Family would never share intel with the IPC. Also true, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> we are not getting anywhere, I'm just saying. News anchor. You want to talk to me? Sure, but nothing too sensitive, okay? Yeah, so about death. <laughs> yeah, I got these gems for you. Huh. Wealthy people have fancy ways to enjoy this dream. But to be honest, I've never seen anyone who gives out money to others like you. He does actually like giving out money. So, are you trying to be the prince from the tale? Handing out his gold leaf garment and melting his lead heart in the fire? Sure. <laughs> I'm flattered. I'm no prince. And I just thought these gems would help you speak. <laughs> so... As an investigative reporter, maybe you've heard something about death. How about you say death the creature? Ah, oh, another curious soul. I see. Well, that was actually the topic I was most into when I entered the industry. But my boss shut it down. We might actually be getting somewhere. How did your boss talk you out of it? Well, she simply said... Covering baseless urban legends like Ugh. that would make us look like some third-rate tabloid. They were bought. <laughs> I thought about it, and she had a point. Reporting on stuff like blowing out birthday candles and getting spooked by nightmare ghosts isn't exactly professional material. Mm, guess she's got a point. Thank you for sharing. Could have been uncovering a big, a big scandal. <laughs> Hey, do you want to play some, like, Lucky Wheel or some something conventioning? Here you go. Yeah, there you go. One token. We'll get it. You're lucky, right, Aventurine? You'll get the super big prize, right? No, okay. Maybe this one's the charm. Were you wanting to talk to me? Sorry, I thought you were checking out something behind me. Yeah, look, these gems. Take them. Is this a gift for me? Are you sure this isn't some kind of mistake? 
Why would it be a mistake? Yes, it's for you. Just take it. <laughs> Bro, I feel like this man's about to break. <laughs> is this for real? Someone is actually giving me a gift. Not for my parents, but for me. <sighs> Thank you. Thank you so much. No, it's not much. I just want to ask you something. <sighs> I knew it. <laughs> What's on your mind? Are you trying to ask about my father or my mother? Okay, no, nope, my guy. Totally different thing. Um, neither. <laughs> I just wanted to know if you've ever heard about death in the dreamscape. Oh, you sound just like my father. Ugh. Always warning me about danger, even in dreams. My guy, just answer the question. <laughs> He's an Intellitron, so his dream entry methods are different from us organics. Can't count on him to protect me if something does go haywire. Funny, right now I'm still under his protection. <laughs> How ironic. So they enter the dream differently from humans then. Interesting. Hey, stay positive. Gold will always shine one day, right? Oh, good advice. <laughs> hmm. The devil of soul glad. Dangers in the dream. And nightmare ghosts. <laughs> well, surely death is a popular topic in this sweet dream granted by the family. Yep. Uh, I've collected. Oh, God damn it! Yes, let's go to the child. Remember what I said? You Sigonians are better off hiding in the sewers. Yeah. What is your problem? Look at you. Snooping around and sticking your nose everywhere. Bro, I am dying. <laughs> Is the smell ah. of death so enticing, my fine fellow? Right, it's Spackle, of course. I I I, I totally forget that Spackle can do this. <laughs> oh, it's you, masked fool. I should have guessed it. You're the imposter who appeared on TV after Robin's death, right? I think it was Sunday that was talking about the imposter, right? I can't remember. I heard you got caught by the family. I gave you a clear clue. Befriend a mute. Simple and straightforward, you know? <laughs> right, okay. There has been a lot of people like hating on Sparkle because of like how she is. But truth be told, she has actually been given the best advice. <laughs> and what did you do? You messed it up and ended up as their prisoner. I told you to make friends with a mute, not become one yourself. You really let me down. Yeah, it is what it is. What do you mean? Even he's confused. You know better than I do. Who watched the little songbird that couldn't sing perish right before their eyes? You did, Blondie. What is that? Is that her nickname for Robin, little songbird? Okay, so the advice that Sparkle gave was to befriend Robin, but uh, since she died, he could no longer do that. No, I mean, what did you mean by becoming one myself? Oh, wait a minute. So someone silenced Robin. Maybe she was under the same like effect as Aventurina's at the minute. Interesting. Well... It means you'll soon end up like her, unable to speak ever again. But it would still be alive, right? If that is the case. Or is that the <laughs> quote-unquote deaf? Like you would never be able to speak again. But it's a good thing if you ask me. Because... <laughs> because I'm getting closer to the truth. Right? Bingo. Oh? <laughs> Why else do you think I'm handing out cheap trinkets all over the streets, fool? All part of the act. Fool's bait. <laughs> the more pathetic I seem, the more likely you'll come sniffing around. There you go. So, now that I've drawn you out, will you reward me with an answer for my efforts? See, the thing is, I can't tell if Aventurine's like really smart or if he's just bluffing the entire thing. <laughs> like, anytime something works out, he's just like, Ah, see, I was planning this all along. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like you did plan this, though. Why should I help you? Because it'll be funny. Don't you want to see Panacone descend into... chaos? Mm -hmm. Well, I can make that happen. 
I just need an answer to one question. Back then, when you asked me to find a mute, did you really mean Robin? Oh. Again, what about if they just meant us? Because we are a mute, right? We we haven't actually talked. Like, we've talked within our mind. I don't know. That still confused me, both, like, in Star Rail and in Genjin. Because you say the thing in the text and people, like, react to you. But at the same time, you're told that you never talk. So it's like, which one is it? <laughs> oh, no. Hmm. Yeah, we're being watched. Don't do it. And what if I say no? That just opens it up to anyone else. Then I'll thank you. <laughs> oh, the word no has never sounded so pleasing. Oh yeah, because that actually means he has a way out. Because if it was Robin, he would be screwed. <laughs> well done. I admit I underestimated you. But what difference would it make? <laughs> Let me tell you something. There were two mutes. But one is dead now. And the other, though he's still in Penacony, I'm afraid you'll never find him again. Oh, he. Okay, so it's not us. It's not Acheron. I'm guessing it's a character that we haven't seen. Now I'm completely sure that I was on the right track from the beginning and never strayed, fool. God, why is everyone just <laughs> being so cryptic? <laughs> it's so annoying. Right now, there are only two things missing from my grasp. The meaning behind the truth, and the means to expose it. <laughs> How impressive. <laughs> That's quite a fancy way of saying I haven't learned anything so far. Bro, I love this so much. It's also Not very annoying. Exactly. I've gathered enough clues to prove its existence. And that's enough for me. As for the answers to my questions, I'll find them within 17, no, 16 system hours. One hour down. Oh, really? Only 16 system hours? Well, let me lend you a hand. This is a team up. Here you go. This is my precious, mutually assured <laughs> distraction button. Sick. And I have one just like it. When either of us presses it, the other and the whole of Panacone will go up in smoke. Wait, wasn't this... Isn't this a reference to what we saw in her companion mission? I'm pretty sure it did nothing. <laughs> if you're really so desperate for the IPC to take over Panacone, blowing up the chessboard isn't a bad idea. <laughs> Start from scratch. That's where the IPC excels, right? Fair point, but... This is also Sparkle we're talking about, so I don't- It can only go two ways. She actually did plant the bombs, and it will explode. Or it'll probably just be like the smallest explosion possible. Or nothing at all. Just press the button when you're at your wit's end. And of course, feel free to reach out to me for my hospice care too. So is Aventurine just going to be given like a bunch of items when he's at his wit's end? Like he's gotten the thing from Dr. Ratio, and now he's gotten a thing from Sparkle. <laughs> Oh, a deadly button, huh? <laughs> well, I guess the family didn't take your threat seriously at all. <laughs> Otherwise, how on earth did you manage to bring it in here? <laughs> <laughs> I have my own ways. That's all you need to know. Ah, uh -huh, sure thing. <laughs> well, I'm afraid I'll have to decline your offer. Who knows if your little gadget will actually work. By the way, I have no plans to search for the other mute friend you speak of. But it's good to hear that he's still here in Penacony. So, that person is a mute. He's in Penacony, but you'll never be able to find him. Why? Unless there's just someone I'm forgetting about, but I can't really think of who it is. I'll handle the rest myself. I'll orchestrate a grand finale for the downfall of the family. <laughs> and at the climax, the walls will crumble, people will wake up and those who couldn't speak will find their voices again they'll come back to life <laughs> when that time comes go ahead press the button light up the sky with a magnificent fireworks display for me <laughs> catch you later fool now that seems great 
You're still talking big. But sure, if that happens, I'll stay true to my word. Well, at least he's the one walking off this time. Just don't let me down now, okay? See, like, the thing is, there's just something about Sparkle that it feels like she's doing stuff for the for good, you know? She, like, don't get me wrong, she's a psychopath, but also seems like she's kind of doing good, right? Or is that just me? She constantly tells people actual advice, and then she keeps telling them not to let her down. Like, don't disappoint me, you know? Don't be fooled by people, that kind of thing. Like, she's actually giving out good advice. <laughs> I, I don't understand. Hmm. Well, even more adventuring backstory. So, number 35. You're back. Like your new lucky charm. Yeah, the mark. Can a commodity code really be considered a lucky charm? Silence! I didn't give you permission to speak, you Sigonian hound. Yeah, we fighting, mate? <sighs> The guys in black didn't say much, so I've no idea what you did to save your skin in that massacre back in the day. Just got lucky. But I figured you must have had good luck, so I bought you. Oh. From now on, you and your good luck are my assets. <laughs> are we clear? Ah, slavery. How fun. Your first task is simple. In addition to you, I've purchased 30, uh, well, 34 other slaves. Congratulations. Go and play a game with them. <laughs> you came out alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. Okay. I can definitely see where he got his gambling uh, addiction from. You're insane. <laughs> Testing out if you're a good product. Well, hopefully this guy dies. <laughs> uh, aren't you worried that the money you spent on me will go to waste? I've got stacks on stacks, Blondie. The slave market is never short of self-righteous brats like you. Hmm. Yep, I'm feeling very bad for adventuring. But you look good. And that's why many customers are betting their fortunes on a scrawny brat like you. So go along now and uh, don't let your master down. Man, this is a very punchable individual. <sighs> how much did you spend? What? Might as well know how much you're worth. My price. Uh, how much did you pay? Huh. You really want to know? Hmm. Well, it was 60 tonba. Oh. No more. No less. Red copper coins. Okay, no idea what that is. I'll take my chances. Oh? 30 tanva. If I come back alive, you'll give me 30 tanva. Deal? There you go. <laughs> <clears throat> Are you trying to strike a bet with me? Oh, you've got some guts. Might as well take the risk. Yeah, sorry, but uh, that won't do. Don't forget your place, slave. Coward. You're not qualified to be at the table. You're just a chip. A life thrown away in someone else's hands. Either you mm. come back with more chips for your master, or you never come back. Yeah, I think this explains why Aventurine is how he is. It's all or nothing. Don't embarrass me, my lucky hound. Yep, that's where that probably came from. Back to the trailblazer. Huh. What brings you here, Gallagher? Oh, it's her. I really liked her design from the trailer. Or was it the live stream? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure it was from the live stream. <sighs> Some friends from the old days. Do you have a moment to spare, Siobhan? Siobhan. Oh, I have the whole day to spare. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Dream Jolt Hostelry. Got a very good voice actor as well, I can already tell. Such a good design, man. This bar offers a wide variety of drinks, but we draw the line at Soul Glad. Good. Why settle for ordinary when you can experience extraordinary? We're dedicated to serving up nothing but pure joy and laughter. <laughs> yeah, because Soul Glad's a pretty much a drug here. What would you like to drink? I'll whip it up for you. Oh, look! A lady as cool as Serval! <laughs> I think she is Serval. <laughs> Who's Serval? 
Will you uh, introduce me to her? Huh? Eh? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> She's heard us. Well, it's not like we, it's not like we were being secret about it. We're, we're literally like two steps in front of her. Just spare them, my esteemed bartender. I'll take over the bar today. You old big up Gallagher, giving us a drink. I'm getting up there in age, and I need some practice before I forget the skills that used to put food on my table. <laughs> uh, where did you stash the ingredients? They're all under the counter. Since our guests have traveled from afar, shouldn't you whip up some special drinks? Getting drunk with the boys. That's exactly what I had in mind. All the girls. <laughs> hey, my friends, do me a favor. Go around the bar and bring me any ingredients you fancy. All right, bet. The discussion might take quite some time. So I'll prepare some customized non-alcoholic drinks for you. Boo. In the bar? But aren't all the ingredients right there on the counter? Match, you're thinking with common sense here. Stop. Why, we're in a dream, my lovely lady. <laughs> you can help yourself to anything if you wish for it. Comfort, hunger, confusion, or even boredom. It's all within reach, right at your fingertips. <laughs> Do love the taste of bottom. Oh, did you hear that? She just called me <laughs> my lovely lady. Alright, match. Even in reality, mixing drinks is more than just throwing ingredients together. A bartender needs to capture the bar's atmosphere, master technique, and spin a tale of mystery and anticipation. Yeah, just watching the bartender make the drink. Only then. Can a perfect drink crafted with a customer's life story be created? So what would the March's drink be like then? It would just be a drink of nothing since her past is non-existent. Well, erased. In other words, what Sealed. you get from your drink is down to luck. So don't overthink it. Okay, Indecisiveness has no place when it comes to enjoyment. Uh, yeah, how about we just, you know, we just get some plants in it. <laughs> Check out this bottle. The liquid inside looks beautiful, and the label reads, Dream Syrup, Thick. <laughs> I don't see an expiration date, but the production date is... Thick. <laughs> half an amber era ago. Uh, I'm, st I'm sure it's still in date. <laughs> Ugh, drinking this stuff can't lead to anything good, that's for sure. Nah, that's how you know it's gonna be good though. Yeah, but I thought we could drink anything in the dreams. That's true, but this really doesn't seem fresh. Nah, I'll be fine. Did you find the bottle of syrup I've been hoarding? <laughs> Don't worry, it's all just a dream and it won't upset your stomach. It's been aging for years and should have a refined taste by now. My point, exactly. Feel free to have some. It's perfect for entertaining lovely guests like you. I already love her character, man. Uh, then we'll keep it for now. That's gonna slap. Uh, hey, look at all these chips scattered everywhere. A few days ago, an actor from the Iris family came. <laughs> Caused a ruckus with Siobhan. Those chips must have gotten scattered during all the chaos. Ah, the good taste of chaos. <laughs> so enemies drop gold coins even in the dream. <laughs> <laughs> That's a clever metaphor. Uh, that being said, opening a bar in this place filled with monsters is quite a feat. Siobhan must have a lot of tricks up her sleeve, right? Yeah, this is the real dreamscape, right? You'll have to ask her yourself to find out. But I have a feeling she won't budge unless you impress her with an incredible drink. I bet. Oh, that's quite a stash. Not sure if it's enough. We'll Stay be out of my way. I'm looking for Siobhan. All right. Uh-huh. What's all the commotion about? Yeah, this is the real dreamscape, right? Or is it only the child's dream which is the real dreamscape? Okay, I don't know actually, because there's actually people show there's people showing up here, so. <sighs> Haven't I made myself clear enough, Miss Amaki? The Dream Jolt hostelry only welcomes guests who want to enjoy a drink to their heart's content. I'm sorry, but I'm not interested in your proposal. But you have the talent. You'll attract a huge audience. You're destined for the Iris stage, not for this rundown shack. Hold on a minute. The Iris stage? Firefly was a part of this, right? Even if it was for a, a little while. Come with me. 
will become the talk of Panacone, a shining light into every corner of the dreamscape. Please, Siobhan, I really need you. I mean, fair play for trying to recruit her. Look at her. <sighs> Fed up. As you see, I'm entertaining my guests. Don't make me repeat myself. Fine. If you don't come along, I'll just sit here and not go anywhere else. Just annoying, dude. <laughs> Give me a sparkling drink. Sweet. With extra ice. Yeah, do you guys have like a bouncer or something <laughs> to kick her out? Just one moment. What's her deal? We can't discuss the case with other people hanging around the bar. Get out. <laughs> Leave. Hey, can you do that clockwork trick of yours again? <laughs> How come even you, Himako? <laughs> Just what I've been waiting for. Yeah, I'm counting on you. Might as well. We've been given the power. You're one of Siobhan's guests, right? What can I do for you? If you're here to convince me to leave, please stop it. I'll never leave until she accepts my proposal. Ma'am, this is not the way to get someone to, you know, actually do something. It just pushes them away further. It's not how stuff works. I just don't get why she won't leave this place. This rundown shack with no customers whatsoever. Well, maybe she just doesn't want to go with someone that's so clingy. Siobhan just said anything can be embittered. Perhaps you can try various experiments to see which different emotions can brew with different drink ingredients. Try reading her thoughts. Let's make her angry. Why not? Those darn Irish jerks! They're the ones who forced Siobhan into hiding here. Running this In. pesky bar. It's all their dirty scheming. Interesting. Okay. Huh. I get it now. She's not leaving because she doesn't want to run into them again. It's probably that, but it's also she probably just fell in love with this place. I, I can help clear the way for her. No, you can't. I can do her a favor. I'll go back and write a letter to the Dream Master exposing the crimes committed by the Iris family. Siobhan will definitely appreciate it. Look, ma'am, just say if you like her or not, because, uh, I mean, fair enough if you do. Things might get out of control if she gets any angrier. <laughs> I need to come up with another plan. All right, bad plan. <laughs> Let's make her happy. Put her in a I've good mood. I've seen it. The moment <laughs> when Siobhan and I share the stage. Uh-huh. The crowd is going wild. Applause crashing like waves the aroma of irises fills the air sounds beautiful A beautiful melody playing ribbons dancing around us and the taste is sweeter than honey nice i've seen that scene countless times in my dreams and every time it mesmerizes me that's why i have to bring her back to that world no matter what it takes. Yeah, I feel like you're just a bit too clingy, in it? <sighs> Want to raise a glass, my attentive listener? Let's consider it a toast to my far-fetched dream. Like, it's just getting creepy, you know, where it's like, I've had this beautiful dream of you and me on the stage. It's gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful. I will take you to that dream. I won't leave until you come with me. <laughs> it's it's so creepy, man. I'm gonna give pause a pico white grape soda into your tall glass. Yeah, of course it's gonna be the last one. Boom, sad. You are now depressed. There you go. It's ridiculous, right? Our paths were never meant to cross, yet I'm still Holding on to her. There you go. You're starting, you're starting to finally see it. I'm too timid and shy. Longing to shine, but afraid of stepping into the spotlight. I need her guidance. Because 
I'll never be able to do anything alone. Damn, that's so sad, man. You don't know Siobhan's past. And you have no clue how radiant she used to be. Even among the talented Iris family, her skill was unmatched. So which members actually like kicked her out or forced her to move out? I know she probably thinks I'm just trying to ride her fame to get ahead. But all I want is for her to reclaim her place. I mean, I think that's fair. If someone constantly tells you like, yeah, they don't want a position, you gotta take the hint. <laughs> You feel an impeccable mix of bitterness and sweetness that uh, permeates the air. The next moment, that emotion turns into liquid filling. Well, talking to you has got me feeling a bit down. <laughs> Sorry. My thoughts are swirling, making my mind clear, and bringing tears to my eyes. Sometimes having a good old cry can help. <laughs> Maybe I should find a place to reflect on what Siobhan truly means to me. Fair enough. Also, be careful. Here's the payment for the drinks. Please, pass it on to her. I'm leaving now. Alright, be safe. Amaki has left? Yeah, we gave her depression. <laughs> That's good for her. Radiant dreams may be enticing, but they're nothing more than dreams. Her drink is on the house. Please keep the money. Sick. When you're ready, go to Gallagher. <laughs> I can tell he's itching to show off his skills. What's he gonna drug us with though? 1,800 credits, you love to see it. And let me tell you, don't underestimate the bartenders of Fenagoni, <laughs> especially not Gallagher. This guy is pure magic. Hell he can yeah. satisfy even the pickiest of customers. I'm gonna drug us out with alcohol. <laughs> Don't go easy on this old man. Give him a real challenge. All right, bet. Okay, let's see what other ingredients we can find if there is any. Ah, there is something we can grab. I'm so glad, but I thought they didn't sell so glad at the bar. Oh, we're definitely not using this. Yeah, let's give it a shake. Nice. It's still fizzy and has a long shelf life. Don't trust it. <laughs> Don't, it's no good for all drink if it's all shaken up. Uh-huh. I, let's just leave it here for a while. And it'll be all right. Right? Yo, can we just have like some water or something? Water slaps. Water goes in S tier. Why don't they sell Soul Glad in this bar? Did something happen? Because it's a suspicious drink. It's all about the bartender's pride. It wouldn't make sense for customers to come here and order drinks they can find anywhere else. Fair enough. That's the mindset I use when I brew my coffee. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Classic. You're right, Himeko. You're so beautiful. That being said, mixing a drink is way simpler than you'd imagine. Just pick your favorite ingredients, toss them in a glass, mix it up, and it's done. So go ahead, explore the bar, and bring me any ingredients you prefer. We found all of them, Chief. I've gathered all the ingredients I need. Nice work. Let me take a look. You found some interesting ingredients there. Now, take your pick. Each drink right. has its own unique flavor, and the base ingredient sets the tone for the initial taste and the lingering aftertaste. So, <laughs> which one would you like to use as the base? Bro, there's just something about the way he's looking at us. It's it's weird. Ha ha ha, Pikachu. <laughs> This manufacturer claims this syrup has all the benefits of religion and alcohol without any of their drawbacks. What, we don't get hung over? All right, we're using the dream syrup. <laughs> you won't find a sweeter drink anywhere in Pentacony. And that's what today's dream seekers crave. Sick. Now that you've chosen the base, it's time to pick the adjunct. The ingredient that'll create a marvelous chemical reaction with the base. Indeed. It should give an unforgettable taste without overpowering the main tone. So, what's your choice for the adjunct? Yeah, maybe a bright future exists only in dreams. There we go. That adds on to the dream, you know, stuff. Bright future. A taste that's been a long time coming. Hell yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget the flavor that danced on my tongue 
as Mikhail whisked me through the dreamscape wilderness. Oh, wait a minute. Those were haunting times. Too beautiful to be real. My guy, you cannot just drop the name Mikhail and just think nothing, nothing of it. That's a pretty important name. <laughs> Please tell us more about Mikhail. Mikhail. That's what we know. Almost there. Let's pick a decoration. Which style do you prefer? Anything you need, I've got it. Hold on a minute, sir. So Mikhail was someone that had good control over the dreamscape then. Yeah, let's go with the hang you sign. We'll make it, we'll make it cool. A symbol of bravery and dauntlessness. May you break free from your shackles just like he did. He's so cool, man. Well, it's done. Boom. That's... Here's to you, dream seeker, with this glass of El Dorado. El Dorado. That's a cool ass drink. To golden dreams. Cheers. <laughs> well done, Gallagher. You're not over the hill yet. <laughs> <laughs> so are you satisfied? Oh, the flavors. They're way more sophisticated than Soul Glad. You are now cultured. <laughs> the richness and layers of these flavors are a masterpiece, especially with the adjuncts. I can taste the spicy and sour notes with a hint of sweetness. Indeed. I'm not entirely sure what it all means. <laughs> Maybe Mr. Gallagher can shed some light on it. Yeah, look, the drinks are nice and all, but uh, can we talk a bit more about Mikhail? Because that's pretty important. <laughs> well, if you're expecting a profound answer, I'm afraid I'll disappoint you. <laughs> I have no clue. The imagery it implies is pretty straightforward. It's just a glimpse of what this dream truly tastes like. Nothing mm. more. Does this true taste have anything to do with that, Mikhail? Thank you, Himako, for bringing that up. Yeah, I heard this name in my dream. Yeah, that name does sound familiar. When you got knocked out by that masked fool girl, I think I heard someone calling that name. Do you remember? What do you mean, I think I heard someone calling that name? You heard? Hmm. Okay. A bit weird. <sighs> I was right about you. You guys seem to know quite a bit. And now there's no reason to hide anything from you anymore. Thank you, Galaga. <laughs> Let's dig deeper into the case. And of course, I'll tell you a story about Mikhail. So maybe the voice that we were hearing wasn't Misha then. It was a young Galaga. All right. Let's start with what we know based on the clues the family has. It seems that Firefly isn't a local or an invited guest. In other words, she's a stowaway. Indeed. She managed to fool me at first. My age must be getting the best of me. But here on the planet of festivities, stowaways are a common sight. You're bound to run into one sooner or later. After the incident, the hounds wasted no time searching for that girl in both the dreamscape and reality. But they never found her in reality. But here's the thing. We only received bad news. And the trickiest kind at that. Mm -hmm. She simply vanished leaving no trace in the dreamscape or reality, as if she had never come to Penacony at all. I mean, we already know that information, right? When you're in the real dreamscape, you disappear from reality. That's what March told us. Huh? Does that mean... Death eradicated her. That's impossible. The problem now is not that she's dead, but that it's as if she had never existed in the first place. I might be right. She might have already been dead in reality. She might have just been a memory. Let me be frank. This case, actually, is unlike anything the Bloodhound family has dealt with before. Okay, never mind. <laughs> if they're saying this, then... Because I don't know if the side quests are canon, you know what I mean? You know, this has happened to another person where they have died in reality, but they existed on in the dreamscape. I, who knows? Dealt with before, so... Death does happen in Panacone, if I understand correctly. Mm-hmm. You've witnessed it, so there's no need to hide. <laughs> Even the shiniest city has its dark side. We're all adults here. Surely I don't need to explain too much to you. Matt, Gallagher's the real one, man. Confronting the family based on that alone would be naive. Death may occur in sweet dreams. So what? Such events are highly unlikely and only affect a tiny number of people. Bad point. If you really want to delve deeper into this case, 
You need to understand the true problem with the family. Yeah, because, okay, from what we know, the family is being suspicious. Panicone has changed from how it was in the past. And there's a Stellaron. Those are three big things, right? So the Stellaron's definitely doing some sort of work. Unless the Stellaron is maybe the bird? I don't know. We're, we're reaching. I guess it's time to tell the story of that Mikhail. Yeah. You're very perceptive. The Astral Express has received that music box too, right? Do you know the secrets it holds? Oh, wait, I just remembered. Okay, the music box is the invitation. Okay, that took me way too long to remember that. There's a message. Witness the impossible in the realm of dreams. Find the legacy of the Watchmaker, father of Penicone, and thus the answer to the question, why does life slumber? Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the exact wording. Hey, why are you laughing? <laughs> Wait, did you write it? It's quite poetic. I'm guessing Mikkel wrote it. No, but I'm the officer in charge of this case. So how could I not know? I'm sure you must have noticed that this message didn't come from the family. Yep. You might have even guessed that the relationship between the family and the watchmaker isn't as close as it seems. Exactly. That's just our speculation. Actually, it's hard to believe that the father of Penicone and its actual managers are at odds. I mean, Sunday did say something about delivering a funeral to the watchmaker. Like, at first I speculated, oh, he might be talking about, you know, the people acting out a line. But it might be the case now that he was saying that he's going to deliver a funeral of the watchmaker. Hmm. Now I can assure you that your speculation is absolutely correct. Fair enough. The family has considered the watchmaker an enemy for a long time. Mm. But the hounds haven't been able to track him down, as he seems to be living only in the characters and stories he created. Oh, this is probably the mute that Sparkle talked about. He lives in Penicone, but you won't be able to find him. So that that's the watchmaker. That's the that's the last mute. I'm pretty sure that's what's happening here. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever wondered why the family allowed the watchmaker to send out such a ridiculous message to the outside world, inviting you here and causing chaos so they could find him? So, you want to seize this opportunity to expose the Watchmaker? Mm-hmm. Well, I'm pretty sure Gallagher wants to work against the family. <laughs> well, now you understand why the Oak family authorized the Nameless to assist in the investigation, but kept you in the dark, right? Fair enough. Because the Watchmaker is not the legend of the land of the dreams at all. He's the most shameful stain in the history of Penicone. Mm. And he's the root cause of all the anomalies in the dreamscape. Interesting. Okay. So what does this have to do with Mikhail? You don't get it? Well, well I mean... Mikhail is the watchmaker. Mikhail? The betrayer of the family? Yeah. He's the watchmaker. Saw that one coming. Sometime later... Here we are. <laughs> Clock Studios Theme Park. No. Popular entertainment center in Penicone. Please, no, not the theme park. <laughs> Wait, aren't we supposed to be discussing the watchmaker? I would have expected you to take us to maybe a library or an archive room of sorts, but an amusement park? I mean, this is the best place to hide, right? In his own creation. The culture of a city reflects its history in the most authentic way. To you, it's a fun place. But to me, it's a prison for the planet's past. I see that clocky statue in the back. You know that Penicone used to be the IPC's prison planet, right? Mm -hmm. All the prisoners were brought here, helping the Garden of Recollection salvage the leaking memoria from the macro void. Salvage the leaking memoria from the micro void. The prolonged hmm. exposure to high concentrations of memoria caused a unique phenomenon. The dreams of countless prisoners intersected and overlapped. And people started meeting each other in their dreams, living lives that were almost identical to reality. Interesting, okay. But everything has a price, and sweet dreams are no exception. In the end, the dream world was unable to alleviate the suffering of prisoners in reality. One of the prisoners broke free from the IPC shackles and fought for freedom. Uh-huh, Hanyu. He is Hanu, 
Han Yu. The great leader of Dreamville, the great peacemaker, and the faithful companion of the underdogs. So that clocky cartoon is actually a documentary. History is always written by the winners. <laughs> However, it's undeniable that Clocky is an animation that draws from Penacony's actual history. Yeah, I think that was pretty obvious. These characters not only exist in Dreamville, but also in the distant past. Once you realize this, you'll understand why we're here. Basically, this place contains actual law just hidden behind a cartoon. There are so many members of the Bloodhound family around here. They just received a lockdown order, supposedly from Sunday himself. Who knows what it's for? Oh, that's good news, isn't it? You know what? We'll we'll do we'll do two ten poles on the light cone. Why not? Come on, just bring it home very early. Nope. <laughs> Alright, come on. Please just give us the light cone. Damn it. Alright, we'll do one more for the road. Why not? Ah, rip. Got a Dan Hung though. I'll take it. Oh yeah, we can fully ascend uh, Akron. I forgot. <laughs> fully grinding her materials. Gone. There we go. Never turn back. The path behind is gone. There we go. Pretty sure I'll be able to upgrade all of these as well. Another. Yeah, give it to me. God, that's so satisfying to go through. I actually won't be able to fully upgrade it. <laughs> that's pretty much got rid of all my credits. Huh. So many of them. I've never seen anything like this, even when they're tracking down suspects. It's pretty impressive, even from out here. Well, it's a masterpiece from the family, after all. Besides the followers of the preservation, the family members are the best at creating mind-blowing marvels. That clocky statue is still cursed. So creepy. Let's find a quiet spot and continue our conversation. Sounds good. The view here is great, right? We can see everything from here, <laughs> including clocky. If all the characters in the animation are based on characters in reality, then Clocky's counterpart is definitely the Watchmaker. Indeed. In the animation, he's Hanu's partner and one of the founders of Dreamville. Does that mean the Watchmaker was personally involved in that war and sided with Asdana? Who is As Asdana? I can't remember. It was a monumental war for freedom. Hanunu fought alongside a motley crew of masked fools, oh, no. history fictionologists, mourning actors, omen vanguards, even visitors from beyond the sky. In the end, they emerged victorious. That is quite the crew, though. So it's kind of the same now, right? Because this was to overthrow the IPC, but now what it feels like is that everyone's getting together to like overthrow the family. Among them was the person who would eventually be known as the Watchmaker. Mm-hmm. But if you do the math, doesn't that mean the Watchmaker was around for several centuries? There might be a species like that, you never know. I'm not sure, but Mikhail was already the Watchmaker when I met him. So maybe he inherited the title. True, that could have also been the case. How old are you now, Mr. Officer? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a dead stare that he has. I'm 13. <laughs> <laughs> the stare just makes it so much better, man. Uh, no way. Not even close. <laughs> Ow. Okay. Anunu freed the frontier prison. <laughs> The peace still eluded him. With limited resources, threats from the outside world, and internal conflicts between major prison districts, the future of Asdana was uncertain. It wasn't until the Watchmaker approached the family with the idea of turning the prison into the planet of festivities that Penacone finally gained its name and glory. Okay. Thus, he became known as the father of Penacone. So why does the current family hate him? That's the question. But didn't you say the Watchmaker betrayed the family? And you said you were his companion, so that means you... No, I'm not his companion, but rather one of his many children. Actual children or like just quote unquote children? <laughs> but I am indeed a traitor, not to the family 
but to Mikhail. Mm. What did you do? Sold him out, maybe? <sighs> I did nothing. Uh. And that's the worst betrayal of all. Ah, uh, feels bad, man. Just like you, I had close companions. We dedicated ourselves to Penacone. But the Oak family, they set us up. Mikhail was too old to protect his children anymore. So we left the family to find our own path. We were branded traitors of the Harmony. Even though the true traitors were someone else. Classic situation. While they continue to praise the watchmaker's name in the world. Behind closed doors, they condemn him on a pillar of shame. Nevertheless, we wanted to clear his name. We intended to find the real traitor. The one responsible for all this. And restore harmony to Penacone. You know what? I respect Gallagher, man. But we failed. Too much time had passed. And the land of the dreams had become deeply corrupted. After countless fruitless pursuits, I gave up. Mm. Like a lost dog. Just give the man a hug. The family accepted me and made me an officer. Supposedly as a form of forgiveness. But it was actually a punishment. Yep. Since then, I've been completely cut off from my partners. And my past. As for Mikhail... I was about to say, them them even like accepting him back was definitely a setup. I heard he died in obscurity, in a place where no one could find him. That's when I realized that the Penacone I once knew would never return. I'm guessing it's possible that it's Misha then, right? That's like the next person that inherits the tile. Because if you think about it, no one actually interacted with Misha besides us and Clocky, which is insanely weird. So Misha could be counted as the mute or as one of M Mikhail's children. Hmm. We're truly sorry for what happened, but this is not the end of the story, right? Actually, yeah, that's probably why Sparkle said you won't be able to find him because you just can't see him. The other mute might be Misha. Hmm. Apparently, someone has inherited the title of the Watchmaker and has been secretly working against the family all this time. Misha, probably. Is the Watchmaker an organization? Well, that's one way to look at it. However, only one member has truly inherited the Watchmaker's title. Unfortunately, after all these years, I have no idea who that person is or if they're even real. Or just Mikhail's lost soul <coughs> haunting the dreams. Could be that. But it's most definitely Misha, right? Like, there's just no other possibility that I can think of. So, do you understand why I'm spilling all this info? Because I believe the girl's death must be connected to the Watchmaker's legacy. And at the end of all these mysteries, we will find the answers we are seeking. Well, we know Death has something to do with the Watchmaker's legacy, right? So maybe Gallagher, Misha, Death are like some of his children. If it really is Mikhail's ghost, I want to meet him. If only for the last time. For those who despise me could form a line from here all the way to the entrance of the hotel. But those willing to look me in the eye and hear me out? Let's just say... There won't be many. Damn, fair enough. I've told you all I know is a sign of gratitude. Thank you for listening to this old dog. Bark and all. Hey, I respect you, man. Hmm? Uh, something just happened at the theme park. Uh, now, if you'll excuse me, good luck to all of you. I totally forgot about Misha, to be honest. Which, I guess, like, that that's kind of law accurate, right? Even he said he was like, oh, you didn't forget me. <laughs> How ironic. What's so different between the stowaways rejected by Penacone today and the dream seekers once hailed as pioneers several amber eras ago? Not really much, is the Gallagher does have a troubled past, it seems. Got some really good information out of him, though. While Firefly's whereabouts remain a mystery, his stories shed light on our suspicions about the true identity of the Watchmaker. His connection to the family, and the power struggles hidden behind sweet dreams and death. Yep, and that the family isn't all united. Exactly. Gallagher suggests that the real traitor is someone else. 
Probably within the Oak family. Sunday. I only can think of Sunday, right? That That's like the only character that we know that's from the Oak family. I'm pretty sure if I'm misremembering that. It might be the case that it's just a random NPC, but I feel like that would be a bit weird, especially if it's an NPC we haven't seen. I do hope it is Sunday and it is the case that like he might be like under the influence of a Stellaron. And that death is related to the Watchmaker. That lines up with what we've gathered so far. Firefly got involved in this mess because of the legacy. And now we're sure that Avengerine's accusations against Acheron are baseless. Mm-hmm. And that Clocky is based on the Watchmaker. Alexa, shut up. Bro, it's nine in the morning. People are still sleeping. Shut up. And that Clocky is based on the Watchmaker. Uh, you're really into Clocky, huh? He's just a fictional character, not a real person. He's real to me, Match. <laughs> He's real to me. Speaking of which... That Clocky, who only reveals himself to you, is quite intriguing. It's a shame we've never met him since then. I'm sure he can show himself to other people. That pretty much sums it all up. Now that we've confirmed a lot of our suspicions, let's take a moment to think about the clues we have. Send a message to Welt and see how things are going on his end. Oh yeah, his little date. <laughs> Yo, Welt, my man, what's up? Mr. Yang, our investigation here has come to an end. How's progress going on your end? Not too bad. The Galaxy Ranger and I agreed that the family might be hiding something extremely important. We're now heading to the Duelit Pavilion. Akron, huh? Didn't Aventurine say she was dangerous? I've confirmed that she's on our side. Don't worry. Please wait for a while. I'll keep you posted as soon as I find anything. Ah, back to... Back Are your to companions Akron. worried about you? They're just being sweet. They're just checking up on me. <laughs> Let's get in and get out. Seems they've made some progress. Looks like we're about to enter the depths of Dewlight Pavilion. Alfon. It's been a smooth ride. Almost too smooth for a heavily guarded mansion. Uh, so these lot are gonna go and uh, possibly meet Sunday. Let's see if there's anyone waiting to greet us. Something feels off. A grand mansion like this and not a butler or servant in sight. Could it be due to the disruption caused by the emergency? Might be, but I feel like this is more of a trap than anything. Well, this door is open. Looks like we'll have to investigate ourselves. Let's proceed with caution. I mean, Just one moment. I mean, these two will be fine together. <laughs> Akron draws her blade slightly. Within a moment, her breath became impersonable. Light. I've made myself less noticeable. The crew can explain their presence as authorized by the family, but I can't come up with any excuses for being here. Oh, is this what she, is that what she did last time? Welt was able to detect her, though. I see. What an interesting technique. <laughs> yeah, the instant uh, kill thing is going to be interesting. <laughs> boom, boom. <laughs> so cool, man. The model in the sand pit. It's the golden hour, isn't it? Indeed. Maybe the heads of the family used that model for discussing important. The footprints here oh. are different from the rest. There are two sets of them. <laughs> Looks like outsiders might have passed through here not long ago. Yes, sir. Can you identify the people who left these footprints? Damn, Dr. Ratio on uh, venturing needs to clean their shoes, man, after leaving footprints like this. Well, there's a unique pattern here. Flamboyant, even. <laughs> <laughs> and judging by the size, I'd say these were men's shoes. If I'm right, it could be the IPC ambassador, Aventurine. A detective Welt here. Aventurine. What about the other set? It looks like they were walking side by side as opposed to one behind the other. So the second individual is likely equal in status <laughs> to Aventurine. Don't let Dr. Ratio hear you say that. <laughs> the IPC is eager to reclaim Panacone, so their presence here is not unexpected. Dream four. Boom. That's so satisfying, man. Well, there aren't any people in this mansion. They've set up quite a few mimetic guards to patrol this place. Yeah, very weird to have these things guard you. Oh, I was hoping we could slash it. Don't get complacent. Don't really have a debuff character, so I'm just gonna have to rely on uh, Akron for this. For oh, there we go. I weep for the departed. 
Oh wait, no, no. I gotta slow it down. Hell yeah, dude. Oh, you can change targets. Okay, sick. Finish him off. Dust ring. The two shall fall. Sick. And then bada bing, bada boom. Get out of here. Look, it dropped something. A note. Looks like instructions from the butler for the other servants. Okay, hopefully we just didn't kill a person. <laughs> that would be bad. Hmm. Seems like the mansion's entire workforce were assigned other tasks before Robin's death. Mm -hmm. It must have been a big project to require that much manpower. The Charmony Festival, perhaps. Probably. But no matter what their main priorities are, there should always be someone left at the mansion, right? Yeah, this definitely feels like a setup, especially with how we've seen Sunday. So you're saying someone deliberately cleared the place out? Seems like it. Yeah, but I don't know why. He's a little sussy guy. Well, hopefully we don't get jumped. No one here either. Since no one's around to entertain us, let's make ourselves at home. Stay close to me so that my white can cover you too. <laughs> My whiteness. <laughs> a letter from Robin. Dear brother, how are you doing these days? I had intended to visit you at the Dulip Pavilion as soon as possible upon my return, but with the approaching Charmony Festival and your busy schedule, I refrain from troubling you. However, an urgent matter compels me to share something with you immediately. Since my return to Penacony, I have experienced a peculiar change in my voice. At first, I thought it was caused by exhaustion or illness, but after consultating with doctors, they assured me of my perfect health and dismissed my concerns. However, my voice worsened over time, and I experienced periods of complete voice loss. In order to find answers, I conducted many private investigations, using my idle time out of rehearsals, of course. Eventually, I realized that the harmony in Penacony is not pure. A discord lurking within has tainted my voice of harmony, which I believe to be the root cause of my vocal issues. I immediately realized that such levels of interference can only occur if either a powerful external force is pulling the strings or if a senior member of the family is involved. Unfortunately, further investigation has led me to believe the latter conclusion. This is an extremely alarming discovery. A traitor has emerged within the family in Penacony, and it is highly likely that this person is one of the four family heads. I trust you impeccably, dear brother, because of our promise. I don't know. Like, I believe he's being controlled because we see that goddamn bloody bird chilling about. So who knows what that's doing? And that had the same eye pattern as death. So who knows? With the Charmony Festival on the horizon, I fear that this person intends to impede its progress or even use the festival for some ulterior motive. At any rate, I suggest you monitor the other family heads while also prioritizing your own safety. You are the only true family member I have left. There is another matter that requires our attention. During my investigation, I learned about the Memory Zone meme, Death, and my further inquiries led me to believe that the culprit who directed it to cause this series of incidents is likely the aforementioned traitor in the family. I've collected more clues and prepared to verify my hypothesis. Rest assured, you can focus on the preparations of the Charmony Festival. Once I thoroughly investigated Death, I'll come and meet you immediately. It won't take too long. You see, it's the fact that we know something is controlling death, and it seems like it only targets people who have gotten too close. Given your heavy workload, please take care of yourself. Don't stay in the dreamscape all the time. Spend some time in reality when you're free. I brought some more of specialties from other galaxies. Giant Mo pudding tarts from Marolians. Wild strawberries from Akoniaka, known for their exceptional size and sweetness, which I'm certain you will enjoy and almond merug cream crack nails from Medikai. Don't forget to enjoy them. May Zype be with us. Your sister, Robin. As soon as I and the rest of the crew arrived in Penacony, Mr. Sunday and Robin showed up to greet us. I remember hearing something unusual in her voice, and now it seems I was right. Yep. Sounded robotic. Robin believed it was because the harmony had been tampered with somehow. But as far as I know, there aren't many entities capable of interfering with the power of paths. Hmm. Meaning? If there really is a traitor within the family, 
That person must hold a high position or possess unimaginable strength. Yeah, like a person that we saw display their power against a certain adventurine. That would explain why Mr. Sunday has been having such difficulty in catching the traitor. Because it is Sunday. He just doesn't know. Because he himself is being controlled. Conspiracies. <laughs> this light cone mm. is securely guarded. It must hold some important memories. It's so cute, man. According to Robin's interview, despite having performed on so many grand stages, her favorite performance was a, a pretend show she put on with her brother when they were just kids. That's so cute, man. I wonder how their relationship is now. I mean, Sunday seemed very, like, aggressive, right? Like, when Sunday, when Sparkle did show up as Robin, he was like, oh, how is your voice? And he sounded very mean about it. <laughs> but I guess it's also because he probably already knew it was Sparkle. Growing up brings gains, but also losses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, time is a way of smoothing things out. The beautiful dreams of youth will eventually fade away. Yeah, that's depressing. <laughs> Oh, God damn it! And this is another list of people that died by the meme. I am not reading all of this. <laughs> so that was the first case. Okay, so the notes are actually just documenting what, what the meme is capable of. So the meme can ignore physical barriers. It's swift and is skilled at disguises. That's terrifying. It prefers to attack wounded or vulnerable individuals. Uncertain, maybe taking orders from someone else. Yeah. Robin and Firefly was definitely a targeted attack. So flipping a card was enough to get the meme's attention. Yeah, most cases are related to the ocean. Could this be a breakthrough? Additional note, scratch that. After checking, only two cases were related to the ocean. Could it be the Sweet Dreams troop? Does it have the ability to imitate and learn? Multiple culprits? There is likely a mastermind behind the scenes. No, no notable details in this case. Need to ask the Bloodhound family to strengthen defenses in the prison and other facilities. She was drawn towards a mysterious sound calling to her and walked into a screen, vanishing without a trace. This is the only case where the culprit demonstrated speech ability. Further verification is required to determine if this is a false claim. Bro, what? Like, nothing is consistent. Vision sensor, noteworthy. Mirror, noteworthy. Current hypothesis is related to sight. Wasn't, actually, wasn't, didn't they say something about Firefly looking at a mirror when we were, like, reading her memories after she died? I, I remember Black Swan saying something about she, it's like she's looking at herself in the mirror. So, yeah, this one's actually noteworthy. No, more attacks occurred in the dark or dim environments. Is sight really a trigger? It could be. Mallow, a male human disappeared after being involved in a car accident in Golden Hour. Witnesses report that the presence of an eerie meme who fled underground at the scene of the in incident. No, this is a general case of death. The meme must be connected to the concepts such as death and murder. Okay, the list compromises over 100 cases related to the memory zone meme. However, the author of the list seems to struggle with figuring out the pattern. The information about Robin, Firefly, and the other victims... I don't see any commonalities among them. Yeah, that's the difficult part. Looks like the rumors were right. Death does seem to be targeting random victims. And based on Sunday's notes, he's no stranger to death. I think some of them are random, but I feel like some of them are actually targeted. Both Robin and Firefly, I do believe it is targeted. He's just surprised that it has resurfaced. The plot thickens. So much reading, ugh. While you are convinced that death is connected to the Watchmaker, I have met that Watchmaker many times long before the Dream Master adopted you and your sister, and I have never found ev any evidence linking him to the Memory Zone meme. Now that you are the head of the Oak family, it is essential that you access the situation objectively and consider the bigger picture. It is unwise to allocate all of Panacone's resources and manpower for the sake of a personal vendetta as this would bring dishonor to the Great One. Brother, this thing is killing people. <laughs> Firefly said it was connected to the Watchmaker, and I believe her over Alfalafa. As for the matter of Robin, there will be a time to pursue it once the festival concludes. By then, I will provide you with the necessary resources and manpower in the name of the Alpha family to help you get your revenge. Oh yeah, I'm sure it won't be too late by then. Additionally, I have heard rumors that the Dream Master is not entirely pleased with your recent activities, I advise you conduct yourself with caution. Yours sincerely, Old Eater. 
It seems neither the Dream Master of Penacone nor this old Oti is happy with Sunday's recent performance. Hmm. Interesting. They don't seem to care much about death. Instead, they're more concerned about the Charmony Festival and the Watchmaker. Yeah, that part's concerning. Maybe the other family heads don't think death is a big deal. One thing's for sure. There's a lot of internal conflict within the family, and everybody has their own agenda. Yes, sir. More reading. Buzzing. List of suspects. Esteemed head of the Oak family. The investigation into all suspects involved in the death case has been concluded. The findings are summarized below for your review. Respectfully yours, Esme Drott. These are not people in high positions, though. Yeah, there's probably a bit of information hidden within this, but it's a lot of reading and I'm starting to starting to get a little bit tired, so I can't really handle that. There are a total of 52 suspects on the list, followed by Sunday's note. Perhaps there is a common thread among them. I have reached a conclusion. Mr. Sunday has done some serious research on his suspects. This traitor must have been causing trouble for the family for a long time. Hmm. They all seem to be insiders, but... I haven't met any of them. I mean, we've only been here for a, only a little bit, so that makes sense. Huh? Wait, these characteristics. Okay, Akron's pointing them out. What is it? No, nothing. No. <laughs> Damn it. Maybe I'm just overthinking things. However, if this trade... Perhaps that's oh, why Sunday is taking this matter so seriously. Okay, what does she say? If this trader really exists, could they be responsible for Firefly and Robin's death? Most definitely. Every time. How? Huh? Wait, these characteristics. What is it? No, nothing. Tell us, please. <laughs> Perhaps that's why Sunday is taking this matter so seriously. That's all for now. Nothing more noteworthy. Please tell us the characteristics because it's, it's apparently something important because you and Sunday have come to a conclusion. Before coming here, I had all sorts of scenarios in my head about dealing with the family. I did not expect an empty mansion. While going and swinging? Watch out. Someone's approaching. Ah, fun. I don't think trespassing on forbidden areas is the way to be a guest, Mr. Yang. Sunday. And Great to meet you, buddy. Acheron? The Galaxy Ranger? It's a bloody smirk, man. I don't, I don't trust it. Our apologies, Mr. Sunday. Uh, nobody came to greet us, so we entered without permission. <laughs> I hope you can forgive us. And we also snooped around without permission, but you know, it, it, it is what it is. <laughs> but even if there's no one to greet you, you should wait for the host. Don't you agree? Yeah, we waited right here and we touched nothing. Even without the famous Galaxy Ranger. As far as I know, the crew has officially accepted the family's commission. So coming here will be unnecessary for you. I mean, with the information you have here, it was very necessary. On the contrary, that's exactly why we're here. To ask you about the case and gather more information. We don't want any loose ends. Hmm. Well, since you've come with goodwill, I have no reason to show you the door. Sick. Rest assured, he hasn't figured out that we went through those documents. <laughs> right, okay. I think it was best if you just didn't say anything. <laughs> While the truth remains a mystery, I'm getting close to it. I assure you that the traitor will soon pay the price. See, like, whilst I believe that, like, Sunday is probably not the traitor, and it is just, like, a character that we haven't met yet, I think it would be more interesting if it is the case that he is the traitor, but he doesn't know. Because he's being controlled by something, if that's maybe the Stellaron, who knows? Because that bird that's chilling is definitely the most suspicious. Let's hope justice will prevail soon. I have a question for you, if you don't mind. How did the family come to the conclusion that the murderer was within the family? With all due respect, it's in the IPC's interest to wreak havoc before the Charmony Festival, and the family has every reason to suspect the IPC's involvement. Well, because this was, like, happening before the IPC, right? Well, showed back other up. family heads share the same suspicions as you. But, in my opinion, the true murderer would never have drawn as much attention as that ambassador did. Not to mention, I personally shackled him a while ago. He's just trying to get by, man. However, I'll give you a suggestion regarding your suspicions, Mr. Yang. You should be more cautious of Aventurine. 
While the wicked can't break through high walls, they can plunge their evil dagger into the heart of the righteous. Hmm, I don't know, man. I trust the Venturine over you. <laughs> he's a businessman, not some philanthropist. But right now, he's out there handing out his wealth on the streets. And he went to the Clock Studios theme park all by himself. Who knows what kind of scheme he's cooking up. Yeah, but I trust his scheme over yours. <laughs> While the family is dedicated to keeping our guests safe, it might be wise for you to stay alert. It's just not true though, is it? A lot of them clearly don't even care about death. You never know what unexpected troubles could arise. Yeah, the threats? Back to Venturine. According to a Pierpoint hotline tip, there was a major breakthrough in the shocking Edgehousio of Venturine case. The suspect has been arrested. Oh. This fraud case has been linked to many departments within the Interastral Peace Corporation and the Intelligentsia Guild, causing a large drain in manpower and resources, resulting in the IPC taking a massive loss. Damn, what did he do? The case's main suspect originates from Sigonia 4 <laughs> and is one of the survivors of the second Kataka Avjin extinction event, who does not carry an interstellar refugee travel permit. So Venturin has already made IPC take a massive loss, and I'm guessing that's why they recruited him. As per Strategic Investment Department head Diamond Sentiments, the IPC has appropriately relocated the suspect in the spirit of the Charter, and will continue to conduct further investigations as to the motive of the suspect. Fair enough. Hey, yo! Who are you? What pretty eyes. Tell me. Do they shine in the dark? Well, hello, Jade. You definitely seem like you're going to be playable. Well, if they did, I'd sell them in a heartbeat. <laughs> you don't know how many people long for your eyes to be closed forever. Wow. As a servant, you should not resist your master. Yet, you went and killed that man anyway. Kind of deserved, though, innit? <laughs> no lawyer has the audacity to defend you. Perhaps you ought to represent yourself. Well, if no one else is going to do it, might as well. Not difficult, but definitely pointless. <laughs> You're pretty confident on your eloquence. Did you also think that when you lied to the Intelligentsia Guild? Ask and you shall receive. <laughs> you wanted the perfect construction material. All I did was offer a possibility. It was just a small wager. Yeah, and that small wager ended up making the IPC take a massive loss, apparently. <laughs> if your luck holds out, the IPC will dig something up from the golden sands of Ejihazo. Maybe even the Sand King's remains. Mmm. Pity your luck has run out. So Tazarov was also called the Sand King. Interesting. I'll admit that. What I'm more curious about, though... Is why such a grand scheme failed to benefit anyone in the end, including the perpetrator himself. Just funny, isn't it? <laughs> oh, madam, I already have what I want. To be brought before you for the next high-stakes gamble. Oh. Then let's talk about the second gamble. Tell me, what are you prepared to wager this time? So this was how he was hired. My life. I bet you won't send me to the gallows. <laughs> you won't, coward. You won't kill me. <laughs> what do you want, then? I want your Lenore to meet with me. I have something to say. Chief. And then what? I want cash. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> it can't be that simple, can it? It is that simple. 30 tonbas. The remainder of my market value. Mm-hmm. 30 tonbas. No more, no less. You can definitely see where he picked up a lot of like his uh his wording came from his master. Like the no more, no less, all or nothing. With this money, I'll climb to even greater heights than you. Damn. Grasp even more riches than you. <laughs> I wager you won't give me this chance. 
Which is why you should call him here. Based man, met the mind games is insane. Interesting. <laughs> A pity Diamond won't see you. No one gets to see him. Diamond was From it. From here on out, I am Diamond's representative, <clears throat> and I will decide on his behalf. How about you ask him though? You're wrong, Thirty Tondas. I'll give you that, and. <laughs> Much more than that. Wealth. Status. Power. The IPC will give you whatever you want. Even what you don't want. Okay, maybe not that power though. Kakavasha. <laughs> A good name. But unfortunately destined to be buried in the dirt. You though. You deserve to live. To create even more wealth for us. Yep, yeah, once again, just being used. Go. Pick the clothes you like. Then choose your desired identity. And then. <laughs> use them well, child. And that's how Aventurine was born. May your plans never suffer failure. Life is like a long term investment. Those who choose correctly the correct things, reach the correct outcomes, and show the world their value. Damn man, they're doing a very good job of getting me invested in an adventuring story. People can't always make the right choices in their lives. But luck has always been on my side. I've never lost. Well, there's always a first loss. Is it because Gaiathra blesses me? If that's the case, she must also be looking upon me right now. My success is inevitable. Unless you have like two people that have constantly gone against, you know, the rules of things. You know, Acheron and the Trailblazer. But... What then? <laughs> Even if I overcome this difficult trial... What would come next? What awaits me after this glorious gamble? An even more glorious one? You're on death now. Will I return triumphant with unending riches after countless successes, or... Will I encounter failure? Hmm. Never to return. Ugh, damn, man. Yeah, you're talking to yourself now? <laughs> yeah, those memories are what? kicking in. What? what? Yep, he's seeing himself. We already, we already know this can happen. Because this is what I thought was going to happen to Spackle. I thought Spackle was going to see her, like, original personality. They still might do that, because I feel like there's a very good chance that can happen. But it's happening with Aventurine. I wasn't expecting that. Am I dreaming, or have I gone completely insane? Both. Perhaps both. Yep. Forgotten me already? When you were strapped to that electric chair... Jesus. ...by mannequin warlords, who was it that gave you the idea? Fine. I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. Get out of my head, newborn of the Harmony. Oh, damn. <laughs> the Harmony? Oh, don't play the fool. It's not the first time we've met. No need to be so polite. So what's actually manifesting this, then? I'm you, and perhaps even more aware of yourself than you. Of what exactly you want. You're dying. Mm -hmm. And you still want to drag a bunch of unfortunate fools with you through death's door. That's why you're here, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what, bringing everyone else down with him? I respect it. Yeah, because we know that the dreamscape can create your, like, your ego, which is your, like, original self. So that explains that part, like, oh yeah, I'm more aware of yourself than you. A grand unveiling. I think he can. 
Why not? <laughs> well, you may have fooled everyone, but you can't fool yourself. Classic. I can show you. Before you're entirely gone, I'll be with you for the last stretch of your road. Mm. Let's have a heart to heart while we walk. That's always fun. Chatting with yourself. <laughs> what exactly are you? Most people in this world spend their entire lives just to reach one outcome. And I am that outcome. So what? A future version? To be honest, that's on the table now. We've already seen that we've seen memories of the future. So it's definitely a possibility now. He's the outcome of that future. Huh. Kakabasha, I am your future. Oh, goddamn. <laughs> First, I'm hearing things, and now I'm seeing them. <laughs> Great. Mm. Am I going to be elevated into the Harmony's Emanator next? Possible. Why are there no guests here? What's that Featherhead doing? Yeah, that's not creepy, is it? The last time we saw everyone disappear was before Sparkle sent us into the real dreamscape. Oh, I just realized the quest thing as well. Head to the central stage of the park. Just a Pepeshi? No. A child. Oh, is it a younger version of him? It's a younger version of himself. I thought minors weren't allowed in Golden Hour. Hey, kid. You okay? Are you lost? I think so, anyway. I'm dying. God damn it. What's wrong, mister? Aww. Well. Yep, it is him. <sighs> Your eyes. Oh, uh, this is gonna get depressing, isn't it? Impossible. Who are you? They're pretty, aren't they? Sis said they're a gift from Mama Funga. Colorful eyes are said to bring good luck. Oh god, I will say those eyes are creepy on a child. Uh, mister, you have pretty eyes too. Beautiful. Are, are you alone? Come on, my guy. Where are your parents? Y you know the answer. They're in that amusement park. Papa and Mama went in first. I'm just about to go look for them. Um, there's the lightning. I have to go. Goodbye, mister. Hope you have a good time, too. Those eyes. And Mama Funga. No, no, it... It can't... Mm -hmm. There aren't any Avgens left. It's just a memory, my guy. Papa, Mama, wait for me. Oh, that's good. It's gonna get... <laughs> this is gonna become bad very quickly. Only on Panacone. Yeah, see in the past. <sighs> what are you still doing here? Well, you've known all along. The family truly showed leniency to everyone who came seeking help. Why would there be a need for such high walls and deep moats? True. However, people don't see it like that. Especially since the flavor of the drink served is so alluring. You will receive no charity on Panacone. And relying on your own strength alone to topple high walls? <laughs> Not a likely fate. So it seems like there is like some sort of like time loop theory then? Or oh, just loop theory in general. If he's able to see the future like memory of himself, yeah, there's definitely something weird going on. Which is why once you step into the hotel, you remove your high hat and beg everyone you come across for help. Like a hyena scavenging for scraps in the desert. <laughs> because you know that opportunities are fleeting. Mm -hmm. Well, when you put it like that, even Ratio's a teeny peacock analogy <laughs> sounds pleasant. Well, you know how rare it is for me to give you the straight dope. <laughs> you listen while you can. Yeah, the straight dope. It's good timing that you mentioned the doctor. I'm especially fond of what you and he have in common. The conspiracies, calculations, especially the part about the finale, a magnificent act of betrayal. 
Yeah, well, that seems like it's gonna be happening with us and Avengerine. Oh, and everyone thinks this way. Who would even suspect that it was another trap you meticulously devised? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was confirmation that he did plan everything out. Go on. Tell me I'm right. You know who you really are, Mr. Cavalier Gambler. Uptight, sober, cautious, massive inferiority complex. Mm -hmm. You've won so much, and you're still so afraid of losing. I mean, if you've gone your entire life where you're winning, then yeah, eventually you're gonna get to the point where you're just so terrified of losing that streak. They only see your big bets, your bravado, the full house, the straight flush. They don't know the other hand is below the table, clutching your chips. Dear life. Mm. It's a heck of an You're a natural kid. <laughs> you don't stop at fooling the audience, you fool yourself too. True. Well, the best way to prevent others from seeing your true colors is first being able to fool yourself. Yeah, I can't remember what exactly it was that Spackle said to him. I think she said something along the lines of if you really want to join the Tavern, you need to figure out what Aha wants. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> of course. I know you all too well. But it's strange. Why did you decline that invitation? You had the chance to embrace elation, and was that not what you most wanted? But you chose the IPC instead. Hmm. For the preservation? <laughs> I doubt it. Do you even have anything in common with the preservation? Oh, I thought you knew. Didn't you say you had me pegged? Yeah. We're done. Either stop talking or disappear from my sight. True. If he is from the future, then he should know the answer, right? <laughs> That's fine. But who exactly is about to disappear here? Also fair point. <laughs> well, it's not going to be me anyway. Oh uh, yeah, about that, my guy. After the agony, the shouts and the cries, prison palaces and reverations. <laughs> oh. Ah, playing hide and seek. I'm really good at this. Sure. Send it away. Amp yeah, sure thing. And away we go. <sighs> Alright, good old game of hide and seek. And I've just realized the, as well, the past, the present, and the future. When Mama said goodbye that day, how many catechins were like jackals hot on your heels? I know you won't forget that sound anytime soon. Those shrill cackles. Yeah. You had to hide right under the noses of those savages. You and Big Sis. Playing dead. Damn. Drifting and all that. Completely ruined that shirt. <laughs> Shame. Wasn't that the last one Dad left behind? Really kind of drilling it in, man. It wasn't ruined. I've always kept it. Hmm. Come on. It's a rag. Not like you can ever wear it. Uh, it's still a memory though, isn't it? <laughs> now you don't have to hide. You probably won't even deign to get your pretty outfit wet in the rain. Your social capital has changed after all. Still a precious memory, though. A I gift. Never changed. On the contrary, now you're the one who does the hunting. The last round of hide and seek, and you get to be it. You should enjoy it. Hmm. The last round. A child. Could he be in here? Probably. No, I wanted the chest. Is this? Ah, Topaz's cornerstone. A, a topaz? What is this doing here? Mmm, feels a bit like bait. <laughs> what does your cornerstone wrench out of your heart, son? <sighs> I was merely curious why it was here. Yeah, that's a bit weird. 
that winged guy put it here? To taunt you. <laughs> Just to make you realize that your painstakingly arranged magic show is nothing but a death rattle. The cornerstone's hue is the same as the radiance of Clipon's body. <laughs> I've got to give it to you. I've heard a lot of baloney, but that lie deserves a prize for sheer nerve. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, it might have worked out if Dr. Rachel never actually, like, helped. This is just bait. Mm hmm Of course. That's why Ratio's betrayal was one of the keys to your plan. I have to say, that doctor's acting was superb. Okay, so Dr. Rachel was in on it then. I can never tell because Dr. Rachel was, like, saying, Oh, yeah, I did my part like you asked. And then Eventuring was like, even after you betrayed me. So it was, I was getting confusing messages. <laughs> or... Maybe he wasn't acting at all. That too. All the better for you. Sunday didn't become head of the Oak family by acting sloppy. He's obsessed with control. Too obsessed. You have to give him enough detail to satisfy his meticulous nature, but not so much that he gets suspicious. Yeah, man. It was that smirk here. It seems evil. Which is why you had Ratio seek him out and leak the plan on purpose. To prevent the other party from suspecting anything. The intel you gave to Ratio was all true. We spoke of the same to Sunday. Fair enough. Finally, Sunday took the bait, found the other cornerstone, and before you know it, everyone's distracted enough for you to steal the third stone right out from under them. Mmm. The Aventurine Stone, so his own. <sighs> Why don't you stop rummaging through my mind? He is big brain. Pure <laughs> <laughs> You're me, and I'm you. We're the same. The best way to prevent others from seeing your true colors is to first be able to fool yourself. <laughs> really? You can't even fool yourself. You just got lucky this time. So pretty much like always then? So, whose cornerstone is that then? Tell me. What's its name? <laughs> Why are you even asking me? Yeah, I mean, he's just doing it for the sake of it, innit? Uh, must I do all the work? <laughs> Aventurine is the stone of luck and trickery. That's what she said when he received the stone, wasn't it? That suits him pretty well. <laughs> Often used as a substitute. And that more precious gem is. Is. Jade. Jade. Oh, that was her cornerstone. Interesting. So she played into the gamble, eh? Even Sunday can't tell the difference. Well, looks like Jade can be substituted for a Venturine, too. Mm. <laughs> Sauce for the goose. Aventurine, Topaz, Jade, three elites, three cornerstones who, for a measly panic of me, offered their everything. Oh, you're even more united than the family. Honestly, yeah. And after all that talk about them not being united. As I've said before, three chips are sufficient. Ah. I thought the three chips was the people he was working with. So the actual express crew, the Garden of Recollection, and then the family. That's what I thought the three chips were. But will it be the former or the latter? <laughs> we'll find out soon enough. Mm -hmm. So where's the real adventuring stone? <laughs> take it out. Let's have a look. Come on, take it out. Show the class. <laughs> Suddenly, you don't know where it is? I just want to hear you say it. After all, it really does resemble its owner. As you wish, then. They never went anywhere. They're right where they belong. I always just had it on his person. Piled up with these cheap baubles. 
Oh, what? So he did also place it inside the, the, the chest of gems. <laughs> you smashed the Aventurine stone before you left. Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah. A humble pebble coated in the most lustrous sheen. I take it back. This thing is far more precious than your life. This is some uh, weird therapy, I guess. <laughs> You're absolutely clear about the consequences of doing this. Blasphemy against Clipoff's body. You think the IPC will let you get off scot-free? I, I, I don't really think he cares at this point. <laughs> Well, Diamond has always been all about results. As long as I could create value far beyond the cost, the ends justify the means. Fair enough. How else would the family be fooled if there was no price to pay? It doesn't matter. Even smashed to smithereens, the preservation's cornerstone can still be used. Its effect may be greatly diminished, but it's enough for me. Interesting, so if the form that we saw in the trailer is its weakened form, what is it truly capable of? Now I'm really curious. Why does every step you take involve reckless risks and the choices you prepare for yourself always come with a strong impulse for self-destruction? It's just how he rolls. Do you truly believe that the greater the risk, the greater the rewards? I wouldn't have guessed you'd be so loyal to the IP. Is it loyalty though, or is it something else? <laughs> there is so much you don't see. Which is also why you'll never see how I'll win it all. Fair enough. That is, if you can do what it takes. <laughs> we'll just have to wait and see then. So is this the memory of his future or not? <laughs> uh, the cornerstone is gone. Another oh. illusion of the harmony. Ow. Another illusion of the harmony. It would appear so. Huh? Where did the young version go? Oh, there he is. Hello. We meet again, Mr. Pretty Eyes. What's up, small version of me? Yes. We meet again. Did you find your mother and father? See, he, he's sweet when he's interacting with like a child. Even if it is like a younger version of himself. Of course. Big Sis is there too. The four of us were just playing hide and seek. <laughs> I'm so happy. On our way here, Papa even brought me to see a flim. A flim? <laughs> I think you mean film. <laughs> yes, that's it. Putting many drawings together and turning them into a moving wall painting. They put me, Papa, Mama, and Big Sis together, turning us into one big family. That's sweet, dude. You should give it a try too, mister. <laughs> you look sad. The amusement park will cheer you up. Yeah, I'm sure it will. <laughs> I'm sure. Alright, introducing us to the mini games. <laughs> okay, wait, the music is a jammer. Yeah, I think we need to avoid those enemies. Oh, goddamn. Got it. Bingo. <laughs> How's that? Not a bad score, eh? The child is gone. <sighs> yeah, at least it, it seemed like he was having fun. Boring. <laughs> that was kind of cute though. He was excited for like a moment. Wait, hold on a minute. I heard, I heard Mikhail there. I heard that voice. Or was it just from this thing? Maybe I am tripping. I swear I heard it. <sighs> what do you want? Why aren't you talking? You piqued my interest. I'll admit that there are still aspects of you that I don't completely understand. Well, you sound sincere this time, at least. <laughs> well, sincerity is one of my traits that everybody likes. And I have precious few of those. Moving on. See that <laughs> maze over there? <laughs> I'll know everything about you before you reach the exit. So, with the way how they're doing it, it's making it seem like he's not the future version of himself or okay or they might be doing it as like this is a future version of himself but he just doesn't actually know himself you know what i mean like he's not true to himself like he doesn't know how him himself like functions or thinks 
So that's why he's kind of like probing at his like past or currently present self to try and figure out things because he's lost in the future. Our quaint journey through this amusement park still isn't over. And I wouldn't mind stretching this out at all. But I feel like what I just said was a big stretch. <laughs> we'll see though. Yes, very tall. Open that up so we'd have to do it later. There's so many flowers here. Fix this. This one's for you. So sweet, dude. Get your ass out of here. A dead end? Oh, is this the wrong way? Oh, this is the only way. It, is this? Ugh, this is the shackles he was in. Oh, what's on your mind? Mm-hmm. It's got nothing to do with you. Ugh, man. Yeah, I feel really bad for him. Do you need a hand? These are manacles on you. Really? That man gave you your first job. And you made your first pot of gold. I remember it all too well. I'm sure he would have never guessed that. Shut up. Hmm. Oh, you don't wish to face your past. Unwilling to admit that your life is worth only 60 tambas. I'm willing to admit your life is only worth 60 tambas. I thought it was 30. I, I thought that was the price he said it at. Well, from what I see, you refuse to confront it because it only proves your weakness. Mm hmm. How could a weak person take such daring risks? <sighs> You love the thrill of danger, but you refuse to let go of meaningless sentiments. Even in this beautiful dream, the only thing you dare allow yourself is death. Alright, the boy needs a hug. <laughs> in your hands, those who follow you could have become joker cards. They're far more useful that way. It's not like this is the only place the family ever cut corners. You could have had tons of action if you weren't so all or nothing. All it takes is a meager sacrifice. I bet Opal would have resolved this without a fuss. Hey, the man's got his own way of doing things, alright? I'm with it. <laughs> a pity you're not him. Well, you wouldn't be in this state if you could just get with the program. And why couldn't you? Out of professional integrity. Just wants to do his own thing. <laughs> Those techniques you mentioned are highly efficient, but it's not that I don't know about them. It's more like I couldn't care less. <laughs> Those cheats. Get it? What, when you become one of the cornerstones, they start giving you cheat codes? What fun is it if the fight isn't fair? Is that your excuse? Fair. <laughs> you assume your opponents would fight fair in the first place. The odds are obviously not in your favor, so how are you just breezing by? But did that masked fool's words awaken something in you? I mean, her words gave him confirmation that there is still a way out. Like, there is still a mute person he can get to. Well, she gave me an answer that could turn everything upside down. Yep. <laughs> everything? That mute person is definitely the watchmaker. You mean, it could make all the cards on the table just... disappear? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See what you did there. That's cheating. If these leaves could be brought back, would they bloom into new flowers? Sure. Among the rock, one cannot stop or think. <sighs> Alright, what is it this time? Your Aww. expression right now is hard to put into words. The lucky charm Mama left you is made from gold. Why did you never consider selling it? Because it's important to him, man. You obviously could have lived a normal life like Big Sis that way. Looking back, that was the better choice. Because it has sentimental value, man. Mama only left us with two pieces of jewelry. A necklace and a lucky charm. There won't ever be a third piece. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's what you always say, but you actually regret it, don't you? 
that you did it somehow. Mm. You can zip it if there's nothing to talk about. <laughs> I know. You must remember what Big Sis told you. You're a child blessed by Gyathra Triclops and can lead the clan to happiness. So always remember to protect yourself and never resent the pain and poverty you're going through. Yeah, I feel like that is definitely the worst thing they were told. Yeah, look, you're blessed, so ignore all the pain and, you know, suffering you're going through. You're protected, so none of it matters. The words still ring in your ears, don't they? You're a good kid, so you definitely won't have forgotten. <laughs> so, you surely won't forget how tragic her last moments of life were. How the piercing laughter behind you felt like it was drilling into your heart. Jesus, man. He ran away without looking back, just as she told me to. Ugh, my guy, my guy has not had an easy life. Tisk, tisk. A lifelong regret, indeed. Mm. Enough! Do you not have anything better to talk about? Oh, shut me down like a champ! Well, I guess when it comes to mind games, this isn't exactly your first rodeo. Yeah, I mean, they already told us the Venturian was going to have a really awful past. Definitely, uh, definitely living up to it. I think I finally get you. <laughs> Woo! You are nuts! Mm -hmm. In the end, I'll ruin this beautiful dream and create the grandest death. <laughs> well, you stuck to that from start to finish. Yeah. Think about it. There's a Stellaron in play, the fabulous Robin loses her voice, two unsolved murders, cryptic messages from a masked fool, and a <laughs> chance to go head to head with Sunday himself. There's a lot going on. The only thing to pique your interest is one word. The last word. A word that's right there at your fingertips. Death. But who's exactly? That's what we want to know. <laughs> like, there's just so much, like, information to keep track of. And when you're tired, it's very overwhelming. Because <laughs> it just feels like people are constantly, like, one up in each other. And you have to, like, keep trying to track who's on top. It's mad. We'll know when the dice falls. We'll know once everyone reveals their cards. <laughs> All right, then. Reserve a seat for me. I'm curious to see just how capable you are. Still, you never answered my question. <laughs> Which was? If you could start over, would you still want to be the child who received Gaiathra's blessing? Hmm. Wait, wait, when did you even ask this question? <sighs> it's so quiet this time. Hmm. Is he finally gone? Or am I the one about to disappear? Feet deep in the sand. Dead mountain mouth of carious teeth. Finally made it out of this place. Freedom! We're going home? But I don't want to go back yet. Oh, too bad. Present self is depressed. Okay. Bish bosh bish bish bosh bish. It's so fun here. I want to stay here forever. Being trapped within the dream. But no water. Brother Hanu, where are you going? Oh, okay, we we're hearing clocky now. Bit weird. So is eventually not going to question this? One place. <laughs> I want. I wanted to hear that. Oh, we got a bazooka. Tell ya, dude. <laughs> You got it, bird. So is Aventurine not going to question that? <laughs> Mister, is that you? I hear the sound of leather shoes. <laughs> Will you be a coming? <laughs> ah, it really is you. Yes, sir. I don't know why, mister, but you always give me a special feeling. <laughs> that makes me more curious about you. I wonder why. It's sad that I can't get to know you more. We have to say goodbye. Did you have fun? He actually did seem like he had fun. Mm. You're... going back? 
Yes, I should go home. The day's getting dark, and it's going to rain. I don't want to worry the others. Mm. Your home. Where is it? What a strange question. It's where Papa, Mama, and Big Sis are. Aww. <laughs> In this dream. Oof. So I already knows. This amusement park. This beautiful dream. They really are peaceful. Ugh. Everyone loves it. Still within a dream, though. But, mister, why don't you like it? Because it's a dream. <laughs> because they're not here. Mm-hmm. Where are they then? Dead. I don't know. No. Oh. Damn, man. Venturing hidden in the fields. You do know. But there's no point pressing the issue. <laughs> hmm. I don't blame him. We all are. Which is why we chose to stay here. Me and him. But what are the consequences of that though? Staying within the dream doesn't seem like the right answer. And I feel like that's why the future self has like memories missing. Or he can't fill in the gaps in certain areas. Staying within the dream is definitely not the right answer. Not now anyway. Well, present self says no. How long will you stay? Forever. We'll be with you forever in this dream. Hmm. This is the greatest honor that we can offer to those who hurtle towards death. Fair enough. <laughs> the road less traveled is less traveled for a reason. But you've never gone in any other direction. Your own life is the chip you're most eager to lay down. Always has been. Oof, man. <laughs> man, it's hidden. It's hidden. You don't care who the real murderer is. And the watchmaker's so-called legacy couldn't be more boring. <laughs> what you want, what you need, is to be the smooth operator, <laughs> the solid gold dealmaker, who doesn't waste a drop of sweat even when he's up to his neck in danger deep inside family territory you want to be polished up cuffed with red hot chains and spotlit center stage <laughs> wants to go out with a bang I guess you'll be the closing mm -hmm. All right, that's on the uh, that's on the list now. Save a Venturine. He's he's gone on the must protect list. I can do it, and it will be flawless. I don't know, man. They kind of say a note for a Venturine to die. <laughs> They've just laid out multiple death flags. <laughs> Oh wait, is the stellar one they're talking about us? Hmm, I just thought about that. <laughs> that might have took me way too long to realize. <laughs> okay, yeah, I think I just overthought all of that. I was like, oh, there's a stellar on on Penicone. It's probably doing all this crazy stuff. No, it, he was probably just talking about us. <laughs> God damn it, man. <laughs> Hopefully not, you, though. You'll just happen to slip the leash, sweep the rat race, extract yourself from this endless debacle. You'll have the freedom you've always dreamed of. Mm. <laughs> this isn't the first time. You've been an escape artist from day one. This fiasco started with a death and its curtains will fall on another death. So that's why Diamond chose you. 
It would appear so, future of entering. He's just after Panacone. No matter the means, no matter the price. It's not personal. Man, I really want that chest. It's hard, isn't it? To admit that someone cares about you. Well, don't get soft on me now. <laughs> what, did you suddenly grow a conscience? <laughs> Why, I was born from yourself. Well aware that climbing out of the hole you've dug is basically impossible. <laughs> Fair enough. I can't stop you from doing what you want. We can't change where you want to go. We can, though. We can fix him. Well, what's done can't be undone. All we can do is play the cards we're dealt and rake in as much time as possible. Mm. Yes. Alas, people won't make all the right choices in their lifetime. The luck always seems like it's on your side. Yeah, so maybe he'll luckily survive and he won't die. Keep winning, having never lost before, but why you? Why? Must it be you? Because he's been blessed? If all your luck is built on the pain of someone you love, on the loss of dozens more. If these windfalls, these jackpots, aren't a gift from Gyanthra. If all they are is a long string of meaningless deaths. What's the point? Then what did we do to deserve living in a world like that? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, the man the man has not been dealt a good life. And I can definitely see why he acts the way he acts. The man just needs a hug. Maybe. Maybe when I get to where I'm going and look back. I'll know what the trip was all about. Hmm. Man, they're really raising every bloody death flag possible for this man. Fine. Time to make a move, my friend. I'll be waiting up ahead. I'll be waiting up future. <laughs> Say goodbye to the kid before you shuffle off. It's... Yeah, the kid is actually kind of cute, though. Yeah, well, we're not gonna let him die. All right. <laughs> and now, only we are left. It would appear so, Kafasha. <laughs> Can you take a photo for me? I want a memento. So adorable, man. Sure. Come on. See, he's a lot more caring towards his past self. Like, whilst he's going back and forth on his future self, he turns towards his past self and he's like, So, you're having fun. <laughs> I'll do the things you want. It's cute, man. Aww. <laughs> Can you take a photo for me? I want a memento. <laughs> That's so sweet, dude. Boom. <laughs> How nice. Now I can see what I look like, too. Oh. Look at the lens when you're taking a photo the next time. Your expression will look more natural. <laughs> sure, I will. Then, mister, are you going back to? Prioritize saving Aventurine. I can't leave yet. I still have a show to do. Mm. Oh, you're about to go on stage, aren't you? Oh, uh, we're hitting the climax. This is where everything's gonna go down. Everyone's gonna reveal their cards. Let's go then. I'll take you to the stage. <laughs> sure. So you're an actor. <laughs> no wonder your clothes are so stylish. I'm actually a merchant, but I do have a show to do. Yeah, sure. Are you the same as those men in black in the sky? <laughs> but you're not wearing black. Only ordinary employees have to wear that. My position is much higher than theirs. <laughs> He's moved up. Awesome. I hope I can become as good looking as you when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> of course you can. You'll be better and stronger than me. Uh, that's such a cute thing to say. Over plains endless. Into cracked earth stumbling. Ah, the stage. Behind this curtain is the grand stage. 
This is where everything's gonna pop off. It's almost time to go on stage. Are you ready? Good luck with your show. Man, I really hope they don't kill Aventurine, man. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you still seem pretty nervous. Well, the man's about to off himself, so... Let's put our palms together. If you receive Gaiathra's blessing, you'll feel more relaxed. The kid is so sweet, man. <laughs> He's so sweet as a kid. Putting our palms together is a simple ritual. By putting our palms together and reciting the prayer to Mama Funga, she will bless us. <laughs> if you're not familiar, I can guide you. No, oh, he's very familiar. It's alright. I know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> of course I know. Mm -hmm. Oh my god, hit him. This is where we go our own oh, way. Oh man. Kavisha. The catechins are coming. Man, you can't give me a scene like this, man. <laughs> so this is the day when his sister died. Why? The catechins have already taken all our money, food, and they killed our parents. What more do they want? Catechins are bloodthirsty, cruel, and insatiably greedy. They want everything only to end up with nothing. This is a trick, an act of revenge, remember? Today is the day of the Kakava. And also your birthday. Oh, come on, man. Even on his birthday, you can't just give him a happy day for once. They know the Afton will surely hold a festival today. With the aid of this rain, they will come to destroy our wagons and take everything they want. Mm. Little do the Hattikins know, this time we will fight back. The men in black that descend from the skies are on our side. The IPC. The Catechins stand no chance against them, and will surely pay for their arrogance. I'm pretty sure the Men in Black is, uh, the IPC anyway. Without this rain, the Catechins would never take action, and we would not have the chance to turn the tide. This is a gift from Gayathra, and you are Kakavasha, whose good fortune will bless your sister with success. Oh, man. But... But people will die, and you will be in danger. How is that good fortune? Why are you all doing this? I mean, he's got a fair point. Like, they go through all of this suffering, but th they say they're fine with it because it's... They say it's a test from the one they worship. The Afjin always return their blood debts. Gayathra calls for me, but Papa and Mama are waiting for me. I must answer the call. But she will bless you with good fortune and help you survive. I mean, that part is correct. As long as you are alive, the blood of the Avgen will never run dry. So run, Hagavasha. Do not be afraid. And do not look back. Go to the other side of the mountain. The rain will accompany you. And the rain will bless you. Again, like I said earlier, I feel like this is the real reason he doesn't like the rain. Like, he could care less about the rain ruining his outfit. It just reminds him of, like, bad memories. As for us, we will reunite in Kakava's next aurora. Start of Kakathra's reincarnation, eh? May the goddess Gayathra close her eyes three times. Oh man. Keep your blood eternally pulsing. And uh, it's going to transition to the kid doing the same to him. Let your journey be forever peaceful. And your schemes forever concealed. There you go. Farewell, Kakavasha. Oh my god, man. I can't wish sad backstories. Just, I never know what to say. Newsflash from the Inter-Astral Peace broadcast. The IPC Marketing Development Department spokesperson confirms that a small-scale rebellion has broken out in the unclaimed region of Sigonia. The situation is now under control. Even if it is small-scale, it's still life-changing. The insurgents are from a local clan known as Kataka, which has a long history of disdain towards the IPC. 
This has caused a serious negative impact to the work of the IPC's marketing development department. Man, I just want to give a Venturain a hug. <laughs> the clan launched a massive attack on the Abjin, who were under the protection of the IPC, resulting in 6,728 deaths hell. and 3,452 missing. The casualties are currently under the care of the frontline trauma team. I mean, it might be possible his sister's still alive, maybe? The spokesperson expresses his deepest condolences for this devastating humanitarian disaster. At the same time, delivering an important message on this matter to all interplanetary citizens. I think because it's been like fully confirmed that his like parents are dead, but his sister he ran away from. So it is possible she might have survived, but who knows. Finally, he proclaims, the hammer of preservation will fall on all beings, regardless of life or death, regardless of race, regardless of ideology, to uphold the basic rights we inherently possess. See, I don't like this male because it's, it just seems like they, they are setting, setting him up for death. Kakavasha? Gone. <laughs> oh man. Bye. Damn man. Go on stage. Now nah, we can Okay. All the actors are in place. It's time for the show to begin. We can save him. I know we can. This act is dedicated to you. I hope it'll be an unforgettable memory for you. Hmm. Kakavisha. Oh man, <laughs> come on, dude. <laughs> All right, this is where. Way, oh. Before you go, I have a personal question. You. Do you truly want to destroy the world with your own hands? Look, I'm okay. I'm just saying the last time we got this type of situation was with Firefly. All right. And then look what happened to her. So I'm not feeling optimistic that he's going to be alive after this. <sighs> Let's assume, just assuming now, that every time I roll the dice, there's a possibility of achieving this particular outcome. Mm -hmm. Then I would be quite happy to make that wager. Okay. Back to the trailblazer. Is this Miss Acheron? Hello, I'm Himigo, the Astral Express's navigator. Oh man, I don't like that because that's exactly what they did with Firefly where like she remembered a past question that was said to her or she was repeating like, you know, a thing she was saying to us and then she ended up getting stabbed. So... <laughs> I don't know, man. It ain't looking good for Aventurine. Hello, I'm March 7th. I'm sure she needs no introduction, as you definitely know her. As long as you didn't forget me, you can call me Clocky. Uh... <laughs> Might as well. Hello? None of you seem surprised by my arrival. Oh, yeah, because you were bitty bad boy Welt. Since Welt has decided to travel with you, exactly. it means that he trusts you. And we trust <coughs> his judgment. Will always knows what he's doing, man. <laughs> I envy your close friendships. Miss Acheron here doesn't present a danger, and she's of no threat to the Astral Express. Aventurine's prior accusation was based on nothing more than his own subjectivity. Yeah, it was stirring the pot. Which is why, before we continue working together, he has a duty to explain himself. I mean, yeah, this was all part of his plan. He will definitely kind of explain. You want to create a situation where all three parties are present? You're creating the scenario he wants. There must be some deeper meaning behind Aventurine's actions. I suspect he's been aware of Panacone's secret from the beginning and mm -hmm. has been continuously strategizing to unveil it. I don't think we're going to be getting the answers about who is the true villain or the true traitor until maybe 2.2. Like maybe they'll reveal it at the end of 2.1, but I don't know, man. In that sense, the Astral Express's role in his plans would be imperative. 
In the worst case scenario, he may use us to do something unexpected. He's definitely using us, all right. Assuming things do escalate to that stage, having an extra ally is a good insurance policy. Penacone has numerous factions, and the state of affairs is significantly more intricate than that of Bellabog and the Xianzhou. Indeed. I am the bone of my bat. Stellaron is my body, and Trailblaze is my blood. You're talking weird again, but it's a good vibe. No matter what, we can't ignore the safety of Penacone. That line kind of went hard, though. To solve the mystery of the Watchmaker, it is crucial to get the IPC's intel. The path ahead is fraught with danger. But what's trailblazing without a little danger? That is true, just as long as Himako's safe. <laughs> Actually, that means we are going to see everyone fight uh, Aventurine. That'll be exciting to see. Sounds like we've reached a consensus. Now, uh, Miss Acheron? I will accompany you. Of course. Sick. Let's move out then! But where do we start looking for him? Yeah, do we have like an invitation letter? Did he make this appointment? No need to rush. If he truly has laid a trap, he will definitely use every means to lure us in. <laughs> he just sends us a message, that's it. Ladies and gentlemen. That also works. Woo! The IPC cordially invites everyone to Clock Studios theme park. Everyone? <laughs> Look. <laughs> Should both the performers and spectators fail to arrive, won't all of Aventurine's plans be for nothing? Imagine just no one shows up. <laughs> Let's get going, everyone. The hour of trailblazing is upon us. Alright, let's see it. Let's have everything go downhill. Oh, I have a bad feeling that something big's gonna go down. Uh, are you ready? You know it. I'm ready. Let's waste no time and head to the theme park then. Off we trot. Mr. Yang. Oh, a little bit mob between them. Hmm? Why did you not tell your companions about my true identity? You know? Bloody tell us! <laughs> tell us, you son of a... <laughs> it's just like you said, uh, an inability rather than an unwillingness. Plus, it's a long story, not something that can be summed up in a few words. We want to know! <laughs> Tell us! But I chose to believe you, and my trust in you stems more from my own personal judgment. Give us, just give us your name, your real name. That's all, that's all I want. I also believe that if it were their choice to make, they would make the same one. So. Thank you. I'm grateful. To reciprocate. In the upcoming confrontation, if the odds aren't in the Astral Express's favor, I will stand with you. Sick. Alright, we got the best bodyguard. If my meager strength is required. Meager? That's the... what? <laughs> that is not the right word for that. <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure we already know what this is. <laughs> I think we'll go in with Silver Wolf as well. We're back here again. Aventuring actually chose a really conspicuous location. Get all the stretches out. I'm actually so hyped. Oh, that guy's really taking it to a whole new level. Does he really think he's a superstar or something? <laughs> kind of. Also this music, man. Not a soul in sight. The hounds drove out the visitors, and now their whereabouts are unknown too. Hmm. Everyone, pay attention. The other party has obviously come prepared. If we just get like a full fight scene with the Astral Express crew along with Acheron, that'll be sick. Please. <laughs> This is so sick, man. Welcome to the Interastral Peace Corporation live show. Damn, he's done a lot of preparation, I'm not gonna lie. What is this? 
Astral Express. You're late. And this... Unsung guest. Hey, she's our bodyguard. Let her off. We've kept your appointment, Mr. Aventurine. It is customary to show yourself as well. <laughs> well I will, naturally. But before that, I've got to introduce our guest of honor. Big up Sunday. Everyone, give it up for Mid Delaron. Oh no, it's us. <laughs> Mommy, look, I'm on TV. Uh, uh... So this entire time they've been talking about the Stellaron, and I thought it was like a different Stellaron, but they were just talking about us. How great. Let me remind you that in all likelihood. This stage and her identity have nothing to do with the wanted murderer. Oh no, they do. <laughs> of course they do. Otherwise, why would I work so hard to gain your trust and then invite you all here? So our identity has something to do with the wanted murderer. I feel like it is Sunday. I don't know, man. Because she's the only one who saw all three homicides. I mean, Aventurine's just being she a troll. is the key. Family's death and does not exist in dreams promise is nothing but a sham. Okay, a man's got a valid point. Three homicides? Oh, his own. That's right, madam. The third one is about to happen right now, right here. In Clock Studios, the Park. Hey, my guy, I want to save you, all right? <laughs> Hey, we can save him. You, 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 and you. All of you are going to die. And it's all because of you, Miss Stella. Well, the thing is, we know that he's playing up, right? Like, if they never gave us, like, any context on Aventurine's backstory or his point of view, even then I would still be kind of, like, suspicious about what he's doing. We, all, we already know what he's trying to do. You will become the personification of death. Sick. I ain't that powerful. <laughs> Never underestimate yourself. Like I said, you have the power to turn the tide on the entire game. I mean, he also has a valid point. Let me be a little clearer. I will detonate the Stellaron in you and cause a... <laughs> Teeny, tiny, my guy. <laughs> I think setting off a, practically a nuclear bomb, not a good idea. Bam! The entire theme park will be reduced to a shattered dream. <laughs> then before the family can even react, I'll become the IPC fleet's navigator. I think it'll be, I think it'll do a little bit more than destroy the entire theme park. Your bluff isn't fooling anyone. If you could really do that, you would have done so earlier. You want to bet? <laughs> sure. I'll bet with you. I'm betting that it'll be a sweeping victory for me. Uh-huh. By detonating an unprecedented explosion to prove that the vow of harmony is a complete and utter joke. I mean, it does have Smackle's uh, bomb button, so... You won't do it. Who knows? Of course I can. It's just another gamble. Hey, right, well, show yourself at least. I came from the wastelands of Sigonia. For just 60 red copper coins, people paid to brand me. Put me in chains. Place me in the gallows and bury me. The golden sands. And now we just have to give him a hug. But the sun could not kill me. And the quicksand sent me back to the embrace of the guild and the IPC. Bear in mind, my victory wasn't just a stroke of luck. <sighs> I've never been defeated. Time to put an end to it. Have you ever heard the saying, sleep is the rehearsal of death? Why do the living sleep? because we are not ready for the final rest. Well, that's his answer to the question, why does life slumber? Every night is practice. 
this for the end. You and I are escaping into our dreams for fear of death at this very moment. And death will surface in our dreams. I mean, fair enough, I guess. Friends, the game has commenced, and you cannot choose to decline. How about we just go home? Nor do you have any reason or ground to. Ah, uh, here we go. The dice are cast. Ladies and gentlemen, ready to unveil your cards. Puff off, King. Ah, uh, there it is. I'm putting down the bet. I'm taking the gamble. I can't wait for this fight, man. I'm claiming the win. There he is. Oh, it fades in the wheel. A daring gamble. Walking the brink of death for rebirth. Okay, my guy. For the Ember Lord. Sick. Okay, we got a we got a vibe. Hell yeah, dude. Time for a buzz. Right, send it away. <laughs> Sense a storm. This is double speed. Alright, what are you doing? Going all <laughs> Yeah, Sealer might be a little bit screwed here. Okay, I don't think we can break them, so I think we only do enough skill points to actually damage them. I think so, anyway. Boom. Alright, we won. We're good. We win those gambles, man. Ow. Yeah, Sealer might be in a bit of a difficult uh, position here. To heal up a little bit. Don't mess with me. Illusions of the and past. Ow. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> well, come on. Please. Hey, easy. Get out of here. Silver Wolf, Silver Wolf wins at those gachas, man. Uh, I don't think Silver Wolf is going to survive this. Damn it. <laughs> Ow. Ah, come on. Uh, we're in a bad situation here. Who's next? Even on a losing streak, as long as people still have hope, they'll keep throwing money on the table. Uh huh. And no matter how small, the potential is what you hang on to. That's what justifies the gamble. Uh huh, my guy. Time for a buzz. There we go. We finally got quantum break. <laughs> this is double speed. Yeah, we might be a bit screwed here. What a <laughs> Three, not bad. I sent a storm. Search. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. Thank you, Dan. It's all or nothing. Awaken dormant scales. Oh. Cleansing dragon. I don't like that. <laughs> that did uh, way too much damage. Hmm. Don't mess with me. This is bad. <laughs> no, we can't do that. I see through you. Converge and awaken. I. Prepare for something. Okay, like, I, I thought that, oh yeah, we, uh, we have Fu Xuan here, so I probably didn't need to bring Locher, but seems like I was mistaken. Really? Oh, that is so unfortunate. That's, that's just so unlucky. Double down. 
Oh, Jesus, man. All things in the I ain't getting lucky. Yeah, I think, they, I think it might be over. This might be a reset. God damn it, man. Gotta retreat. I got my ass beat. Maybe this team? Ah, screw it. We'll rock with this. I got absolutely embarrassed. Let's begin, my guy. We should be better this time around. Damn, man. Go, stop going after Fushuan. Oh, we tied. Sick. Dush, 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 dush. Ow. Come on. Get a six. Damn it. That is so unfortunate. We tank those. Really? Triple ones? That That's so annoying. Damn, man. There's so much damage. Get out of here. Alright, 10%. We've nearly got him. Alright, finish off, Dan. Get out of here. Mm -hmm. Aw, oh, man. I feel bad for him, man. He would go. Sick, dude. I'm starting to get a little impatient with you all. <laughs> well, this is where Akron needs to come and help. <laughs> Friends, to fully relish this, I'm betting every last shit. Sick, dude. Only by casting aside reason does one truly <laughs> gamble. Yep, help. Man, the music is so sick. <laughs> Emanator, I know you'll match my wager, right? Yeah. He wants just to be put down. You're leaving? Who is this? <laughs> Perhaps. I might pass through the place you mentioned. Oh, so he's the one that told her about Penicone. Penicone? Mm-hmm. What do you hope to find within a dream? I'm not looking for anything. Hmm. They aren't in a dream. So yeah, I'm guessing she's trying to recover her memories. Mm -hmm. I think? I don't know. I'm afraid the family will not open the doors for you. Gotta steal an invitation then. Why? Because the path you walk is not accepted by the harmony. Even if... That's not what I want. Hmm. Precisely because it's not what you want. Because they are not like other eons. Are they talking they as in IX? Or finality? I don't know. They have never glanced at anyone. And they never need to. They leave woven strands of fate for humans to walk. And together, they weave a great shadow. And this shadow silently envelops them i'm so glad they're being given us like semi-animated like screens just having the rain like being animated pouring down just adds a lot more to this there are always those who rise from the shadows mm -hmm. they mostly become a part of the shadow so my question is who is this guy that's talking in your eyes am i the same you still have a strand of color. Hmm. Apply your color. You got a little bit of red left. But not much. <sighs> mm-hmm. That is enough. Before they vanish completely. Oof. I will reach the Nihility's end. Yep, the Vice IX. <laughs> now <right>, pop off. <laughs> A. Nah, she can handle this. So sick, dude. The departed, weeping like rain to swell the crossing stream. She's so cool, man. 
But I also feel so bad for her. As the tide arrives, <laughs> leading you back home. Damn, man, bringing in the trailer music as well. That is so good. No, my boy. Damn. <laughs> oh, that goes Panacone. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. Damn. She's so badass, man. <laughs> wakey, wakey. You got what you wanted. What is this place? I'm guessing this is the place where maybe Firefly and Robin are? A gigantic ah. black hole. And see. Okay, this is different. <laughs> Swallowed by IX, I'm guessing. Have I... Have I succeeded? She replied, I want to die. Jesus, man. Welcome to this sad world, Kakavasha. We got the bad ending. Go back. <laughs> oh, man. Your good luck is the most precious wealth we... All Avgen have. We gotta go back, man. Aventry and this you ain't it. Alive after two days. It proves that you are the real deal. Mm. Wealth. Status. Power. The IPC will give you whatever you want. As for us, oh. we will reunite in Kakava's next Aurora. What is this that? It's a pity this is not the place you were expecting. <laughs> Damn, even... Yeah, she knows, man. Melody. Is it? Yeah, pretend to nothing. Perhaps to you, I am just an emanator who's hiding her identity. But the sleeping and shapeless never glance at anyone. They have no face. No form, and even less of a will to speak. The nihility envelops everyone equally. Yeah. Okay, so there was talking about IX last time. Look, I don't want my boy to die, <laughs> but it seems like that is going to be the case, unless Akron somehow saves him. Only some who have gone under their shadow can go farther, tainting themselves with more nihility. That's all. <laughs> That's all. My friend, you really leave me at a loss for words. So... Is this my final destination? The land of the dead? I hope not. <laughs> but it seems like that's what they're setting up. This is all but a fleeting dream. One of the thousands of manifestations of Ix. Under the watchful eye of Nihility, we momentarily linger here before moving on to our own paths. Okay, good sign. Might still be alive. It seems that my death has already been determined. God damn it. <laughs> Never mind. Even if you wish for it, I can't promise you anything. Damn it. Her design is so goddamn sick. Now that you've accomplished your goal, I think you can be a little more forthcoming. Yeah, let out your true feelings, my guy. <laughs> What do you mean? Your performance at the theme park was wonderful and grandiose. A simple yet practical technique that fooled almost everyone. But not me. No one would have ever thought that you would have gone to such lengths. Even staking your life just to prove a fact that had seemingly been disproved long ago. <laughs> Real death does not exist in Penacone's dreamscape. I mean, yeah, my guy really just wanted to prove them wrong, I guess. <laughs> Why would I do this? Because this is the only way you can uncover a secret that is even more unspeakable than the serial murders. Mm. To use this dream death to get there. To that promised land people constantly seek in this grand gathering. 
So it might be possible that we might see Firefly and Robin here, maybe. But the question is, does that promised land even exist? Penacony. The legacy of the Watchmaker. The true land of exile. Hmm. <sighs> How did you find out? The true land of the exile. I never imagined that something I learned about unexpectedly would become the key to connecting everything. I will admit, a little bit lost, but it is what it is. <laughs> it's our Stellaron friend's identity, isn't it? Hey, look, can you guys, like, just say the answer instead of, you know, dancing around, you know, the actual thing? <laughs> just give us a straight answer, please. So, we are the key to everything. We are technically related to the Watchmaker's legacy, which I guess that makes sense since we do have Clocky's power. I see you're in the know. Hey, can you inform us, please? Please and thank you? Let's just say I'd put money on the possibility. The murder isn't nearly enough to disrupt business as usual. Even if there were one or two murders on Penacony, most people wouldn't be personally affected. True. And that won't create any waves. This dream of theirs isn't a boundless sea. It's a lonely island. The family used the Harmony to build a high wall and isolate them from the vast and treacherous ocean of the outside world. Yeah, keeping everyone inside. That barrier they build keeps death out. But it also keeps the secrets that are lost in that watery abyss from floating to the surface. Indeed. In a beautiful dream, free of suffering. Who would want to go fishing for those secrets? No one. Unless... Unless someone goes to the other side of the barrier. Yeah, and then they see how depressing everything is. And lives to tell the tale. Yep. Yeah. Someone already has. And I'm looking at them. I got the idea early on, chewing on that masked fool's little hint. If a mute isn't someone who cannot make a sound, then it has to be someone who cannot speak. Okay, I don't know if the point- I don't- okay, I am getting really tired now, so a lot of things are kind of not clicking. Again, that could apply to us, but it also can apply to Acheron, which I didn't really think of. Because Acheron cannot speak about certain things, so I guess that applies to her as well. Someone who survived the treacherous depths, but is unable to take the stage and speak the truth. Yep. <laughs> Well, I'm happy to know she's safe and sound, and still on Penicone. Got old Akron. Hint. Is that not proof? <laughs> well, proof is the one thing I don't have. The only thing that can prove these... conjectures... is for the family to come clean. And with the way they buttered up these outsiders, it seems pretty clear they're intent on covering their tracks. Okay, unless here they're talking about Robin, like maybe she survived, but she's unable to take the stage and speak. See, the, the thing is, these two are just not being clear. They keep talking in riddles. It's so annoying. <laughs> but you don't need proof to have a suspicion. And for me, suspicion is enough. I didn't need to find the memory zone meme. I just needed for someone to kill me like it killed that silver haired girl. Fair enough. You don't sound very confident to me. Going out of your way to make citywide broadcasts in an attempt to involve more people. <laughs> you are simply betting on the possibility of someone being able to break down the barrier. Oh yeah, so that's what happened. So Akron brought the Harmony Barrier. That's kind of bad, isn't it? <laughs> You're very lucky that fate has decided to let us cross paths. I happen to be equipped with a very sharp blade. Sharp enough to slice through the veil of dreams. I can also carve the Harmony's brand off of you. That is pretty sick. Also, something that he needs if he's not dead already. You possess great cunning. Deliberately setting us up to be on opposing sides. Constantly repeating the words of the Emanator in front of others. <laughs> leaving me no choice but to draw my blade against you. Yeah, man knows what he's doing. Also had a death wish. And that's how you win. Opportunity and strategy, both are essential. And in your plans, the IPC always wins. Even if you lose the bet. 
to the family, the life of an ambassador is still invaluable. I do wonder why he's so like loyal towards the IPC though, because I don't think he ever like revealed why. I think it was his future self that said it. Well, it's a huge gamble, isn't it? But allow me to point out a mistake. The IPC's success is not guaranteed. I, unfortunately, have no contingencies for such an important matter. <laughs> yeah, my guy, what do you do now? <laughs> Detonating a Stellaron. I can't do it. <laughs> the Aventurine Stone is too broken to even safeguard my escape from the stage. I feel like detonating a Stellaron is probably not the best of ideas as well, although I would love to see it. <laughs> if, at the end of the day, you did not unsheath your blade, I would have lost the bet. Mm-hmm. It is pointless to discuss what ifs. You have won. Your prize is an entry ticket into that deep sea. And so, I guess he actually is dead, it seems like. Unless he just walks through and then he wakes back up. I don't know, I'm gonna have to wait and, and see. And after this, whether you can return from the abyss is another gamble of yours. Okay, that's good news. He might live. Have you never wavered? Wavered? <laughs> Of course I have. But I can only bank on my own good fortune. Bet on my luck I can make it out alive. I respect it. Because other than that, I have nothing. Yeah, he'll be alright. I believe. Wake up from this dream and go to where you should be. <laughs> Your gamble is not over yet. God, she's such a cool character, man. You got a, you got a lot to live for, man. Before we part, can you answer one more question? As someone who has traveled on that road, can you tell me, why are we born into this world? If it's just to die. Oh, okay. We're getting to the deep questions. Okay. <laughs> I don't think this, and never have. Nor do you. Yeah, we're born into the world to live. But the nihility envelops you and I. And everyone. And because of that, it's pointless. I mean, fair enough, I guess. But it is still there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, I love him. If the dice of fate are always weighted, then that is our destiny. Why then do we struggle against it? I mean, what other choice do you have? My answer might not be able to resolve your confusion, because it has been with you throughout your journey and is already a part of your life. It's just the way of life, right? Just constantly do your own thing. If it even goes against fate, might as well try. But you said... Sleep is the rehearsal of death. So why does life sleep? Because we are not ready to welcome death. Hmm. So you can definitely understand why we want to be prepared. <laughs> Bro, listening to this conversation when you're sleep deprived is insane. <laughs> Man, it has been, it's been 10 hours. I, I didn't expect it to go on for this long. Even if the ending has been predetermined, that's fine. There are countless things that humans cannot change. But before the end, there are many things that humans can do while on their journey. Yeah, that's what I said. And because of this, the end will thus reveal a completely different meaning. Okay, before, you know, we get onto like other topics, care to explain the red text somehow? <laughs> that's what I want to know about. Take a good look at your pocket. Your friend has already given you the answer. Oh, which one? The ratio friend or the psycho friend? Good luck. Hopefully it is Spackle's button. Ah, ratio. Doctor's advice. The impossible in the dreamscape is not death, but rather domacy. Do stay alive. I wish you the best of luck. Aww. <laughs> That's actually really sweet. <laughs> Didn't know Dr. Ratio had it in him. <sighs> then I shall get going.
No. Ah. Mister. Nah, don't do this, man. <laughs> you're leaving. You ultimately chose to leave this dreamscape. Ah, come on, man. <laughs> yes. Because they are not here. Mm. My papa, mama, and big sis. I mean, I am glad that he does care about his family, though. Then where are they? On the other side. They are in a place where everyone will go. Mm -hmm. Very, very distant place. I mean, it looks sick, though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> then are you going to? I'll get there one day. Okay, we're good. That's a good. That's a great sign. <laughs> I still live. But not now. Nice. He lives. There will come a day when the sky will drizzle, and I will hear the call of Gyathra Triclops, and know that it is time for me to go, and be reunited with my family. Aww. So, until that time comes, I should be preparing. Yeah, get a lot of sleep. Really prepare for it. <laughs> Live your life. Preparing? For what? Well, preparing to face them, Kakavisha. And to make them proud. Oh, <laughs> He's been redeemed. <laughs> I know you'll be able to do it. Good luck. Sick. <laughs> well, of course. For I am a child who received the blessing of Gyathra Triclops. See, so he is accepting it all now. <laughs> <laughs> But you still seem nervous. <laughs> Rightfully so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I seem that way because I am nervous. You know what? Maybe you can help. I'll do the ritual before he goes in. What do you say? <laughs> One last time? That's so together. wholesome, man. It's so wholesome. Ah, oh, one final cutscene. God, man, that's so adorable. Are you going now? Yes. Aw. May the mother goddess thrice close her eyes for you. Such a good character, man. Keeping your blood eternally, eternally pulsing. May your journey be forever peaceful, and your schemes forever concealed. Our paths will cross again beneath Kakava's shimmering auroras. He can make it out alive. He's got this. Oh, he's Farewell. also leaving his hat. Kakava chef. Man, adventuring has been so enjoyable. Jesus, man. Hopefully he makes out alive anyway. With hope for the morrow nestled in my heart, I descend in the slumber of two night. Until the dument of all coming morrows kisses me, I have then embraced the quiet death. But this man is different. He lives and breathes in the present, in ever sinking night. By every daring gamble, no vision of morrow ever graced his dreams. His life knows not quietude. His fate yet demands him to win them all. To weather tempests, one after another, Till Mara intrudes his very breath. And now, in the unfathomable depths of dream, the once falling die has at last landed on its earthly rest. Quietly, peacefully, it has last landed. The light of the Aventurine Stone has disappeared. Wait, he really did die? I did. No, come on, man, what? Bro, I've been baited. They gave me hope. <laughs> Unless he's able to make out, I don't know. This only represents one outcome. I'm, I'm, I'm still on a very high copium. I believe he can make it out. He kept his promise and got what he wanted. I refuse to believe it. I <laughs> As planned, your cornerstone has been successfully sent to the family's territory. Then. Let's fulfill our duty and start harvesting. Harvesting? 
Thereafter, in the cradle of slumberers, deep within the dream of the planet of festivities, another stone begins to radiate light. I come for an audience. I come to fill wine. And I come to claim. Oh, Jade's making an appearance? I bestow poison in the guise of sweet dew. Come the toil of spring and yield a fall. I patiently wait for the branches to be heavy with withered fruits. All for the Amber Lord. Oh, damn. Meanwhile, memory zone depths. We're just gonna keep going? You try to open your eyes, but find only darkness before you. <laughs> <laughs> and whose POV is this? <laughs> Memories gradually resurface as time rewinds to a few minutes ago. Aventurine unleashes the final assault, pouring down a dazzling shower of chips, followed closely by Acheron drawing her blade, and then crash. The indescribable force severs the power of preservation, while time and space froze instantly. Your thoughts twist into a knot as your senses fail with only gravity tearing at your mind as you plummet into boundless darkness, until a fire engulfs you in its embrace. Sam? Hello? Yes, I'm Sophie. You're awake. Hey, my boy Sam coming in with the clutch. I've been waiting on you for quite a while. So, are we gonna get confirmation that this might potentially be Firefly? Who knows? It's you. What have you done? I didn't do anything but wait for you to wake up. You've met me before. I'm Sam, a Stellaron hunter. Indeed. I originally planned on showing up earlier to reveal some truths to you. Yeah, that would have been helpful. <laughs> but I encountered more roadblocks than expected. Eleven times I've tried oh, damn. and ended in failure. Before I knew it, this world and I became too intertwined, and it became too difficult to escape the constraints of the script. Hmm. Elio is right. In this land of the dreams, you and I will reap unforgettable gains. Yeah, all we gained is depression. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm still on copium that Aventurine's alive, but everything's pointing towards him being dead now. Acheron did say that he could potentially make it out alive if he has the will. I don't know, maybe I, I interpreted that wrong because I'm tired. I don't know people's hearts as well as he and Kafka do. Nor do I have a specialty like Silverwolf and Blade. Most of the things that I'm good at only apply to villains who need no mercy. Hey, you, you seem like you've got a good heart, Sam. So, there is only one method that I use. Kill and destruction. This is oh. to show you. Hey, it is Firefly. <gasps> uh, fully confirmed. All that I am. Damn, man. Oh, uh, to be continued, you leave it there? You leave it there? That is unforgivable. Like corridors and halls, traps everywhere. The owner of this mansion must be a bit paranoid. All right, so yeah, it seems like it was Firefly. My theory, no. <laughs> oh, well, it was still fun making it. Now, uh, what are you gonna do, Mr. Gallagher? You are so funny, Mr. Security Officer. <laughs> I hope that sense of humor of yours has helped you find the serial killer. What, you? Just expressing a personal opinion. Why? Did I hit a nerve? Mm-hmm. I can't believe they left the to be continued message right there. That is, that is mad. Mr. Gallagher, my patience is wearing thin. Neglecting duties? will only make me more suspicious that you and the real serial killer are connected. My guy, you are pointing the blame to everyone. <sighs> I trust my boy. Scoundrel, punk, drunk, <laughs> hooligan. I have heard this trash talk all too often, but I have never once thought that I'd be treated as an accomplice to a murderer. 
Stand your ground, my man. I, I take back what I said. Your problem is paranoia. You're just crazy, you know? Lunatic. Oh, there we go. That's the drama we want. Laying it out. You, the family, you broke my spine and pulled out my fangs, and now you want to accuse me of murder? Ridiculous. Only idiots who've drunk too much soul glad will berate a stray dog in the streets. Damn. I love Gallagher, man. <laughs> what exactly is making you say all this nonsense? You should be more concerned about the outworld visitors who are making a scene in the theme park than me. <laughs> I don't need you to remind me. Once that ambassador walks through the doors of the mansion, I will know what he wants. My servants see everything. Yeah. His little magic tricks may have fooled me, but no matter. I'm happy to see how it's turned out. Your servants, eh? The little birds. Why do you think that I just let him go? And why do you think I emptied the theme park stage? Because my target from the beginning has always been you. Well, wow. <laughs> the more noise he makes, the more opportunities I have to make you and your true master pay in blood. True villain. <laughs> if I were really the murderer, why would you need to be so secretive? Ha! Huh, I forgot. You also have a difficult master to serve. Mm -hmm. Telling you to ignore the murder case and focus solely on that Charmony Festival. The Dream Master. Isn't that right, my brother? Huh? <laughs> Hold on a minute, what? <laughs> <sighs> Looks like your disguise has helped you successfully understand every facet of the family. Uh-huh. Disguise? You must be blind to be accusing me of being a fake. Open your eyes. Take a good look. Oh, wait, wait, that's Robin? <sighs> Indeed, every part of you is real. The brown hair, soft nope. and curly like Benny's. Never mind. I'm orange right. eyes, which make me miss the gaze of Sir Whitaker. That odd scar. The mark of Wolsey. Wait, let me go back here. Isn't that right, my brother? That's what made me thought that was Robin. And then, you know, it looks like your disguise has helped you successfully understand every facet of the family. Is this Robin then? I, I don't know, man. I, I guess not. I Maybe I just misunderstood that. <laughs> Again, I'm, I'm very sleep deprived. Indeed, every part of you is real. The brown hair, soft and curly like Benny's, the dreamscape producer, the orange eyes, which makes me miss the gaze of the Sir Whisker. Okay. And the grey vest, tie, hound emblem, bottle, the bartending, and your role as a security officer. These are all true traits mm -hmm. from all 52 loyal family members. When they are okay. gathered, Countless tiny truths are woven together into a lie. You collected a small piece of each of them and claimed them for yourself. Then you invented this facade. A complete Gallagher. Bro, I am so lost. <laughs> Tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> Bro, I am so unbelievably lost. <laughs> <laughs> These are all true traits from all 52 loyal family members. You collected a small piece of each of them and claimed them for yourself. Then you invented this facade, a complete Gallagher. So is he the watchmaker then? I don't know if I'm the only one that's going to be lost here. I don't know if anyone else is going to be understanding what's happening because I for sure don't. <laughs> you have guts. I'll give you that. Not bad. I severely underestimated you. Can someone explain? <laughs> Admirable. But so what? Can this prove that I murdered your sister and that stowaway? I'm just gonna let this play out. This proves that you and the memory zone meme death are linked. And that's enough. Mmm, okay, I see. Well, yeah, that makes sense since we know death is related to the watchmaker and so was Mikhail. Hmm. Listen up. I don't care how you did it. I only care about one thing. The answer to a question. Gallagher did 
kill everyone? <laughs> just... So what, he was killing people and then he was like stitching them together to become Gallagher? A complete Gallagher? Is that how I'm taking it? You devil. You wretched, despicable dog. Why did you kill her? What is going on? <laughs> Gallagher, why? <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, dude. Can't trust you know, anyone in, in Pentaconi, man. People are blind to the grit in their eyes. Yet they can always feel it scratch. Want the answer? I'll give it to you. Man, his music, though. <laughs> the whole thing is just fate playing a cruel joke on us. Don't, don't, don't start playing the music. I know I have it on the Astral Express. <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I have never been so bamboozled. <laughs> okay, so, cut uh, uh, What? What's his name? Sunday. <laughs> my mind, my mind is screwed, dude. So now Sunday's dead. Well, at least Firefly's alive. <laughs> oh, dude, my brain is fried. It honestly is. So it seems like at the end there with the light, that does seem to be the thing that helps the memory zone meme. Because in the notes, it said light has something to do with it. And he was using the light from the lighter to cast shadows. And that's what ended up with his death. Mother. King Gallagher, man. <laughs> you know what? We shouldn't have trusted Gallagher the moment they said in the live stream that, oh yeah, Gallagher's a normal dude. I thought it was going to be all along the lines of like, oh yeah, he's he's not normal because, you know, he, he's trying to go against the family, the ones he's meant to be protecting. I didn't know it was going to be in that way, though. <laughs> I thought he was just trying to overthrow the family because, you know, they're doing some sus, sus stuff. Jesus, man. <laughs> okay, I do apologize near the end there. Uh, I didn't expect it to go on for 10 hours and around the maybe 7 to 8 hour mark, I just, I just got really hit hard with, you know, tiredness. And then you've got these characters, you know, not the talking in riddles. Man, a lot of it just kind of went over my head. <laughs> Jesus, though. Gallagher, though. The mastermind behind it. God damn, dude. Fair play, though, Hyoverse. Fair play. They, they did a very good job with it. So what now? Who are the confirmed deaths that we have? Aventurine, it seems like, unless he's able to get out, which I feel like he is. But at the minute, our current deaths that we have is Sunday, Aventurine, Robin... And Firefly has been confirmed to be alive. I don't think I'm forgetting anyone else. So currently three characters are dead. Wow. Yeah, I'm just I'm still processing. But wow, that was that was a ride. And now we're gonna have to wait how who knows how long until the next part, like six, seven weeks. We got left on the cliffhanger with Firefly. Then we got Sunday just being assassinated. Gallagher was revealed to be the mastermind behind death. Wild. Akron had her badass moment, of course. And that concludes that. And so, if you don't want to miss any future reactions to Honkai Star Rail content, be sure to that subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. And yeah, I'll see you then. Hello, it is me, four days after completing the 2.1 Pentaconi story quest. So I was informed that there's two locations that I should revisit. The first one, we, the first one we're gonna visit is actually the stage where Akron sliced up Aventurine. <laughs> May he rest in peace for now, until he, you know he comes back alive. Okay, I am interested to see why people are saying to come here though. Oh, <laughs> okay, that's the reason. 
Sheesh! God damn, man. Wait, how far out does that go? <laughs> man, Akron is so broken. Sick cut though, god damn. Oh yeah, all the dream weavers trying to fix it. Hey guys, good luck with that. I'm just saying, that's gonna take that's gonna take a while to fix. Hey, you guys should just keep it as is. That looks so cool. That will make people want to come here. Right, and now for our second location is uh, Firefly's hangout spot. Since now we've got the full confirmation that, you know, Firefly is Sam, I am interested to see if there's any unique dialogue here, which I already know, but I don't know what it is. The observation deck with the breathtaking views. You can almost see the entire dream's edge at a glance. It's not an easy place to find. The person who introduced it to you truly values your friendship by sharing this view. Okay, this is the same. You think back to the times you spent with her. All those cherished memories. But the ones you'll never forget was the complex whirl of emotions when she first revealed her true identity to you. Was her past identity all just a ruse? Were those tears when she got stabbed all just an act? Is that being, that thing which fought whilst being covered in heated flames, who she really is? Doubt and confusion leaves you discombobulated. After all, the line between what's real and what's false in this dreamscape is far more blurred than it seems. Gazing up at the tall towers before you, you lose yourself deep in contemplation. Interesting, okay. Yeah, because it's still weird that, you know, there's the whole theory about maybe Sam and Firefly are like two different personalities. Like, that that's definitely still on the table, but who knows? It can rather just be they're the same person or it's like two different personalities. I guess we're just gonna have to find out in 